If you feel like you're becoming someone else If you inside yourself If you're feeling like a cactus on the shelf Get out your door the status of this discord call i appreciate that that's funny hello <laughs> everyone we are live hello welcome to the operation and happification encore stream i'm uh chandler deroche as you may remember from the original stream and joining me today is bill motts hello meme tendo hello and sternberg and several others why, why does hi Everyone else in the call, why don't you all go around and introduce yourselves? <laughs> Anyone else who the wants whole to stream is themselves? welcome. Yes, yeah, so you guys. Uh, uh, so we wanted to do this stream really to. Um, we, re we really wanted to do this stream to not only um, reach our original goal of uh, twenty thousand dollars for Give Kids the World, but um, also to kind of highlight uh, the people That's who right. made the first stream possible because while we did have some technical issues it was you know it still would say uh, a pretty big success uh, there were a lot of people that went into making it possible and um, th so this is going to be of course kind of a much more um, sort of low-key stream compared to the other one where we had all these you know all these guests and all these events we're kind of just going to be hanging out today so um Anyone else want to um, say anything? Actually, we do have, um, so one oh. order of business we need to get to is we have a Operation and Happification YouTube channel. Um, I don't have the screenshot here. I don't, uh, we were trying to get that figured out, but um, I don't have it right now. Um, but it's it's just Operation and Happification, right? If you just search that, you should be able to find it. Or Long Live Tegum on YouTube. Long yeah, Long Live Tegum. So just like... Um, just like the, uh, j just like the, the Twitter account, it's long live Tegan. So, cause that's a little easier for people to type than operation and happification. <laughs> that's a mouthful. No, yeah, it's a bit this of a mouthful. stream is actually the end of operation and happification. Cause after yeah. this, it's going to be something else, but, uh, that's well, for later. The whole, yeah, the whole movement is continuing, <laughs> but this is the last thing we're doing for Give Kids the World before moving on to other other stuff, because we're not stopping at all. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep in Happifying. That is our plan. Um, it's what Molly would want. It's what Molly would want, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we really wanted this to be kind of the kickoff um, of that movement and give the show the send-off it deserved, because Disney sure as heck did not do that. <laughs> Oh no! Okay, yeah. Bill might have something else to say about that. I'll try to keep. I'll try to keep myself. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But but we got this. We got. But we. Go ahead. Oh, I don't have anything else right now. Okay. Wait, man. The one-time trailer's mic isn't on mute, and he doesn't have anything to say. Right. <laughs> oh my goodness. First of all, it's great to see everybody, and thank you all for your efforts. My goodness, how much time you all have invested in this to make it work. And so, Bob and I are really grateful. Bob is occupied with family things today, and I actually will only be on for a, a wee bit, sorry to say, but uh, for also similar reasons. But um, anyway, we just want to say thank you for all the effort you've put into making this happen. It is such a powerful wonderful way of honoring uh, the show um I, I can't even tell you just how much it means to bob and i that uh, the the response to our little cartoon show <laughs> was to catch the spirit of what molly uh wanted to do in the world and uh and and happifying her her family, her friends, and her community, and her world and i'm literally looking at a screen full of people from around the world mm -hmm. 
doing that very same thing. It's very and... late for some of these people, or very <laughs> early, rather. <No>. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, Faisal, uh, what yeah. time is it where you were? Uh, 40, 43 a.m. It's like, <laughs> dark. <laughs> oh, <laughs> also, I love what Lou yep. Herman here said in the chat oh, about the first God. stream. They said, the first stream was definitely a McGee family success. Everything went wrong, and it couldn't have been better. That's so true. I think it was <laughs> it was a bit of a hot mess, <laughs> as you would expect yeah, from thought, people who are trying to do something like this. But it's our hot mess. Literally never used OBS before. I'm like, I don't know. I didn't find out until halfway through the stream how studio oh. mode worked. So like, I it was really like you know learning on a on a massive curve there. <laughs> just well, just hope yeah. we're praying we don't have any more issues like yeah. that. And if you don't, just forget everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know that. You know, I, 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 well, well, so I was testing I we it this morning. Let, don't let perfect. <laughs> yeah. Don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. That's right. all I'm no, saying. Exactly. And you well, guys I was, are a lot of good. I was testing. You. It was funny because I was testing the countdown this morning. I'm like, everything's working perfectly. It's great. And then, of course, I changed the music. Grand Dad! And... <laughs> what was that? What was that? Here. I, <laughs> I, I, Trish. Hi, Trish. Um, but, uh, but yeah, because, like, I'm telling Get you. Get ready for oh, wow, That's the wrong sound effect. And Matt. Was, <laughs> I, I meant to do yippee. I meant to that do the was, yippee. That was very loud. What was that? Uh, oh, okay. Um, I, I, I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> but, you're good. Um, you're good. Okay. I completely um, lost my train of thought. What on. was I saying? Um, I, I completely lost my train of thought. Dang it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, we were just, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm, just saying, you know, what, you, what happens, happens, right? Yeah. It's just, oh, you know, the, the, yeah, the countdown. It's great. It I was literally testing the countdown video yeah. this morning, and then we updated it with different music. And of course, now it's not working. It wasn't working as smoothly. I'm like, I don't even know. I give up. It, it should have been fine, but whatever. Well, uh, well, what? One well, of these days, well, I'll we're figure really out OBS. About the and, you know, the one of these days, I'll figure out OBS and or get a steady internet connection wired into my computer, which I was not able to do. I'd have to get, like, a technician out here to do that. But anyways. So, mm -hmm. if there's problems with the stream quality, oh. blame Spectrum Internet. That's <laughs> that's where it all comes from. I got AT&T. So blame... They've been doing it just fine for us. They were the only for, option in my area. <laughs> As Jinx is, she's disrupting the internet. I just blame Jinx. Um, oh yeah, so, there you go. Saying, the last does, yeah, it's Jinx. Hey, does anyone in the chat have any questions for us uh, about the stream or about you know the show? Maybe for Bill or just whatever. Ooh. Oh, you know, said, I'm sorry for the granddad. <laughs> since we just mentioned Jinx and Bill is here, I had a thought. Bill, did you guys ever yes, figure yes. out how Jinx died? Uh, well, no. But I will tell you that we had intended you were going to see more Jinx. Hmm. Ah. So, uh, yes. So, Jinx. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> I mean, I wanted, I wanted to imagine to Jinx for? not to appear. Yeah, like, yes, we were, we were... It's always a good thing. Yes. First of all, a more Jinx lore? Liza's amazing, obviously. Such, such an, she's just an amazing human being. Um, very kind wrote us an unbelievably kind note when uh, she got the word that the uh, the show had finished but um so yeah what we had figured was this scratch uh we had played around with the idea that scratch was going to release her from the canister um ah. and, and trying to uh, trying to sort of uh, wow. like all right this time this time be good. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah we're we're gonna, the charm. Yeah, we were going to see how that goes. Like, we hadn't really fully mapped out what all was going to happen with that, but yeah, it would have been great. I bet. Yeah. What about the chat? What do they have? All right. Um. um oh, no, is, I, I have a question. This... I have a question. Oh, go for it. Oh, yeah, Faisal, go okay. ahead. Yeah, so sorry. Um, yeah, just wanted to ask, like, okay, so like, I know, I understand that you've been working on a sci-fi novel with, along with Bob and another person, another friend of yours, if I'm correct. Uh, just want to know that, you know, uh, I just want to know, like, you know, with the projects that you're continuing on, like, what, uh, like, are you aiming for that sci-fi novel that you're making right now to be for, uh, for like, a higher age rating? 
that's one. And second of all, Mm -hmm. how much of Molly McGee were you incorporating into your sci-fi novel? And perhaps like maybe some other projects in in the future. Right. Well, here's the, you know, it's kind of interesting. Um, I mean, Molly's Molly and McGee specifically won't exist on any of the other, you know, projects because um, those characters are now owned by by Disney. And but the uh, yeah, the uh, graphic novel that we're working on is a Y Y A you know young adult uh, novel, um, sci fi, and uh, it's called Colony Five One Nine, and um, we hope. <laughs> Fingers crossed to have it completed some uh, sometime this year. And we'll we'll see what happens with it. We're very excited. Um, it's very much been a labor of love. Uh, we Bob and I had originally written the script uh, as a live action pilot that uh, a studio was producing, and then uh, <laughs> the studio lost their funding, and uh, we managed to get the right oh. back and uh anyway and have been doing this very very long labor of love uh with our friend nick Filippi, uh who is on monster high right now if you've if you watch oh, that or heard of it. um and uh anyway so we, yeah, we've worked with nick forever and uh so it's it's all being um so at this point, Nick has just about completed all the um, the, f- the final line work, and uh, Bob. <laughs> this is so embarrassing to say. Bob and I are doing the rough coloring of it, and when I say rough coloring, it it really looks like uh, you know, uh, point and click, you know, paint by number kind of goofiness. It looks kind of terrible, but we're doing the rough version of it, and then Nick does a final pass on it that makes it all look really pretty and uh, so anyway we're we're honing in on the completion of that one um and hope that it you know will be out there before too, too long and then we're also um working on original projects that we are um we're pitching around nothing yet that has you know um is in production but conversations are happening so anyway that's kind of kind of fun and and a lot of it is kind of different uh than what we've done before yeah. so it'll it'll be kind of fun to have some new new challenges and you know Super new experiences cool. so love that yeah. right um, yeah hey, I, I, okay. yeah so the reason why i was asking hopefully uh, let me. Uh, so the reason why I asked is because like I didn't want it to just be like a like a just just a tea game discussion. I also want to know about you know what are you guys doing for the future yeah. so that you know <laughs> you know us as tea game fans we know that we all have a sort of like you know undying passion for the show. But you know sometimes yeah. like you know there are also other things that are gonna come forward and so on and so forth. Because the reason the reason yeah. So I I'm only asking the I'm, I'm wait no I'm asking the question because like I just want to know about the future. But most of them in the comments are asking about the show. So like you know. Um, we're gonna get back into it. So, Chandler, yeah, you wanna take I've got a good one. Yeah, this is from ZTS Lovebird. Um, did Jeff and Jeff know each other in life, or did they meet after they died? They met after they died. Huh? Yes, they were uh, after afterlife partners. They had yeah. Uh, I tend to think that they may have lived hundreds of years apart. <laughs> but so so Jeff or like one of them has lived or has been dead longer. Yes, that is my in my own thinking. I mean, I don't know if we ever did anything specifically to make that happen, but um, yeah, in my mind, uh, J. Jeff uh, lived much earlier than G. Jeff. That's my head canon, but it wouldn't matter if that's one of the things that doesn't really matter. It's just kind of how I kind of approached it um, originally uh, in. The episode where they have their anniversary party, uh, party they, it, the banner actually said, uh, "Happy one thousand years." Wow! <laughs> um, wow! But wow. then uh, we we also decided that there were other continuity things where Jeff makes references of things about his life or whatever that were like, "God, that really doesn't work." So mm. I annoyed our artists and made them change it. So. <laughs> So when were giant vats of chocolate invented? I must ask. Yes. So, um, <laughs> really Wonka. Um, I've got yeah. one from uh, from Sammy. 
Um, does Molly still interact with ghosts in the ghost world as much as when she did uh, with Scratch after he, um, well, after he left? After Scratch I think, left, does, uh, does she still interact with ghosts as much? I would say probably. Right. I, I mean, she... You know, I don't know if as much because, you know, Scratch was like around all right. the time. Right, right, right. But I think I think she uh I think she and uh Ali and uh Libby all kind of regularly check in with uh the Jeffs and you know, some of uh you know, some of the other ghosts that come by. Um and you know, my hunch is that maybe even every once in a while she you know, we'll go into the ghost world to say hi to some folks, you know, if Jeff makes a portal. And, um, but, uh, I, I think where we were kind of even thinking, though, was that, um, more and more, I think Molly is sort of, you know, if she's looking at Todd going off to live his life and, you know, chasing that adventure, I think it's motivated her even more so to, um, you know, make sure she's, doing the things in life that she would like to be doing. So, um, but I, you know, yeah, I, I imagine that McGee family dinner occasionally has, you know, Jeff and Jeff over and, <laughs> you know, yeah. Also, I love this one. Maybe from... Molly pet sits for Sharky every now and again. Yes. yes. Well, I, would, yes, I, I yes, imagine sure. Sharky does. <laughs> yes. You know, because I mean, in a, in a way that's his original home. Right. Yes. So I have one from, from Lou Herman. Yeah. Now that it's, Molly is locked up. Oh, go ahead. I was about to say, like, if uh, uh, okay, I was about to ask if uh, it's okay for me to ask a question for Bill. Oh, sure, go ahead. Uh, you you guys been in the animation industry for like a decade, so for a long time, so you've been working on a lot of projects from, from across different studios. Yeah. Uh, do you yeah. think uh, the Ghost of Mommy Key is probably your magnum opus for you guys? Like, maybe not your mm -hmm. best, but like a uh, show you made as very important to your life's accomplishment. Yeah, I, I absolutely. I mean, I it is, <laughs> it is the show that is the most us. Mm -hmm. um, I think. Oh boy, how can I? You know, it. We really realized that in a lot of ways, it it came out of Bob's and my relationship. Um, I tend to be the Molly with, you know, optimistic and you know the. Uh, a bit of magical thinker at times and uh you know very much an extrovert and you know I'll, i love people and bob tends to be the introvert and a little bit of a little bit of a misanthrope at times and um you can tend to you know be a little pessimistic and but the the thing was that we realized uh, we as a duo um we bring out the best in each other um, and I and I think that there was something about where we had really set out with Molly, the, I mean the show to be. It wasn't that Molly was always right and Scratch was always r wrong. It was really kind of their dynamic together is is healthy. Um, they really do kind of strengthen each other and build each other up. Yeah, and absolutely. so it was by far the most personal of the shows we've done. And um, it was the first wholly original show that we've done. I mean, I mean, well, <laughs> uh, the we did two live action movies for Nickelodeon that were original, which was Rufus and Rufus Two. But uh, <laughs> in the animated space, most everything we had done essentially had been pre existing IP in one way or other. The Lego Star Wars Freemaker show was the Freemaker family and all of that mythology that that was specific to the family was ours uh, bringing to it. But obviously Star Wars, you know, is its own thing. Yeah, <laughs> so Just we got, we bit. were very happy to be playing, in, you that, know, in that, that sandbox. That but so Molly. Was... <laughs> yeah, that little, you should say, if you haven't checked it out, you really should. It <laughs> came out in 77. It's, it's a cute good. little thing. Um, but yeah, anyway, it, uh, so for Molly Mickey, it was, you know, a very, very personal show. And I think it actually was the, the strongest example of our sort of worldview point of view, how I think Bob and I really feel like um, we want to be people in the world, how we want to be good citizens of the world, how we want to kind of, you know, 
move in in the world. So it in a way is very much kind of our kind of philosophy of this is how we think life should be. Um, not that we always live up to it, obviously, but um, Mo- Molly anyway. Is so yeah, Molly anyway. Yes, I would end. say. I think Molly. Is yeah. Here. Don't let so, the enemy of the good. Yeah. Yeah. So we are, uh, yeah. So thank you. I would say it is our magnum opus. Um, I think the question is at this point, like, uh, you know, what, what or do we do next? You know, I mean, we have, like, as you say, we, <laughs> we've been doing this for, uh, quite a while. And, um, the fun thing is there's always something new and interesting to try. And I think for us, some of it is the, you know the fun of all right what what could what we next? do this we time that could be a little different you know yeah i've got a <clears throat> i've got a fun question from lou herman uh now that molly is locked away inside the disney vault how long will it take for her to unionize the other ips <laughs> 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 maybe not well, long we got that chibi short earlier today yeah yeah i was gonna say so here here's uh here's what i i want to have happen what i want uh molly to organize she want i want her to get brandy and mr whiskers and uh our legend of tarzan show and you know kim possible and you know and just bust them all out of the vault how about yes. that so i think that'd be and fun. give moon girl a third season <laughs> yes yeah, oh my god go. what are they waiting for <laughs> ah yeah well you know the, it's the, you guys know how much this uh industry is in in turn so yeah um, just a little bit we'll, we'll see how it goes yeah it's fun to be a college student right now mm. <laughs> <laughs> i just graduated from college so i don't have to worry about that here's one from but, yeah uh... well so so here's what i if i could just interject real quick yeah. about um so i've been around long enough to know that there are a lot of times in many industries, but it's, it's certainly entertainment, there are cycles. There are boom and bust cycles, expansion and contraction cycles. Mm-hmm. Um, and right now we are definitely in a one of those contraction cycles. Mm-hmm. But I would say to anyone who um, you know, w- wants to chase this as a dream, right? And by the way, it's it's a crazy pants dream to have on one level, but you know what? It's also super fun, <laughs> you know. I have I have no regrets over having no chased regrets. this, right? So, uh, mm. but I uh, I think that all I would say is um, the industry belongs to the tenacious. So uh, hang on, you know, things will get figured out. You know, it, everything always shifts and changes and morphs. Be clever in how you figure out how you jump in and you know work on your own things and also you know network and do all those good things and uh you know your opportunity can still come so don't don't be overly discouraged at what the current temperature is it it will change Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think that fish might have something to say about it but (laughs) yeah yeah sorry go ahead um i've got i've got one from uh, Andrea uh, Grub- Gruba, I'm sorry if I bu- I'm butchering your name here, but um, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. Um, given that the show takes place in the Midwest, are there any uh, very specific Midwest references you guys added in there? May oh, I interject yeah. real quick? We just oh. got a donation. Uh, oh, got a donation. Thank yes. you, Brent Thompson, for donating $17. Woo! Woo! Oh, by the way, okay, Yippee. we need to uh, emphasize this. Hey, we're going to be raffling stuff off. Um... <clears throat> We're gonna be we're gonna be randomly drawing from everyone who publicly donated, and uh, we have some little prizes to give to people. So that is fantastic. Yeah. So you want to uh, Chandler? You want to mention what any of them are? Um. So Trish was donating some keychains. Um. Trish, can Ooh. you show them possibly? Do you have them with you? I have a picture. Okay. If I can find my phone. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> no, I'm surprised I don't have it next to me. I always have my phone next to me. Oh, well, I have Molly and Scratch in my bag, so I don't want to take them off. <laughs> they need to be together. We'll separate them. I oh, have man. mine right here. Yeah, don't, don't think. I have um, Scratch and Lib. Very cool. 
All right, so while they're looking that up, let's see. The, the question was, I'm sorry, it flew out of my head again. What was, oh, the Midwest Town uh, stuff. Yes, there are very specific Midwest uh, references. Uh, I grew up in Rock Island, Illinois, so there's uh, parts of uh, Rock Island that made its way into the show. And then also my in-laws lived in Cedar Falls, Iowa, and a, a lot of Cedar Falls made it into the show, partly out of... Um, Cedar Falls had been a show, uh, a town that had kind of uh, was struggling a bit, and then they found uh, a way to kind of uh, resurrect themselves uh, and kind of come back a bit, and uh, and so it's actually a really great community, and uh, we kind of use that as a template. We saw Brighton as kind of following in in its pathway, uh, and you can so the band shell. Uh, that's in the series is a uh, one-to-one reference. Basically, it is almost exactly uh, the band shell at Cedar Falls, Iowa. So, if any of you are uh, fans out there that are in Iowa, you should you should or close enough that you want to take a little road trip, you should definitely go to Cedar Falls. You will see uh, that band shell looking like you're actually in Brighton, and then behind you, when you're looking at the uh, the, the band shell is the historical society that is also almost exactly represented in the show. So the one that Ezekiel Tugbottom, you know, when it catches on fire briefly and Ezekiel goes just to save his paintings. Um, anyway, that, uh, yes, that's almost exactly the same. So anyway, a lot of fun things about that. Just yes, Faisley. Yeah, um, so like, I really appreciate the amount of like detail that you've put in, the amount of inspiration that you've gotten from other Midwest towns and all, all that. Because I want to re- correlate this with the fact that you have talked with a bunch of city officials, urban planners, and all of that, mm-hmm. uh, all of those people that are correlated with the field to make this show. So, like, look, as an as an urban planning student myself, I mean, like, I'm interested to hear about these so- sort of things. So, like, I want to know mm-hmm. how deep you actually like talk with the city officials and all of the civil servants in in the in those working in like rural towns. Like, how is yeah. it? Like, first like, talking to them and like, how deep did you, did you go with them? Um. I think we, I would say we went pretty deep. We spoke to the representative of my uh, hometown area, uh, the congressional uh, rep, um, and she was generous enough to give me uh, about 45 minutes of her time really going into some of uh, the things that she was doing for the Quad Cities to help kind of bring back manufacturing, bring back tourism, you know, do, do a number of things like that. Very specific. Then I also did a deep dive into a, an organization called Main Street USA, which um, does a lot of development uh, for sort of smaller towns. I think off the top of my head, I think this, the town has to be smaller than like 49,000 people. There's a certain cap on its size. But then we all, I also did, I read uh, several books by people who had done um, sort of redevelopment. And there was actually a documentary on HBO uh, called, I think it was called Our Towns or something like that. I'll, I'll have to double check it for you. But uh, by a group of authors who um, study what makes small towns kind of thrive. Um, and there were a few different things. Oddly enough, uh, a lot of towns that are thriving have uh, three things in common. <laughs> um, they have a river walk. So they often have a river near, you know, that goes near the downtown. And they have some sort of lovely walkway that you could go travel on. Um, they have uh, a college or university of some sort nearby because uh, those educational institutions bring uh, a lot of... Um, arts and culture to the town and uh, also uh, research, you know, that can co- come in and help kind of things going. And then the other was local breweries. <laughs> if you had a microbrewery, it was an so, indicator of, uh, of the health of the town, which I thought Ruben, was kind of funny. Was so. Ruben having a root beer tavern in season three and nod to that? It, it yes it was yes okay, yeah, so uh yeah so it's gotta be for those of you who didn't uh, yeah so exactly so um so for those of you who 
did are aware that yeah what was going to happen is that uh the Davenport's department store was so there was a, a story where the chens basically weren't going to be able to stay in brighton and uh be, and now they you know, they didn't have a youtube channel to go hunt ghosts anymore and now that they were trying to do a sort of no ghosts are good channel nobody wanted to watch it mm -hmm. so it was having an impact and uh so they were going to leave uh the davenports put the we're going to sell their store um, and Molly was all worried about, uh, you know, what was going to happen with Andre and her family. And she was like, oh, no, we're fine. We have a, we still have three houses, whatever. You know, it works different for, you know, rich people. So she's like, we, <laughs> we actually made money on our bankruptcy. And they're like, what? You know, so. That doesn't sound um, right. <laughs> but, yeah. I think <laughs> so, Ollie says that, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, uh, so ended up they sort of figure out a way to do uh so ruben and the chens take over uh damport's department store and turn it into a, a local root beer brewery so it was kind of kind of fun yeah but that was a nod to that research so. okay so there was a burning question then, a again we got another asking... donation oh we got another donation uh there's yeah, we got two more donations, uh, both for fifteen seventy five from Arturo Garcia and Twist and Mud. Woo! Thank you. Wow, thank the show you. existed thank and you, made my you. life and other people's lives better. Long live Tegum. Woo um, there's another question I saw in the chat that I think would be interesting. Uh, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. happened Burning to yeah. oh, Burning okay, question. Uh, all the question says uh the question says, uh, whatever happened to Reggie scratches paws after the internship episode. <laughs> oh, you know, so that's a good that's a very good question. We um so Reggie ended up being slightly complicated in that uh, we did want to do more with Reggie, uh, but his uh, the actor's manager had said that this was to be a one-shot deal, didn't, didn't want to do a reoccurring... She didn't think he should do a reoccurring voice on the show. Hmm. Um, interesting. I think that maybe that would have softened and we were going to reapproach that, that for maybe at least a short thing in season three, uh, especially as you know... the that the, the robes were going to be searching for who might be the the next you know chairman and so we had written in i believe a, a brief reggie moment at least for that so we thought we could bring that back but yeah that was a little it was you know because that was the uh, that that was the kid who played ron in the live action kim possible movie <laughs> right who by the way well, terrific that. actor i mean you know he's oh, a great he's just always really really fun and we've worked with them before on uh, other things so anyway it was it was great so Love yeah that. okay there's another burning question Lou herman donated 52 dollars. that's not enough give more <laughs> <laughs> let's check let's check the charity see if, how much we have right now all right by the way that was that that was literally what he said in the in the donation he said uh yeah he said don't it's not enough did more like that wasn't samuel <laughs> saying that that was literally, <laughs> I mean, that, now, with that being said <laughs> if there are any billionaires on stream you, you, you know yes yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. mr right beast here. if you're watching <laughs> mr beast if you're watching oh. come on you have all the money Donate. in the okay. world. Here's the perfect you have all the money to in the world. Your brand. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so another, let's, let's continue, another, let's continue uh, on the questions. Right, questions. Yes. Yeah, another burning question in the chat has been talking about kind of the memory loss thing with Ollie in season three and how that would have worked and possibly where that was going. Right, so uh, what was going to happen was uh, that the robes were going to choose Ollie to be the chairman and was going to put him sort of a uh, through, in a tug of war, essentially between, I'm got to be in the living world and I've got to be in the ghost world, and I'm kind of burning, you know, the candle at both ends. And so, what would happen is that initially, it sort of almost seems like he's just so distracted, but he, he would start forgetting things. Like they would, Molly would make plans with, you know, Molly and Ollie make plans, and he would forget. He would. You know, so she'd be waiting, and he'd come back from the ghost world, and she's like, remember, we were going to go see a movie or whatever it was, and he was like, oh, wow, totally forgot about that. And then that was going to kind of get exponentially worse. The more he, that he was in that wraith form, uh, the more impact it was going to have, until eventually uh, there was at some point where he was completely, like, not sure who Molly was at, at one point. Um, and 
so then she was like, okay, something's something's up here. This is you know this is wrong. And mm-hmm. then, so then he would sort of it sort of would come to him like, oh oh right yeah huh, wow that's weird. And so then the decision was made. He's like, I can't I can't be the the chairman where we were. I, Originally, there's a little hint if you sort of see it at the end of Jinx versus the Human World. The the robe does a little circle of the Sally Tugbottom statue, and so I think we were maybe gonna sort of say that essentially after Ollie, it, it they the robes choose Sally. Sally, but um, be be qualified. But, yeah. But anyway, but since we didn't get to do that story, we made sure that the at least got to loop the uh, the statue there, so it's a little wink at maybe where it would go. I just saw a good question in the chat from GamerDon number fifty four. Do you ever wonder if June Chen is experimenting on Jinx, seeing that she has the lock on the Phantom Canister? <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. You no, know, I I. If she, you know, I imagine she's asking her questions. So I, I do feel like there is a way for her to communicate through the, um, through the canister. Mm-hmm. Um, probably Jinx is probably trying to trick June into getting her released. June is way too smart for that, mm-hmm. so <laughs> doesn't fall for that. I had the same idea for something I'm working on. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> yes. Yay! Yay! So yeah. Anyway, but uh, yeah, I. It was kind of funny. We had. Again, the, we had only toyed with this idea. This was not a, anything that we kind of thought. It didn't get much, you know, depth yet on it. But we were flirting with this idea that um, Scratch is becoming a little bit of a third wheel with third wheel with Jeff and Jeff, mm. and so the Jeffs are trying to basically like you know sometimes. We just like to do things ourselves, and, mm. and Scratch is like, no, no, I get it, I get it. Uh, so, uh, so he decides. Well, if I if I had we double dated, then then it would be like a third wheel situation. So then he just brings the Jinx canister. <laughs> not, not oh just boy! Just the oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and you know, and you can still hear her inside the thing being super just violently rattling around in there. So, but we anyway, it was I don't know. We other than that gag, we did. I don't, there wasn't much to it yet. So, but I still think there could have been something, something there. Straight, straight <laughs> scratch incident to electric boogaloo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, you know, there's <laughs> there's obviously problematic stuff about you know you force somebody to go on a date with you because they're trapped uh, in a canister. So we'd have, yeah. we'd have to, you know, kind of figure Rinks that out. Probably. <laughs> but that's the might not approve. Yeah. Cannon Skrinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going nuts in the chat about that. About that revelation. Hey, whatever Bill says, we got more material for defense to fulfill. It's canon. Oh, yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Fire away. I was wondering, like, do you have a general age for how old Todd is? I think we were thinking he was in his 40s. Okay. He's pretty young. Yeah. Follow-up oh, question. Mm-hmm. Follow-up question. How long was Scratch a Wraith for? Because I was guessing, like, 10 years. Yeah, and that seems about right. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking yeah. that, too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, yeah, question, it, I guess. And it was long enough, you know, I mean, when he, obviously when his soul first slipped away, um, he, you know, as he says, he remembered, you know, more of his life, but he, because partly because he tended to stay away from people and, uh, you know, was isolated and he was kind of holed up. He spent a lot of time like in the attic when he wasn't, you know, having to do his scares and it, uh, that, um, you know, it's that funny thing when you are in community, right? So even having friendships, like having a friendship like Jeff, part of having a friendship is you talk about your life. You talk about what's going on with you, what you're thinking, what you're feeling your memories, you know, all that sort of stuff. And that helps keep things alive, right? Mm-hmm. For you. But if he's isolated and he is not interacting with people and not connecting with people that even sort of helps those memories slip away. Yeah. 
Right. Oh, um, Sin is here. Now we just got. Oh, yeah. Him. Yeah. So just, he end up. This one is. Like scary. Now we just got to make bets about I'm how here. Todd's going to bite it for real. <laughs> he climbed a mountain wearing sandals. He climbed a mountain dress. wearing yeah. sandals! I have well, a few ideas, actually, where I think uh, something happened to both. Uh, you know, I feel weird doing this without the uh, camera on. Really. So we actually did decide how he would die if we needed to do that. <laughs> so there was a conversation around... Uh, we we had done we were working on the end and you guys all know that story about how you know um we weren't moving forward and we asked if we could do an additional episode um and uh, disney generously uh, granted that we could and as we were doing that episode making it uh then it seemed like we were performing better and so then there was a concern about uh whoa wait a minute what if you know what if the show is doing better we don't want to end the show and we're like well if e simple solution is you just shelve the end you just mm -hmm. we just put it on a shelf until you know that that is what we're you know we're going to do and so in, in a perfect world we do a, a third season we'd make slight adjustments to the the end episode uh, to accommodate whatever things happen in season three and mm -hmm. then be able to air it but then there was concern about, okay, but what if you, we air the end and then it performs well um, and we decide that we still want to continue? And we're like, well... <laughs> <laughs> so at, we were working on the uh, the Many Lives of Scratch episode, the one with the ha the Happy Death Day episode, when that particular mm -hmm. conversation was happening. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. We uh, asked specifically for Rob Cantor to put the lyric in about hang gliding into a pole. And that was, uh, we were going to have, that that was how we killed Scratch. He was going to hang glide into a pole. <laughs> <laughs> and so the idea was he was going to show up to Molly, like, you know, like, oh my gosh, Molly had the a most amazing life. It was fantastic. I got to do this. I went to the Andes. I got to do that. You know, blah, blah, blah. And all that stuff. It just turns out, not so great at hang gliding. And then he would have yeah, seen that, that incident. Is, all, so, is audio um, good at hang gliding? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so. I honestly so, have expected a washed away at sea, but that's actually funnier. <laughs> yeah, I forgot mean, who it was, but someone wrote a someone wrote a fic where they they both died after going over uh, like Niagara Falls in a barrel or something like that. I actually Which, read that. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, mean, I think I've read that one. I don't know whose yeah. was that honestly, one. Honestly, you know, <laughs> not me. It, it, unless it appeared on screen, right? It's all speculative. So if. You all have a better, better story. I am, I am, that's like, you, you can have it. That's to totally great. So fan fiction. Yay. That's too funny. <laughs> it all spells right. Fan fix. Yeah. All, all <laughs> fan fiction writers raise their hands. Kind of. Uh, not, not the traditional. Oh, one. Arms, well, I can't raise my hand. Well, for, I make it for myself. Never plan release. Yeah, I, do, I do that art okay. instead. I'm right. I draw too. Trish says I'm yeah, yeah, drawing. Yeah. Okay, and uh my friends, we have a very special guest with us here. Um as soon as he That's what makes me on camera, I'll focus on him. Ken's here. What's up? Ken? Alright everyone, this is Ken from Gift Kids of the World, and he's Sorry, here to I'm just... Talk to us a little bit. There we go. Once it loads. Hi, Ken. Hello. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. Can you hear Hi, me? Hi, Ken. Okay, cool. Cool. Hi, Ken. Hey, how's oh, it yeah. going? Good, good. Thank you all for having me. Thanks for having me. Okay. I don't know if it's the Wi Fi. No, I'm, you're doing I'm, I think you're fine now. Yeah, I think you're fine. Yeah, okay. it's good. We're good. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Thank you all for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. Yeah. Of course, Pleasure having you too. Of course. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually. Uh, um, you know, well, I'll let you all lead the conversation. I can tell you, I'm. I'm usually based in Florida, but I'm in Georgia today, um, making a. Uh, uh, we we have five families traveling to the village tomorrow, so I came oh, up to surprise yeah. them before um, they head out to the village during spring break. So that's why I'm remote right now. That's so cool. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, it is very nice. It's very nice. Thank you all for doing this. No problem. Hey, so Molly, so much for Molly, Molly would do. 
Exactly. This is what this is what um, I'm going to do. Right. Um, so like yeah, I think uh, I think has has the stream been introduced to Ken yet? Um, I can do that. I've been um, we've been in communication for a while with the Give Kids the World people. They're all lovely, by the yes, way. It's absolutely. a lovely charity. Everything they do. Yeah. So I understand, Ken, that you have a bit of a history with Disney Television Animation. Would you like to delve into that? Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, and we could talk about the village, but before I joined Give Kids the World, I was with the Walt Disney Company for 17 years. Um, oh, nice. And and I, I spent about 13 of those years at Walt Disney World working in parks and resorts uh, and, and by coastal and things like that. And uh, the last three and a half or so, um, I went to Disney Plus um, where I got to work on some of our shows there. And the most recent show that I worked on was a Disney television animation show. And that was Disney Junior Ariel, which the teaser trailer just came oh! out yesterday. Um, and it's so weird because we... Uh, uh, I started on that show in 22, and it's 24, and we, wow. we were just finally seeing Ariel and hearing and seeing the world, but it just tells you how long animation is. So um, it, it was uh, it, it's a really, really great project. Uh, that um, show looks And so I can't cute. wait for the show to come out. But that was... Yeah, yeah, it's Ariel it before adorable. her 16th birthday. Yeah, yeah, and uh, um, so we'll see different relationships like Ursula and and triton you know before the the conflict comes in we'll see how they exist and ariel really using her voice in this world to find herself and she has new friends along and some of the cast has been announced king triton is played by tay diggs uh ursula is played by amber riley from glee um and uh michaela michelle harris who um uh, is uh, on that so Raven, and she did so many other stuff. Is the Star Wars show of Little Area? I love that, Ken. This is a long shot, it's but really I have to temple. ask: um, uh, how, how much of the Little Mermaid animated series from a while back have you seen? Uh, <laughs> oh, I know well, where this is going. Oh my god! Well, well, I mean, I don't know. Okay, I mean, I've seen it, but if you want to go further back. We could talk about Jim Henson's Little Mermaid with the puppets. Too. Oh, yes. I have friends that have talked that about that. I did not, I did but, not know that but the reason why I'm asking about the animated series is like, you know, it's so funny how the original, you know, the, the movie, it's this classic. It's a very simple love story. And then the animated series, it feels like they got bored and were like, we're going to do just the goofiest stuff possible. And so it's like, you think about it in context of the original movie, it's like, do you remember that time when we met this mad scientist who was doing crab experiments? Hi, Agatha. Um, crab experiments. Crab experiments. <laughs> this is the first time I've heard about it. What is happening? <laughs> this is the first time I've ever heard about it. Oh, it's insane. Yeah, 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 you know, it, 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 it was very different from the movie, but like when we look at animation uh, or look at the form of film and then short form television, you could explore a lot more because we're growing alongside the characters, right? So we were just seeing how far, I mean, I wasn't with the company then, but you know, I could say that they were just pushing the envelope and seeing how far they could go with the aerial character in the world. And that's kind of the beauty in short form television, you know, kind of do it, but it, it, it hooked on for some people and some people like yourself, it didn't. <laughs> so, uh, but oh no, it's, no, it's great. I, I think, I think when they did weird later, stuff like that, it was good. amazing. I think when they did weird stuff like that, yeah. it was insanely yeah. entertaining. Sure, 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 sure. Weird stuff always equals entertaining, apparently. Yeah. Well, there's an episode yeah. with dinosaurs. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's an episode of the, the that Little Mermaid series with dinosaurs, and that's all. That's all on Disney Plus. Wait, I don't, I don't that's remember that crazy. one. Hold on. Yes. I mean, I yes. Mean, like I said, I never, I never heard of the, heard of the show before. Like, it, wow, this show, is all new to me. Yeah, that show gets. It's wild. all available on Disney Plus. <laughs> yes. Go, oh, very surprised it's, it's, on Disney it's Plus. It's insane. Um, but anyways, back on, kind of back on topic, 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 so, um, so then you found yourself working over at, um, Give Kids the World, kind of, what was that journey like? Yeah, so, um, uh, during, uh, my time at Walt Disney World, I, um, I got to be in a public affairs role, and I got to travel with Mickey Mouse quite often, so, um, I got to go with Mickey Mouse, when we were lighting the Christmas tree, I give kids the world, and that was my first time there. And I thought, wow, this place is, it, 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 there's something with imagination, nostalgia, but also futuristic about it, and um, and and just boundless imagination. And 
I always said I I, I want to do something like this one day. And even after my the the ambassador term I was a part of, um, I I got to go to the village. They have speaker series where Disney legends would come and speak at the village. So uh, we had. Jody Benson and and Linda Larkin and Paige O'Hare and Tony Baxter and I would go and introduce some of our Disney legends and I always thought well at some point in my career when it's time to turn the chapter I think I want to turn it here and give kids the world and um it, it was it, it was just time you know Ariel season one came to an end and I got a beautiful place to pause and reevaluate. and I said you know what I, I want to come to give kids the world and I'm so lucky to to be there awesome. in, in, in our uh, development department working with our theme parks. I love that. I um, So back in high school, I volunteered there a whole bunch um, because I had a community service requirement. And it was just the the perfect thing for me to do because I love theme parks. And it was just, that was technically kind of my first, um, get, get my first taste of working in the hospitality industry before I... I started uh, working over at my first my first job job was over at Wet n Wild, uh, but I did shifts at the oh, Gingerbread cool. House and the Ice Cream Palace and the uh, over at the pool kind of being a pool attendant um, and all of that and I just I had such an amazing time um, and I need to actually make a point of going back there at some point because it's it's such a wonderful organization and. Um, Love to, we would love to have you. I would love to have you. Absolutely. Uh, it, and just when we were coming up with the idea to do like a charity stream, I'm like, this, this is what we have to do. Um, this is what, like, this is the perfect thing to kick, um, to kick off doing, you know, charity stuff, uh, you know, inspired by the show, kind of using the show as a springboard. Um, and that was before we, um, found out that there was actually a much more personal, um, connection to that, um, Michael Kramer, the show's composer, um, he and his wife actually lost their son, Theo, um, uh, just around his birthday, um, last year, right around Halloween. Um, and he was um, battling a brain tumor. He was too sick to travel to Florida because they wanted to do Give Kids the World, but he couldn't. He couldn't make it over there. So they did their whole Make a Wish. Um, uh, uh, they did everything with Make a Wish over in California, and it just. Uh, oh my gosh! It just. Yeah. Uh, my, it's like that. That goes to show like why stuff like this is so important, and why it's it's you know it's just really important to. Um, spread that spirit of kindness and joy and hope to people who really, really need it in a, a, a really, really dark time in their lives. Yeah, you know, it's uh, um, that w when anyone comes to the village as a guest, right, or a wish family, there's already heightened emotions, right, because uh, they're there for, for a reason. This is not just a vacation that you plan for. This is a vacation that you make a wish for, right? And, and we make it true. So um, we, we really have to be really intentional about uh, understanding just a beautiful human spirit and a kindness that exists in our village to make sure that it's not just memories, it's indelible memories, but it's inspiring hope through happiness that when, when these folks leave the village, um, it's not just another sad story, it's an inspiring story that one place exists that will reinvigorate a family spirit to keep, you know, fighting. And uh, I think that's really the magic of, of Give Kids the World. And the beauty in it is that, like, you know, here we are on a live stream talking about that, right? It, it, it's just using the resources around us to raise awareness, raise money for it. It's, it's really a beautiful thing that we come together for uh, kids because at the end of the day you know a disease or a critical illness doesn't discriminate um, so we, we could come together and you know uh, uh, share the word it means a lot to all of us absolutely well you know Michael was ta telling us about how when they went to Disneyland with Theo um, he was um, it, it, he was wheelchair bound at that point um, unable to walk for the most part um, but after getting off of Radiator Springs Racers he was so excited that he actually like stood up and walked over to his wheelchair and it's like that is the power of, of, of that kind of that you know that kind of experience being able to provide that for these kids it's it's really important yeah it is really important you know and uh, you go to the village and you realize that there's still good people in the world you know there's lots of good people in the world so and we just um, got another donation yeah, really uh, from Tim Stoke uh, 105 dollars thank you so much Tim um, w. nice 
That's awesome. Very Woo! nice. Folks, please keep donating. Any little bit helps. Even like if, if you could just do $10, that helps. I think the minimum that we go is 25 any amount helps. That's the bottom line. Because this is a good helps. organization. It's good stuff. Have... It's what Molly would want. Exactly. This is what Molly would want. A penny helps. Mm. Exactly. And it's, what, a penny and, it's, helps. and it's what Scratch would want, too. Because, I mean, come on. Ice cream for breakfast. <laughs> like. That's right. I think he'd be more concerned with the food, eating. but he'd probably want the money. Yeah. You, you, you know, now uh, where where there's uh, uh, ice cream, um, we also have our cinnamon rolls for in there, too. Ooh. Ooh. You know, ice cream, cinnamon rolls. It's all like oh uh, Henry Starlight's. That's a, that's a combo. I shouldn't be oh. salivating right now. Oh, my gosh. I'm about yeah. to. Well, welcome to the club, pal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Welcome oh, to the club. Cinnamon roll. Cool. Oh, cool, my cool, gosh. Cool. Yeah. No, well, thank you all so for cool. having me. I know it's windy, and uh, um, you know it's 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 windy, and the Wi-Fi is cutting in and out. But I just wanted to come on and say thank you uh, uh, for doing this. And I'm sorry that I couldn't dedicate more time. I wanted to make sure I did a boat, but to give you an example of the power of this is um, again, there is five wish families in Georgia that is all coming down to give kids the world this week. So we surprised them with uh things on uh how to prepare for the village so they got that. their personal invitation that um that invited them is, it, is anyone familiar with our star program what that is i know about okay, it so let me you probably, yeah you should probably explain it to everyone yeah so the star um every so when f families come to give kids the world uh wish sibling could could partake in everything that the 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 child does but specifically for the wish kid um they get to write their name and a hope and a wish on a on a star and they really get to think about this then we have this really intimate ceremony in our castle of miracles where stellar our star fairy takes it and protects that wish and puts it on top of uh the castle now we've been doing this since 1994 so we have over 200,000 stars surrounded of the castle of miracles and um that star you know continues to shine bright each day and families it, it even when you live get and leave give kids the world families could go and still see their star uh come back and visit any time and then it's that much more important if a child um is lost along the way that that family could could come and see that star regardless right so so that invitation is really really precious so i came up and Stellar wrote them an invitation. I presented it with them. And of course in Florida it rained, so they got poncho, sunglasses, they got a duffel bag. And um, it was a really good time. One of the, uh, the the Wish kids, Jared, is really excited about trains. And we have an entire train room with a miniature. Uh, so we really got to connect there. So um, this is something that uh, I'm saying we haven't done in the past, but um, yeah, it was about like a three and a half hour drive from Orlando here, but seeing the excitement and the connection on the kids faces it doesn't matter right like i'll drive another three hours and this is why we do this so uh that's why i'm remote and that's why the wi-fi is a little cranky but um yeah thank you all seriously for doing thank you so much Ken. thank we're you we're so glad Ken. to have you thank here you. Yeah, um yeah, yeah. Any, anything from bob I'm glad to have you here anything from bill himself say again Wait, I'm, I'm asking him like if there's anything from bill himself like he would like to say to Ken. Uh, you, you're breaking up a little bit. I think what Fazley's trying to say is, does Bill have anything he'd like to say to Ken? Oh, gotcha. Oh, I got. <laughs> thank you. Um, well, Ken, I just first of all, thank you for popping on today, and uh, you know what, as Chandler said, uh, couldn't ha couldn't have known how uh, important it was to our uh, sorry to our team. Uh, Having an organization like Give Kids a World, um, giving hope to families like uh, Mike and Allie Kramer, um, giving joy back. It uh, anyway, it it was the perfect fit for our show. And anyway, I just want to say thank you for what you do, and uh, and I'm just so grateful uh, to the organization and to uh, everyone who's been participating in the in the fundraiser. Um, it honors uh, Theo, and it honors Mike and Allie, and it honors all those families who uh, get to make those those wishes. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll say this lastly. Uh, you know, for anyone out there watching, 
when we think of donate, we may think of a transaction, but I give kids the world. When you give money, you're giving the ability for a child to create a legacy because a child, they understand the, the, the fight that they go through, right? And they understand that, you know, there may not be a light at the end of the tunnel, so they're not afraid of that, but what they're afraid of is not being remembered. And I give kids the world, we do just that with that star ceremony and leaving the legacy, right? So that's, you're not donating. That's what you're giving to. You're giving to a child's legacy. So um, I say thank you for doing that. And, you know, I look forward to doing this in the future. And maybe we could do a live stream when episode 101A comes out of Disney Junior Aerial. And we could talk about that because it's yes. a really, really great show. But, um, yeah, yeah. Thank you all. And I hope you all have a good rest of your day and uh, a successful stream. Thank you so much, Thank Ken. You. Have a good day, man. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Thank, Thank you, Ken. Ken. And other right. got some more got donations. Donation. Rowan Rivera for fifty-two oh, fifty. Oh, um. And did we shout out Tim Stoike for donating hundred and five dollars? Yes, I did. Nice. I did. Yeah, nice. I did shout out Tim. Nice. Okay, just just making sure. Yeah, we got to shout out everyone. The, let me go back to the page and see. Um, we... If there were any. Oh, check out the page too. Oh, okay. Hang on. All right, so. Um, Tim, I want to read, uh, so I want to read what Tim said. Um, thank you, Bob and Bill, for um, the Ghost of Molly McGee, and thank you for the crew behind Operation and Application for this cool event. It's really nice to see how this show can inspire people to make a change and help others. Hope you all can reach your goal. Thank you so much, Tim. And then Rowan Rivera, I wanted to let you know that I extended Operation and Application to my family in Puerto Rico, and it was a huge success. Uh, I and have the following people: a hundred and one year old great grandmother with nonverbal, uh, grandpa with dementia and Parkinson's symptoms, great uncle who uh, cares for them, son of great uncle who's in a coma but is occasionally conscious and had a birthday on the twenty seventh, um, uncle whose birthday occurred while I was there, aunt who lives alone, and more. Already missed Puerto Rico. I hope to return soon. One more thing. Since uh, you were discussing fan fiction earlier, I've been wanting to write a fic in which Scratch suddenly remembers his time as a wraith through funnel cake, like he remembered his life with cherry soda. That's a fun idea, Rowan. You should definitely write that. Thank you. That is a fun idea. Yes. Oh. The the funnel cake causes him to I remember. Use some cherry soda myself. It was strawberry soda, though, not cherry oh, soda. Bad. I almost bought a strawberry soda at the store earlier, and I'm like, you know, I'm actually craving pineapple, and I think Scratch would like pineapple too. So. <laughs> <laughs> I I like pineapple. I'm taking myself yes, knowing a shake on some strawberries. Yeah. Oh no. I don't see why. Um. Uh, hey. So I think it's probably I'm not about saying anything time. about that. No. No. I think it's probably. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Okay. Um. I think it's about time that we um move on to. We're a little bit behind our original schedule here because things got shuffled around a little but that's okay um because uh, we wanted to talk a little about the multi-animator project the multi-animator project that um m put together which is awesome we were gonna uh we were hoping to possibly show the completed version here but it is not quite finished yet um but in, um, but we do have a message from m who was not able to join us in person today or well virtually rather but we have a video message and I'm going to go ahead and play that. Hello, everyone. I'm here. Sorry, I couldn't come to this. Hold on. Okay, it's it is lagging to heck, which is the unfortunate um, problem with this. Let me try again. Let me see. Hello, everyone. Nope, it's. Still, it's still really bad. I'm really sorry. I, oh my gosh, the internet connection is just not great. And I'm pretty uh -huh. sure that was the correct <laughs> one. I'm going to go ahead and troubleshoot that real quick. Um, But we have the other letters. Um, does anyone want to start reading some of them? I think some people can't, can't be here for the yeah. whole time. So let's, whoever needs to leave first should go first. Yes. All right. I'm going to go ahead and troubleshoot. So I'm going to turn off my camera real quick. case scenario it will be on the long live tegum youtube channel which you should all go subscribe to it's a very cute video that i'm recorded all right all right uh let's get to reading the letters who wants to go first hello can you all hear me 
Blue Sparkle Water, we can hear you. Hi, hi. I guess I'll read mine first. Um, I got, let me see, I got the document with all the letters opened up. A little bit of context before I read mine. So uh, initially, when the map was in its early stages, it was planned to be a sort of two-year two year celebration of TGAM. Uh, so there's a little bit in my letter that uh, talks about that. So I'm just gonna read it off real quickly. So uh, you guys can hear me, right? Yep, I can hear good? you. Okay. So the ghost and Molly McGee premiered during a particularly crazy point in my life. It was my freshman year of college, and I remember all the hype surrounding the premiere of the show ever since I discovered it the face, faithful day of October 9th of 2020 during that New York Comic Con live stream. I knew I was in for something special. Throughout 2021, I followed every update and searched for the show every day on Twitter. My hype only rose as more clips released, and I remember going crazy when I saw the finished theme song posted on YouTube, I believe it was the Halfway to Halloween in 2021. And I remember watching the show for the first time during the early previews in late September, and I watched the premiere again later that week with my roommate and best friend Jonathan. Um, being able to eventually interview Bill, Bob, and Dana, which that interview has been posted on Molly Cord, I think it was about a year ago or something. Um, that's kind of been highlights of my life, and I just want to thank the talented cast and crew for their dedicated work in delivering something special with that touch of Disney magic. So thank you, TGAM, for giving me some light during a crazy point in my life. So yeah, thank you so much. Well, thank you, my goodness. Wow. That was a mutual thing, too. Uh, just FYI, you know, um, seeing all of your responses to those things that we dropped earlier uh, kind of gave us a little more energy to kind of keep keep at it, that we felt like we we're on the right path with something. And, um, you know, it's it's very strange, you know, making uh, animated shows, especially, by the way, in the pandemic. I literally, I literally made most of the show sitting right here on this couch <laughs> so there was uh you know it was it was a weird very virtual virtual uh isolating at times kind of experience so getting the feedback from you all uh and it kept us going thank you okay i think i got I just the message how honored i oh, am that you came go ahead can I just say how honored I am that you and the writers and even Alan Lee like pop into Molly Cord to just like hang out with people, answer questions, it's show so off great. old stuff. It's so it great. just this community is so tight knit, and I love that. Mm -hmm. well, it, well, thank you. It, it, I mean, of course, it was super fun to drop in, especially on Fridays and cause you know a little chaos. I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> yes, exactly. That, that was always that was always a little fun. So yeah. I think I got the video queued up. I'm going to try it now. And of course, it's not letting me resize it right now. But if I transition it and it's weird, I'm going to fix it really quickly. So, Hello, everyone. I'm here. Sorry I couldn't come to the stream. I have very important things to do. But uh, I'm here to talk about the map. So making this map, it started off as a little... Uh, we planned to make it into a video about a fan theory. But then we decided that... If we couldn't do that, we're just going to do a video about uh, highlights of season 1. So from episode 1 to episode 20. So the person that I collaborated on making this map or hosting this map was Snook. Snook was a really great help. Snook provided the the audio clips for the people who joined the map. It was such a it was a fun experience. So this this I think this was my third the third map that I hosted, and this one is by far the most successful, if I must say. Everyone just it just came together. Uh, every artist every artist that joined in for the map were very talented. They're all very talented, and I'm I was really excited for people or for people to see what we make and. It was even more exciting when we got uh, invited to present it in the stream. 
So we did our best to finish it. Unfortunately, we couldn't. We were missing. We were missing some parts, but it's going to be finished very soon, and it's gonna be. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is is the. It, it, this isn't just a map. It's a love letter map. So love letter map is. It's not just us. Um, Taking snippets, snippets or highlights from season, from each episodes of season one, we were we also wanted people who couldn't animate for the video, uh, write their own letters to the show, like, like thank you letters to the show, a love letter to the show. So we decided that that would be a really cool thing to add. So we did, and I guess this is this is technically what the stream is going to be about. Sorry for the dog in the background, but uh, I'm really excited for you guys to read the letters. They are very, very, they they are very lovely letters from very lovely people, very lovely fans. So that's all. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm sorry again if I couldn't, I couldn't come there. And I'm very busy right now, but thank you very much. And goodbye. There we go. Mike is unmuted. <laughs> um, that, and I think that's the perfect okay. segue back into reading some more of the letters. Thank you so much, Em. Um, uh, she she obviously, as as she said, she said in the video, wishes as well, wishes us the best. Um, couldn't make it em. today, but yeah. Em uh, is the I... goat. Uh, but before we get back to the letters, I actually have we have some shout outs to do really quick. Uh, two more donations. One is from our very own Jessica Animation, twenty-five dollars, and then another twenty-five from me. Yay! Just, you know, a little extra. <laughs> and I'd also like to give a shout out, and one extra shout out to uh, one of our lead planners and a moderator on Molly Cord, Gas. He wanted yes. a shout out. He couldn't make it here today. I wanted to shout him out because he's the goat. Yay! Yeah. Um, um, I mean, like. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, shout out to Gas. I mean, he was one of the first people, I mean, along with Stern, but he was one of the first people to introduce me to how Mollycott works, about how we got our contacts with Bill and the entire stuff and all that sort of stuff, and which managed to make this stream possible in the first place. Yeah, they, yeah, great people. Great oh. team. Shout out to the entire Mollycott team. Gas. And, and yeah. someone else, someone right, else right. should shout out. Someone else should shout out who wasn't able to make it today is uh, Arbor, who is not here because he's going to Paris. Which is super cool. I'm definitely not jealous about that at all. He has helped so much with the Atlanta tech issues. Oh my god, yeah. No, he... Like, the reason why this stream is, like, better than the last one... We still are having some issues, of course, because just Spectrum Internet sucks. But um, it's it, it, a lot of the reason why it's better now is because we worked on, on a lot of those issues and uh, and got a lot of them worked out, so... Shout out to Arbor. Woo! Yes. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's have yeah. fun in Paris. I, I, Say hi to Remy for us. Go ride Phantom Manor at Disneyland Paris for me. <laughs> I, I think if, if I wanted to shout out like a lot of people, I mean, there would be so many people to shout out, but like, I would oh also want to shout out for the people that live in the global south as well. Like, for example, like M, I know she lives in the Philippines. I know that, you know, she's also a teacher as well over there. And like, you know, like what Bill said, you know, it's, yeah, comes from all over the world. Um, I'm from Malaysia myself, also a global south country. We have our own issues. We have our own problems, and you know, uh, I mean, like you know, for example, like you hear the dogs barking in the background when M was talking. So you know, <laughs> we all we all we all have that sort of stuff, you know. But like, um, yeah, I mean, we're all here for the same thing, regardless of where we come from. We all love the show. We all feel like we were inspired by it, and like it's great that you know we have people like M to like show that you know it's not just you know the Western countries, people from the Western countries that love it. It's also from you know people from from like you know Southeast oh, Asia. You know, since the show was based around someone from Southeast Asia, um, and and like like Arbor, Arbor's from Kosovo, so so also that's that as well. All over the world, literally. It's always fun asking. So like, yeah, hey, um, that's what, what time is it? What time is it where you are again? It's like, <laughs> oh, it's like one a.m. Like, <laughs> what time is it? Leslie, <laughs> go to I'm sleep. Like, oh, I gotta look at Google. Like, Google doesn't even have a time zone function. Like, that makes things worse. So mm -hmm. yeah, but eh, whatever. Go ahead. Uh, I didn't really have anything else to say about that. <laughs> it's just, just, it's so cool. Um, I mean, okay, so uh, yeah, I mean, okay, so like, I think, I think, I think we got more letters that we want to talk about. Yeah. Um, I believe um, 
Galactic. I believe you had a, you had a letter as well, right? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, Cookie. I do have my letter. Yeah. Go off. Let this man cook. Yes. Let me cook. If you don't let me cook, you'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> oh, I'm just uh, I'm a. Uh, I'll read a bit of it. I'm also gonna improvise because I do want to say a bit more. So uh, here we go. Let's see. So when I first started, like, with Molly McGee, I didn't even know the show existed for a while. Also because, well, yeah, it didn't exist. But I remember I watched this. I can't remember what YouTuber it was. But I remember I saw a thumbnail of the Ghost of Molly McGee, and uh, I stopped watching Disney for a while, so I didn't realize it was a Disney show. And I saw the, I think it was, like, the first video of the intro for Molly, Molly McGee. It was, like, the intro teaser or whatever. I can't remember exactly what it's called because my memory is terrible. But I, I was I was intrigued because I like the first thing that caught my eye was the animation and like just the way it looked. It looked so alive. It it instantly caught my attention. I'm like, this is on Disney. I gotta go download it back. And um, when I I remember when I uh, first started watching that, I was slowly getting into other Disney shows like like Amphibia, Owl House, and a bunch of like newer Disney shows I've never really paid attention to until now. And I remember seeing these. Uh, the show also recommended on my Disney Plus account when that also released, because when I first saw the teaser trailer for it, I just kind of... I'm going to call it a teaser trailer. That's what I'm going to call it. Sure. But when I first saw the teaser for that, um, I did want to see it. I just never had the time for it until like I can't remember when I saw, it, but it was before season one ended. It was like halfway through that, and the first couple of episodes were so interesting to me because it felt like I knew it was an average to me. It felt like an average Disney show. Like it was so different though, because I couldn't really call it an average show, which I just did. And I am horrible at talking, aren't I? But. One of my favorite things about the show is, again, just how alive it feels, how much and you could feel the amount of energy that's put into it with how it like every time I see it, it doesn't even feel like it doesn't feel stiff. It feels so fluid. And the colors are so not bright, but I guess satisfying, like they blend extremely well. And like it feels like candy, basically it looks like candy. And I don't even like candy, so that says something. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, honestly, I remember watching this. I didn't even realize it was a musical, and I'm I'm not the biggest fan of musicals. The only musicals I ever seen were a couple of Disney ones, and let's see, Beetlejuice and Hamilton. Those were like the only other musicals I've ever heard of, and I didn't realize this show was a musical until I clicked that first episode. And honestly, the music I was okay with because most of the time, once I hear singing, I click off instantly. But <laughs> for this, it, it was short, it was fun, it was gimmicky. And I'm like, you know what? At times it's cringe, but it's a good cringe. It, it, it's a very fun cringe. <laughs> like, it's something I can't make fun of, but it's something I could just laugh and just, you know, just be like, oh, that's funny. Like, I remember there was a song, I think it was like, I can't even remember, but I remember Molly going on top of a gravestone, but it was an actual grave. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, and the amount of animals I've seen got killed in this show. Like, the I birds. saw like a bird dying. <laughs> like, I'm like, y'all, bro. Like, Molly got a kill count. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, where's dead meat when you need him? <laughs> Welcome back, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Cookie. Go, go on. Oh no, that was amazing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, don't oh, no, be. That was no, don't be. Don't apologize. <laughs> don't apologize for anything ever. My apologies. Don't ever apologize. <laughs> Nobody will ever like it if you do my, that. My my apologies. <laughs> okay, let's let's like Cookie keep cooking. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna let me keep cooking. Like I, I wasn't cooking the first stuff, and now, but now, no, 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 I'm, I'm slowly getting back into it. You know, slowly getting back into it. No, I'm, I'm rejuvenating. You know. But yes, I remember watching. Oh, let me where was I? Oh yes, yeah, actually, where was I? Damn, I mean, dang, darn it! 
Kill count? Oh, yeah. Scale count, yes. Molly has a kill count, yes. <laughs> that's a weird way to leave it off, off. but yes. I swear, it's just... I, I love the humor in this show, because it is... At times, you can tell when the punchline's coming, but then at times it just happens out of nowhere. And it's... Honestly, it giggles up. I find it funny, because... Like, I remember... um. Actually, you know what? Now that I mentioned it, why she flosses a lot? Like, she, <laughs> shouldn't be like floss like three times in the show? Maybe, maybe more? We need a floss counter. Well, she dabs no. once and flosses once, and then uh, you know, yeah. the third one would be. Also, yeah, that also reminds me, like, she dabs, and I remember, like, she's dancing, and then it cuts to the others just watching her dance, and they don't realize she's, like, dancing to scratch or something. And it's just her dancing. <laughs> It's funny. And again, man, I'm getting off track on this, aren't I? I'm so sorry. But again, I'm just going to slowly start closing here. Um, I really enjoyed the show. I wish there was more I could have done to support it because, again, I kind of joined in on this show at a pretty late state. But honestly, I'm kind of glad I did because I got to watch the entire thing in like one sitting again. And uh, I'm, I slowly, well, I'm trying to force my friends to watch it, and I made a bet with them, but that's going to be up to me. <laughs> but I, again, I really enjoy this. Um, my friends were very concerned with me when they opened my sketchbook, and like 20 of my pages was just a bunch of Molly McGee sketches. <laughs> and I'm like, don't question it. You, you can, you draw Fortnite characters. Let me draw my Disney characters. <laughs> 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 If you could draw Fortnite, I could draw Molly. Don't question me. But Molly McGee in Fortnite, it's gonna happen. Molly cranks the nineties. It's real. Epic's games. I would rather see happen. Molly in something other than Fortnite, personally. No, I, I want Scratch as a glider. As a glider. <laughs> We're going to reckless really. <laughs> oh man! Okay. But all right. That, now, in conclusion, I enjoyed the show. I got to use the word in amplifying a bit too much now. Um, Same. Now, now when I go I've with my friends, that. I keep accidentally saying sweet baby corn. Uh, a lot of these slangs stuck with me. I absolutely hate it, but love it at the same time. <laughs> um, I want to continue supporting the show in many ways I can by just drawing, by participating in things like this, and just overall show that I do care for this show. And, you know, it's amazing. Because uh, if I didn't like the show, uh, how do I do this? Time? Oh, how do I flip? I forgot how to use Discord. How do I flip the camera? Yeah, yeah I'm just on the camera. <laughs> well, uh, while you figure that out, we got another donation from David Ramirez. Um, he donated twenty five dollars. Yep, that's I me right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh right, your name's David. Thank you, Nintendo. Yeah. I think I think it's got a message. I think he had a message. It's going to be right next to Godzilla. There you go. Let's go for 15k. Let's give kids the world. Yep. Oh, yeah. Godzilla. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That, that, that's all. Yeah. That, um, that uh, let, let's me. pass it over to let's pass it over to Sarah to to because like she's been she, yeah she's been asking about one thing to speak about, about her letter as well. So Sarah. I know. Right, I was, I was about to to say Sarah. Hi Sarah. What's up, Sarah Cook? Okay, Sarah Cook. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and it's, is she there? Yeah, okay, yeah. So, Sarah, yeah, Sarah's, uh, I'll let you I'll, I'll let you guys know that Sarah's also celebrating Easter right now. So, like, you know, she's got a lot of family all over home. Oh, there we go. Hi. Yeah, they're starting to arrive, so I don't know how much longer I can stay, but. um, So, I have a letter to, uh, ever since I saw the first looks, I knew this show would be special. I don't think I ever could have predicted just how special it would be. If I had to choose one word to describe how the ghost of Molly McGee makes me feel, I would choose seen. I feel seen as a small town Midwesterner in a way I haven't seen captured so accurately in TV like ever. I feel seen as an artist through Sharon. But most profoundly, as a person healing from trauma, I feel so incredibly seen through Scratch. The end touched me in a way I never could have expected. 
even with the great progress I've made on my journey these last couple of years, it helped me to take a step back and realize why I act the way I do. And it reminded me that I am not alone. Good art comes to us when we need it most. And to me, that is beautifully illustrated in the themes of resurrection. A friend recently told me that joining this project really seemed to be lighting my fire. And that's what this show means to me. It's lit a fire in me in a time where I've been wondering if anything I ever do is worth it. It reminds me of the importance of community in a time where all of my friends are moving on to other things and I'm having trouble making new ones. Those friends will always be important to me no matter where life takes us. It reminds me to cherish that community and those friendships. It reminds me to reach out, to take up space, to take risks. Isn't that what makes life worth living? So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Stories like this are so important to tell, and the world is a better place because you shared yours. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, that thank was you so much, Sarah. Oh my goodness. I, uh, <laughs> Excellent. Guess what I have right by me here. Yay! Hey! Yeah. Hey. <laughs> nice. And um, yeah, I, uh, so thank you for that letter. Thank you for this one too. And, uh, huh, you know, a lot of big feelings about this. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to go ahead and let them all out. We're here. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I think the thing that you, uh, you just said too, about wondering, like, does the stuff you do make any difference? You know, that's something we struggle with too. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And so it's, you know, so hearing that, it, it just, <laughs> you know, my, my wife often tells me, uh, you know, I I wish the show had, of course, been, you know, such a huge rock star of a success ratings-wise, whatever, that, you know, they would have made, you know, eight seasons in a movie, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, and then I hear stories like this and I feel like um, Sarah that uh, that is a measure that blows any kind of Nielsen report out of the water right I, I think um, the fact that that we could have uh, an impact on you and you could have an impact on us that's a it's a pretty beautiful thing so thank you um, and uh, we'll just keep going through the journey together, right? Yeah. And uh, I want to go ahead and read mine. Mm-hmm. Go off. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. <sighs> so my dad's been out of the picture since 2018, basically like a month after my 21st birthday. And as you can imagine, things have been incredibly difficult since then. Finances were already tight with just me and my mom, and then she lost the job that she had at a travel booking agency because of COVID. Um, she's been having to work some pretty long hours over at Disney World ever since just to try to make ends meet. Actually, um, as I'm, uh, as I'm, you know, right after we did the first stream, like she, I took her on like the first vacation she's been on in years because um, she deserved it. <laughs> Um, and we've always had to keep moving forward because if we ever stop, we'd just be sunk. And so I've done everything I can to keep my head up and look on the bright side because when things are at their worst and darkest, they can only get better. And when I first heard about the show and, and then more details were revealed, we saw the panels and the animatics, I, I knew I'd love it. I knew this show was right up my alley, but... I had no clue just just how much it would resonate with me and how strongly I'd relate to Molly if I plush it over there. But because she she represents what I aspire to be. What we should all aspire to be. So thank you once again from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Chandler. Thank you. Dad. 
damn, who's cutting onions in here? It smells. <laughs> yeah. It... I think somebody's cutting I mean, some downstairs. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I mean, this show has just inspired me so much. It's You're inspired not in the me. I'll tell you. It's inspired me creatively. It's inspired me to, to you know, work with these amazing people to do good. It's, it's, it's helped me meet a ton of amazing people. And it's just, oh my gosh, it's, you know, there, people will talk about like, oh, well, my favorite show ended. You know, I, I need to find something else. I need to move on. I'm like, I don't want to move on. I, you know, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean that in a... I don't want to be bitter, but like, you know, this show, this show came out at the perfect time for me and it's going to stick with me forever. I should have gotten Thanks a lot, Chan. Don't forget your forever friend. <laughs> uh, um, I, I want to pass it over to, um, I want to pass it over to Jessica who, who ha will have her message spoken by Blue Sparkle Water, if I'm correct. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll pass it over to the next person to read out the letter from the artist team. Hi, can you, it's me again. You all can hear me, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this is a letter from Jessica Animation. So uh, here we go. I had teetered off DTVA around the time Star vs. the Forces of Evil was airing. After that, and when the pandemic hit, I took the time to get caught up on animated TV. I started with The Owl House, then Amphibia, after the Owlphibia era was, era was coming to an end, I heard about the ghost in Molly McGee. It could not have premiered at a better time when COVID was still at its peak. A breath of fresh air after Amphibia and the Owl House, I adored the ghost in Molly McGee's overall message of positivity and inhabification, and not to mention the beautiful animation. Shout out to Mercury Filmworks and catchy songs. Keep this short. Thank you so much to the show creators, Bill and Bob, for making such a wholesome and comforting series about a girl and her ghost best friend and for getting us through some difficult times. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, you know, I, <laughs> I often think about, uh, you know, when we were developing the show and actually it was first launching, um, you know, we first were going into production we, you know, we wanted to put something hopeful and good in the world, but uh, we kind of had no idea what was coming. <laughs> and uh, Bob and I have said many times how uh, working with with the crew, um, working on something hopeful and positive, helped us get through pandemic as well. Uh, there was, I mean, you know, oh my gosh, there was just so much that was going on then. So much that's still going on, um, and to sort of have a, a little ray of hope in the world uh, was good. And it kept us going, kept us from cynicism, and and you know, yeah. So thank you. That 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 means a lot to me. Um. Uh we also have uh, Trish, if you have any sort of message that you like to share. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't be uh, shy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can read my letter, but I don't want to get too much into it. But um, I can't begin to tell how much the show has done for me. Um, back in like 2021 or 22, I think. I lost my um, grandmother and I was working at the time as well. So I had like a lot of stress on me and I binged watch season one again. And it just, it helped me through a depressive gap in my life and through a very hard, like grieving process. Mm. And the show has like also very inspired me and a friend who like are getting a lot of inspiration from the ghost of Molly McGee to make her own show as well. Uh, but most of importantly, it, it's like, <laughs> I've gotten through a bunch of like, a bunch of stuff in my life and I just keep going back to rewatch it because it always just feels something. It's, <laughs> I'm just, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> um, 
I just it just makes me happy every time I watch it. Even through like hard times, I just keep going back. Like I know <laughs> in the future I'm just gonna keep going back to it no matter what. Also, um here's a little funny thing. Um <laughs> I I <laughs> I used to have nightmares, and every time S Scratch comes in, I wouldn't have a nightmare anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you say it, Trish, because I was, as a kid, just deathly afraid of ghosts. And <laughs> so it was really important for me to... Um, uh, I wanted to show that Molly's first reaction on meeting Scratch, especially when he was doing his you know first real scare mode thing, was going like... <gasps> fantastic performance like she's just you know and just like it completely took the fear away you know um and and that was a little bit for for me to sort of a, a little tip of the hat to you know little me to basically go like hey dude you know what it's 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 okay it's it's gonna be okay and um it was even interesting uh early on we had a, a focus test uh, group of of kids come in and watch at the animation test, which, as you know, is is the moment where Molly meets Scratch in the attic, and you know, and there's the curse. And this one kid, he he got really scared, and kind of like you know, pulled his knees up to his chest, and he was he was like like this is too much, too much for me, you know. And uh, and then when Molly has that reaction, just like so, we're like you know, we're best friends and all that stuff. He was laughing so hard, and I I just thought about how how important uh hope and joy are in the face of really scary things and um you know back to the charity point I, I you know one level that's that's what give kids the world village is all about right it's mm -hmm. it's hope and joy in the midst of really scary stuff and um and it's amazing the power of that I think, you know, Trish, one of the things that we had was a, a no cynicism uh, rule in the show mm -hmm. that, um, you know, Scratch, of course, could, you know, sort of ha take it, you know, he, he's a cynic, right, at times, but... You could say what's on the adult audience's mind. Yes, but <laughs> the point of view of the show, the point of view of the show is was never cynical. It was never to... And, and I think part of that was, um, you know... We all go through enough, right? Like you went through with your, you know, the loss of your grandmother and, you know, those those struggles. Having some place that reminds you of the hope and joy in life, that's a pretty good thing to have. I also am really happy to hear that you it, it, are doing your own stuff that, you know, maybe it gave you a little spark to kind of say, yeah, you know what, maybe I could do this, you know? And you know what? Here's the truth. You can. You actually really can. <laughs> and uh, so I, I would, I don't know. You know, we really have, I keep looking over here because I have literally a cross stitch of no regrets on the wall over here uh, that uh, that our writing team gave me one year. And uh, and that for me is, it's important. Um, I mean, we're all going to obviously have regrets at times, right, for the chance not taken. But... I, I think on the whole, I I would rather try and fail than not have tried and just always wondered. So Einstein said something like that, right? Yeah. I, well, yeah, he probably said it way way better, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it gets the point across. <laughs> hey, we've got another. Donation. But right, I mean, I think that's yeah, yes. I I just I just you know I just plagiarized Einstein, mm -hmm. but. Um, <laughs> anyway, but I, I think it's but I think it's that that thing of yeah that you. Uh, I think when you are at maybe the end of your life's journey, you want to be able to look back and go, yeah, I'm happy I tried that. I, you know, and, and how fun is it? Like, I literally, there's a, a, a woman I met recently who uh, I believe she's like a, like a librarian or a teacher or something, you know. And she has a very sort of almost timid d demeanor about herself. And she was saying kind of it was introducing herself to a group and she was saying so like some interesting things about her and then she kind of finished with uh and i also used to be in a german punk rock band 
And we all went, wait, what? <laughs> we really just did that right there. Like, what? Yeah. You, you're like, tell us more. And I, and Please I tell me about more. That. Like, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, okay, you know, even if you, even if you try and fail, it's an interesting story at the minimum, right? But what if you don't fail? What if it actually works? What if it actually, and then, and that's the fun of the journey. So Risks are what I, I encourage you all to, to do it. Yeah, uh, exactly. We, so we got another donation from Bo uh, Brooke McGinley uh, for $26. Um, thanks for happifying my life, Molly. The ghost friends will always have a place in my heart. Oh, that's awesome. Woohoo. Well, Trish, thank you for your letter. That was beautiful. Thank, thank you. you. And it, and we all believe in you, Trish. <laughs> Pretend I'm guiding you really quick. <laughs> and expect I have also sent you something in the mail. I hope you get it. Well, thank you. I, bill thank you. <laughs> I sent both of them some. <laughs> 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 May we cool it on the sound effects, please? <laughs> yeah, we uh, we already figured out why we should do that earlier when I joined. <laughs> right. Um. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Chandler, I would like to ask. Like, uh, you've already gotten the video that we the, the surprise video that we wanted to show, right? Um. Uh, oh yes, I have that ready. Um. Uh, this is um from uh, Trish okay. actually. And should I just go ahead and play it? You're gonna like this. Do we have an introduction? Oh boy, you're gonna like this one. Now and then we all get a thought that stops us in our track. Am I living to my full potential? Or am I holding myself back? You gotta stop and she is Take a hit and Pluto knows what Pluto is and Pluto knows that Pluto's hot shit. Talking about space too much. I should really try to cut. 
back. I'm gonna stop with that shit, cause I'm a proper plastic. This is fucking cool, I'm so It's peak. Oh my gosh. That is so amazing. I muted. Mean that was so amazing. We still had to, we had to keep the tradition alive a little bit. All right. So I, I, have, to, I have to ask questions. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, I, you earned them. So, Trish, what, what is the. Um, what program are you using to animate? I, I'm using Storyboard Pro. <laughs> Right? No, yeah, I was just, yes, yeah, I was, I was wondering if it was, that's Toon Boom, right? Yes. Very cool. That's what I thought. That's what we used on Molly McGee. Mm -hmm. I, and, I uh, actually made the storyboard all the way back in October. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> we were hoping to get a bunch of stuff done by the time the end came out, but we have work as well. We're doing this, like, on our own time, so. Yep. I know how yeah. that is. But anyway, well done. That was that was fantastic. Yes, well done. Um, I, I will say this real quick. The song is from Tom Cardi. He's a he's an online. He just online music most of the time. But I just want oh, to point that out. That was super fun. Yeah, I, I, I hadn't heard it before, so that was really, that was really cool. Yeah, that's the first time I ever heard that song. Whoa. Yeah, same he here. makes a lot of meme songs that are like that. Well, not even meme songs, like songs that are with that same vibe. It's so good. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who got me into Tom Cardi, who I was just texting as soon as this premiered. They just told me it was amazing. So you did amazing, Trish. That's the bottom line. <laughs> yep. Shadow Chronic Corvidae, if you're watching right now. Yeah. All right. Uh, do we have any other letters to read, or we, did we go through all of them? Uh, okay. Maybe, maybe I could try to read mines. Yeah, go ahead. All right, then. It's a pretty lengthy one, so uh, I guess you write yourself then. I got it, like, right here on my phone. Thank you. Before the 2020s, I wasn't much of a Disney Channel fan my, uh, myself. I grew up with the channel, but I, don't, I didn't have much attachment compared to Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. And at the start of the 2020s, uh, it was a rough time for all of us. And it wasn't until 2022 where I wanted to watch something new. I found Amphibia and I, want, I was interested in Owl House. So I decided to give uh, the Ghost of Mama a chance. I had to hear pretty good things about the show. And that Dan Schneider, who previously played Caspatro Chowder, was in the show. After the first episode, I thought it was okay. Some fun to it. After the second episode, I like it. I started to get the groove of it and enjoy every single episode as it goes on. But it wasn't until all night play where something sparked inside me. The episode that told me that this was a special show. The episode that made me a Molly McGee fan to this day. It wasn't until, until that point when season one wrapped up, I decided I could draw R myself. It does a true Molly fan art in a way to kill the time for the wait for Molly season two. I was during this time where I slowly got introduced to the T game community. I got introduced to so many amazing friends. And I got new friends to run the hype for season two, season two. And I jumped on board along with other Disney Channel shows that I missed out on. And getting a new appreciate for the channel as a whole. Experiencing uh, the premiere of season two is a feeling and moment that I'll never forget. And the discussion around it was a fun time. And we wish we finally reached the end. I still around to the very end. And after watching it and the news dropping afterwards, it was no joke. The hardest I ever cried for a TV show in my life. The characters I grew to love are now separated and gone. And hear the news about 
that was supposed to get season three, but got screwed over by the network. It, it devastated me. It, it deserved a lot of love and praise. And the show impacted me and others in a positive light. And while January was a very rough time for me, I wish I could support him more. And I wish I could have gone to the show from the very beginning instead of halfway through his life cycle. But I need to say this. I would like to thank everyone for making the show what it is today. It was well worth and, and over a decade of being pitched and trying to make the show to a reality. Thank you for making the show that cheers us up when we're down. A show that connected with so many people and a show that hope to inspire us to do great things for ourselves and bright people's lives. And for what the message in the end taught me something and applies to the life model I want to stand by. Ricks are uh, one make life worth living. If you're playing it safe, you're not truly living it. It won't be easy. Bad things are going to happen. But that's how we grow and makes us who we are. But good things that happen too. All we have to do is keep moving forward. Thank you, everyone, for making the show possible and what it is today. Me and everyone will never forget the show for years to come. Thank you so much for that. Just thank, thank you. Thank you for that. I, uh, you know, I, I sometimes feel bad that Bob and I put so much pressure on the fan group to sort of, you know, support the show and watch it and all that sort of, you know, because we're trying to obviously get our numbers up and, you know, trigger algorithms to, you know, say things. And, but there, there are so many factors that go into if a show gets to continue or not continue. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and part of it was, I think just generally the business model has changed a bit. So people kept telling us like, no, no, two seasons is good. I've heard this from a few different places now, <laughs> different studios, like two seasons. That's like the new normal. That's a, that's a good thing. You guys did really, really well. Um, but I, you know, still was sad that it had come to its end. And but then Bob and I kind of thought about, okay, what was it we, what was it we really hoped to have happen with this show? And I think it was everything you and and the others have described, right? Uh, mm -hmm. It what we really wanted was to put something out there that could kind of a little hopeful a little true about you know like the uh episode you all night plight you know i love that episode too and i i think that that moment where molly is realizing like where are we going to be 50 years from now right that that and and maybe when this comet comes around we'll have this thing to remember right and i think it's important to have these little touch touch moments in our lives that you can sort of look back on and hit and so i hope that the the show um first first of all i'm thrilled that it, it, it exists in the first place that we actually got to make it but i'm even more thrilled by the response that you all have had to it and i hope that like the comet you know that even though it it may have it may be going away i hope every once in a while you will think back on it or and it will be this little touch point for you to say, you know, all right, check in, you know, checking in with yourself. Like, how am I doing? Am I, uh, am I living safe like Todd used to, or am I, you know, am I taking a little bit of chance? And I'm not saying like everybody needs to be like, you know, crazy adventurer, right? But I think it's more about um, life and love and how you communicate with your family and friends. Are you being as open and honest and loving and caring as, as you can be. And so if it, if this could be a little bit of a, a reminder of that, um, then I think Bob and I have done more than we even could imagine we could do with the show. So Absolutely. again, thank you. you know, the ticket community may not be the biggest, but it's definitely one of the more passion fandoms I've ever seen. And that's yeah. uh, something really special. We're all in this together. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which feels like a song. No one starts yeah, singing like, this high school high musical. School musical. <laughs> let's not exactly sing it. Yes. <laughs> well, let's not sing it then, please. 
<laughs> because yeah, I think the YouTube bots will take us down if we did. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've, I, I was, I was never my sister who briefly popped in. Gotten flagged, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> eh. Let's hope not. <laughs> Koei, this is from your show. Copyright strike us. Copyright, it is what it is. Well, not a strike. It would just not be able to be monetized, which is why we're not doing like monetization on. We didn't do monetization on either stream, either of the streams, because I knew I'm like we're using copyrighted music. It's gonna get blocked almost instantly for not blocked, but not able to be monetized, which is fine. Disney is stealing our money. But you know, I think so many people have really felt seen by this show, and I think you know we're all obviously proof of that. I mean, you know, everything with the representation, you know, the, the cultural rep and, um, and you know, with, with June, with the autistic rep, you know, so many people just really, really felt seen by this show. And it's just amazing. Well, thank, thank you. I, I, you know, it was, it's kind of, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to think through what, how I'm going to say this exactly. Take your time. I think that there is some pushback against the idea of diversity, equity, and inclusion, mm -hmm. and you know, out in the in the general conversation in the world. Um, but I think the surprising truth is, when you have diversity, when you have equity and inclusion, and you and you allow other stories to be told, that. Um, in the in the specificity of dealing with you know Thai culture or autism or LGBTQ issues or you know what wh whatever right in that um, people find they who even aren't a part of like a you know the, an Asian community or something they see something of their own life in it so that that specificity brings with it a generality that people can relate to so uh, for example in 100 percent molly mcgee um i can't tell you how many people have told us how they've experienced something very very similar and their their cultural makeup right there you know I, that the idea of you know a, a feeling not a part of the group that they're supposedly aligned with um how you know that is an authentic experience. So anyway, my my just my point is that um, I think having representation, it was important to us to be able to show and tell these different kinds of stories. But uh, because I felt like we wanted people to feel seen, but I also feel like uh, the bottom line, it made for good stories. It Absolutely. was good storytelling. Absolutely, and and people, uh, people of all sorts of walks of life and cultures uh, saw themselves in the content. So instead of just going back and regurgitating the same o same o, um, I think it it it's a good thing to be able to show um, the beautiful diversity and colors of life. And uh, I think the human experience is so wonderful and magical mm -hmm. that. There's room enough for all of us to be able to tell our stories. Absolutely. So. And, you know, for what it's <laughs> but worth... For, today, sorry. <laughs> for, for what it's worth, for all the people that are very loud about, you know, oh, you know, all this is so, you know, <laughs> completely making the word woke meaningless and, you know, t just like, mm -hmm. oh, we don't... Why do we need all this? This is so forced. It's like, you know, for all those, you know, that that is a minority of people who are very, very loud. Let me tell you, my channel, the reason <laughs> why it is as popular, like, why it's grown so fast, not to say I'm like a super popular YouTuber because I'm not. I only have 10,000 subscribers. That's, you know, Mr. Mr. Beats gets that, I think, in a couple of hours. Um, but, you know, a couple, I've, a couple of seconds. But I've I've grown so much so <laughs> fast. You know, I've grown so exponentially, because, largely because I've done the videos about, um, about cultural representation, about periods, about LGBTQ plus representation. Mm -hmm. those, those videos struck a chord with people because they're like, oh my gosh, I felt so seen by this. And... 
Um, and actually, so I, yeah. I, and I see some people ask like, how'd you get Rebecca on the stream? She saw the period video that I did and she liked it. So when I emailed her, she was like, oh yeah, I saw your video. I loved it. I'd love to help you guys out. So that's the kind of stuff that like, you know, you never know what, yeah. you know, you never know who's going to see what you're making, first of all. But second of all, you know, these, these are important topics to talk about. These are important things that people need to, um, you know, need to, to, mm -hmm. first of all, people, People, you know, really do like seeing themselves in media and yeah, and and also it's important for people to learn about other experiences that aren't their own. And, you know, just yeah. uh, I've been talking with a lot of people about the autism video that I'm working on. I'm doing a video about ADHD and autism representation, uh, which mm -hmm. I, you already know about. Of course, I've been talking to you about it, too. Um but um, I'm I'm so excited for that, and just I've I've shared it with a bunch of people. Like I've shared the script already with a bunch of people because I'm like I want to get as much feedback on this as possible, and the response I've gotten already has been incredible. So I'm so excited for this video. I can't wait for it to come out. Um, I, I I'm making good progress on it, so it should be coming out um, at some point pretty early next month. So um, I I, I just oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I can't wait. You know, because I felt so seen by, you know, I mean, obviously, I, I as I said, I, 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 I saw so much of myself in Molly, but also, of course, June, you know, because, you know, I'm on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. But unlike June, I found out pretty late in the game. I found out around high school, um, towards the end of high school. I've known for, I think, a little less than 10 or about 10 years, probably at this point that I'm on the spectrum. And it's like, you know, when I found out, found that out, when I found out about that and what that meant, I'm like, there's so much that makes sense now. <laughs> so having that, having that and having more people know about it is, is so important, I think. Mm -hmm. I kind of find out about mine like almost a year ago. Yeah. Actually. I yeah. Out and my, after finding out, like, oh, well, that makes a lot of sense. It also helps I relate a lot to June personally. Because <laughs> seeing, seeing that bit in, a, I'm trying to remember the episode, uh, it's the... Grand gesture, that's what it was. You see My beloved. Yeah, you saw her her like doing that little waving thing when it's uh when she hears like a loud sound. Right. That I get like that a lot. Yeah. Um, I used yeah. to get like that a lot when I was her age, yeah. Yeah, I was really I long still get like that, but that's well. because uh, long story short, never own a husky, no matter how cute they are. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was scared of dogs for a long time. I, I talk <laughs> about this in the video, but uh, there was one thing in particular that got me as a kid for some reason. You've been to the have you been to the Rainforest Cafe? You know that talking tree yes. they have in the gift shop. Yes. That thing, like, just I I don't know what it was. That thing just terrified me as a child. I don't know why but i but i found out in talking with other people i'm not the only one that was terrified of her so i'm like okay good it wasn't just me yeah i'm one of those people <laughs> i wasn't I've, there i never was a ridge forest cafe before i've never been but i've seen it like from pictures chandler showed me and i, I just want to like get rid of it <laughs> you're not missing much is sensory overload the restaurant eddie, eddie mm. burback's favorite restaurant you better off watching <laughs> Eddie Burback's favorite restaurant. So, uh, Eddie Burback and Ted Nivisons. Oh my God! Worth getting to go at least. Those those road trip videos are. I love that. I love that they did that. It's like the dumbest possible road trip you could do, uh, and it's mm -hmm. just glorious. I love it so much. I want to shout out to yeah. Six Fans for actually be uh, very sensory friendly with the rides. Chandler, I think you know, know about that one. Which uh, which one? Uh, about Six Flags. Oh know, yeah, where I had the yeah. I was very, I was very. Uh, I was, I, I think maybe I had probably seen this before and I forgot about it. But when I was at Magic Mountain, uh, like two days before we had lunch over at um, Bob's Big Boy, mm -hmm. um, I, I was at Magic Mountain and I was like, oh my gosh, they have the sensory stuff on the signs here. That's so cool. So like all the Six Flags. Oh, just sort of give you the heads up on certain elements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So or, they have I like. I haven't it's, been to Six Flags, so I don't. <laughs> um, it's like the it's like sensory, like the, so they go through the the five senses and give it a, give each one a rating from like one to five. Like oh, oh cool yeah. okay yeah and uh, Sea World has that too actually so um because so they both got certified to be like certified autism centers so they have like quiet rooms and the sensory info and other stuff like that. 
Oh, Andy, okay. Oh. And you used the Rainbow yeah, Infinity I symbol. I didn't know about that. Yes. And yeah, yeah. Six Flags uses the Rainbow Infinity symbol, which is really cool. Uh, we got a donation from Lou Herman for fifty-two fifty. Uh, let me go on to the website and see if they actually. Yes. Yes. Let's love, go. I love the message. See, what needs to happen is that Chandler and Bill, both being Disney employees, they need to just meet up, go to the Disney headquarters, and just like. I don't know, beg them to make Disney World and Disneyland autism centers. Just like do like I don't know, do whatever I'm, you gotta do. I'm gonna I am gonna try <laughs> to get that message sent up the ladder because like I don't know why we haven't done that yet. I have no idea. Like there's so much they do already that's really good for that. So it's like they just need to they just need a designated quiet room. It's not that hard to find a spot to do mm. that, and they need um the the sensory info on the signs, and that's like it. Like, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe there's other training stuff they need to do, but, like, it should not be that difficult for them to do. Dude, yeah. yeah. Now, yes, on that yeah. note, do we have... Oh, sorry, but Bill, Bill in, uh, see when they... Okay, well, I think we need, like, $71 to at least break the 15K mark. So we're almost there. We're so close. <laughs> That's our goal, at least. Yes. So close! <laughs> mm. yeah, fulfill his promise oh hey uh we uh do we have more letters to read or um because we do actually we uh, did... that's because i was gonna yeah, say i was we just did... about to ask because we did figure out how to get the how to draw videos working on here so yeah and we also figured out how to get the quiz working which we're hoping to do very shortly uh yes. if we don't have any more letters to read hmm. it's uh actually if we don't have any more letters to read could i say something to bill like just off the top of my head yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So let me just give you a brief uh, timeline real quick. So I, for, when I first learned about the ghost of Molly McGee, it was during the halfway to Halloween event when the theme song was premiered. Mm -hmm. High to the pandemic. Uh, my mental health was not the greatest because it was you know, pandemic season, doing school virtually, all that. And I saw the show and I was like, why are they showing this off in May? What's the deal with that? So then I forget about it. Then the show airs in October of 2021. And I'm like... Okay, Molly's dabbing. I don't know if this is my kind of show. And then, you know, I just sort of forget about it. But then, a year and a half later, I see the article about 100% Molly McGee being such good representation of, you know, like, biracial identity. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I saw this show a while ago. Is it actually good? Why don't I check it out? And then that's where it all went downhill. I, uh -huh. I binge watched the whole show. I loved it to death. I joined the server. I... I, like my whole life has been defined by Molly McGee. Wasn't I a part it's of that I journey want to be. too? It's something I love. Yes, you were. I met yes. you in person because of Molly McGee. Well, before, well, but before yes, that, yes. I, I um, forget. before that, didn't you? Say oh, you right. Before that, your channel. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Your channel was also part of that. How could I forget? It's, I never thought in a million years we, I'd be working with you. Yeah, we did. We did meet in person. We because uh, I went to New Orleans at uh, like towards the beginning of February, right before Mardi Gras, and we got to. Uh, we went, we went, we went and got beignets together, which, oh my gosh, go to Cafe Du Monde, get beignets. There are clouds of heaven. Yes, please. Oh my gosh. They are mm. fantastic. Yes. And we did a ghost tour, yeah. which was super cool. So, and that's, that was of course that kind of a great. research trip for the Haunted Mansion project I'm working on, which is going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. But I, anyway, I mentioned all of that just to say that the Ghost of Malibu has such a, a profoundly positive impact on my life. I've introduced, I've been introduced to so many great people. I've been introduced to so many other franchises like The Owl House and Moon Girl and other shows I would have never watched if not for the Molly McGee community. Uh, it's reignited my love of the arts. Like I've been introduced to so much new music, not even just Rob Canner, but it's like other music. Uh, I started writing fan fiction, which is not really something I, sh I don't know if I should be admitting that live on stream, but I think it's fun. I like doing it. And it's just, I, I just have so much respect for you, Bill, and everyone on the team for just putting such an amazing thing together and also being so supportive of us as a community. And just a thousand thanks from me. Love y'all. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I you know, <laughs> when you, you know, you said uh, earlier about how, you uh, know, uh, that Chandler and I are Disney employees and I am actually no longer a Disney employee. Actually, uh, oh. So, <laughs> you know. Oh, you know, wow. but, no, which is which is fine. I mean, that's which just, is how that you know, works. When, when your show end. ends, you're not you're not working for them anymore yeah, at the moment. Just, oh, 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 yeah. Like, like I, I just didn't know how yeah, else yeah, to yeah. describe it. <laughs> yes. No. 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 I know what you mean, but <laughs> um, but all of that, you know, it, partly is to say that um, it's it's been really. Uh, 
it's been a really cool journey to be a part of it, right? And and I mean, I started my professional career with Disney. You know, I've bounced back and forth at different places. Um, we love working with Disney. I, I know a lot of people wanted us to kind of boo and hiss at Disney when the show ended, and I'm like, nah, no, they've been fantastic. Without to them, us, the show and... would not exist. Like, regardless of what mistakes they made with I, marketing, I, it wait. still wouldn't exist without them. So. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, you know, yeah. I, I I just I don't have the cash to make this show myself, you know, so the, uh, the fact I, that so many people are Mr. like, you, everyone should just go indie. It's like, do you know how long that takes? Do you know how hard it is to set up an animation pipeline? Yeah, <laughs> it's not an easy yeah, thing exactly. to do. All those things. Not all. Right. You can name a bunch of indie projects that took years to make. Mm -hmm. deserve to yeah. get good terms and working conditions. Mm -hmm. Like, I know I know that a lot of people are just saying that we should go indie, but I still not everyone can go to India. I still no. think there's right. just a new law support for the corporate side of things. Yeah. Yeah. I, and you're right. And so, I mean, and I think, you know, look, there's what, what's fantastic is that there is more than um, one way. Now, when I started off in the business, um, literally you had to go through the studio system. The only way you would ever get your content seen was, you know, on a, television screen through a television station or you know a, a movie screen right and uh and then now you know thanks to literally what we're streaming on right now and so many of the you know the the, the many different platforms and opportunities for people to get their stuff seen and uh, and connect with an audience and so i guess anyway what i wanted to say to sort of <laughs> fin finish my thought on what you were you were getting at was about the fan fiction was um writing is writing and i think right. exactly. you know and i and i firmly believe in the the idea that <laughs> of that 10,000 hours thing of whatever you're doing right you you it just you got to write a lot of garbage before the good stuff starts coming out and you know and and you would and actually that's kind of a continual thing <laughs> like honestly whenever bob and i start like a new project and we sit down, we're like, okay, new new thing, whatever. And we sit down to write, and we feel like we've just we've forgotten how to write. Like it's just terrible. And and Bob will sit there and you know swear under his breath about how you know this is terrible and blah blah blah. You know, as he's writing, like I'll rewrite it later. I'll rewrite. This is garbage. This is terrible, right? And uh, oh, we hit fifteen k, yo! Woo! Yes! yes, we did it. Yes. Thank you, Trish. Uh, Thank you, Trish. <laughs> so the uh, uh, anyway, but uh, wait. All of that to, to say that essentially, you know, it's constantly you're kind of like, okay, okay, I gotta find it, I gotta find it. When you're creating something too, you gotta, you know, you're you've, you're you're struggling to try to find what the characters and their voices and what it all you know feels like. And the great thing about fan fiction, I think, is um, it's a lot like when I broke into the business. You were supposed to write a spec script. You were supposed to have a spec script of some TV show that yeah. you like, right? And what is and, that? And the Not just fan fiction, that... right? And and that's sure. what it was. It was fan fiction of that show that you could demonstrate, like you know, so you'd pick the show, whatever it was. I, I actually had one for Cheers in, in the day, right? <laughs> so it was. Um, so you and people look at like, okay, that feels like you know these characters. That feels like Sam and Diane, and this feels like you know Fraser, and you know, mm -hmm. and it feels like what the show should feel like. And I, so that was essentially fan fiction training you to how do you does it feel like the voice of the show? Does it feel like the characters? Does this feel like a story that would be told on that show? And uh, so. All that to say is just keep keep doing those things because you keep writing it because it's going to help you get stronger and better and better and better at being a storyteller. And then one day when you might launch with something that is, you know, wholly your own, it, it might be great, you know. So um, anyway, uh, all that to say um, for all the, all the art, you guys, I am so impressed with uh the multi animator project uh, that I, you know, the footage I've seen, I'm, you know, so much, so much of the storytelling I'm seeing from this fan community uh, makes me very hopeful that creativity is alive and well in this world. And we're going to see some just amazing things 
you know continued so hey hey bill we um, got uh we got another donation doing. from a friend of yours actually james peterson um just donated 105 dollars <laughs> from your friends in rockford <laughs> illinois thank you james oh my god let's go Thank so, you, yes. James. I've so, been uh, so, so so Bill got me in contact with James, and we'll have a little more about that um, in the near future. Um, yes. So, so Jim say, uh, yes. is is my uh, yes. It's officially James, but I call him Jim, right? Jim. So, um, but he uh, he and I made our first film together in second grade. Um, we ended up making films all through our growing up years, and then he went off to film school, and uh, and then was the he and uh, a couple of his buddies, uh, actually also my buddies, um, got hired on to uh, Darkwing Duck originally, and that was how I got uh, through the kind of through which Bob and I got to be on Darkwing Duck and and break into the business. So Jim and I have. Um, and friends for ever, <laughs> you know, since at least uh, first first grade, I think. So, um, anyway, uh, yeah. So I'm I'm happy he's uh, Jim's heard all these stories before. He's probably rolling his eyes if he's still watching, but um, <laughs> but he's, he was the best man in our wedding, and anyway, and we're we're we've just been friends forever. So, um. I'm glad you guys have connected. I think there's some cool opportunities uh, ahead. Um, but anyway, yes. So thank yes. you for bringing it up. Yes. Yeah. To reply to what Bill was saying earlier, I think that's that's very encouraging. Thank you. Like I, I don't have a personal grudge against my myself or anything for writing fan fiction because I think it's. I wrote a whole paper about this in high school, the history of fan fiction, which I can't get anymore. I lost it, but I'm passionate about it. I think it's really cool, and I. I, I, I really empathize with what you're saying about trying to make it feel authentic because I don't know if I've ever gone into detail about this. I, when I write fan fiction, it's usually from the perspective of June, uh, June Chen, mm -hmm. like because I feel qualified. Well, not qualified. I feel like I can write from that perspective as a fellow person on the spectrum. I mm -hmm. want to demonstrate that perfectly because I just want to be, you know, I just want to be authentic. There's lots yeah. of stereotypes, and that's why June exists to combat a lot of those. Mm -hmm. You know, she can do incredible things, and. That's just so encouraging that you said that to me. Just I, I, I want to keep doing what I'm doing, keep this show alive, and I hope we all keep doing what we're doing, keep making amazing things in the show's name. It's just, I'm, I'm tearing up a little. It feels, it's just so good. I, I'm so happy. <laughs> good. Well, you know, uh, again, I, I have to pop off now. Unfortunately, I, I, oh, I, well, I, unfortunately, I got to jump off because I got to get the house ready for tomorrow right <laughs> right right yeah. that makes thank you so fun. much for being here genuinely thank you but, um, so much, Bill. anyway i well no thank you you guys this is the uh this has been uh you have unhappified me uh, incredibly uh i wasn't expecting um letters at, you know and and uh just all the comments and that um yeah, boy, that really has impacted me. So thank you. And um, thank you. And I, you know, want to say thank you to everyone. You're who's amazing. Holy cow. I mean, it's just been amazing. And, uh, you know, the world is a better place because of this fandom and what you guys have put together. And I, uh, it has global reach and i've already you know i see your social media and i see how you are in, interacting and impacting the world and uh you know sometimes when it's a little dark it's nice to have a little light out there and uh so i i'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you with this last thought um and i probably have mentioned this before so forgive me if it's if it's repeating myself but um, years ago when Bob and I were making our first show, uh, which was The Legend of Tarzan, that was the first show that we produced, and uh, Tom Schumacher, who was the president of feature animation at Disney at the time, uh, was coming over to see what we had been working, working on for the show, uh, because he had overseen the Tarzan feature film, and so he 
wanted to sign off on what we were doing art wise and you know because he was very skeptical as as we were we of can you can you make a tv show that looks even remotely close to you know the beauty of this you know feature film and uh so anyway we i remember we're in this conference room and we are uh have artwork pinned up on the walls and we're walking through and he's giving feedback on you know choices and color palette and you know uh, line work that he liked better than others and that kind of thing and then he st sort of stopped and he paused and he, he looked at us he said you have to understand we have an obligation to elevate the audience they need to be better people because they've seen what we've made they've seen our content and and that always just kind of that really stuck with me um that I, I sort of felt like from something maybe I kind of had always been thinking about, but I had really, that to me was sort of like, that was the, that had become the measuring stick for me of what success looked like. Um, that if people could watch the thing we made and it had a positive impact in their life, then, then we had done what we had, were supposed to do. And so anyway, I f sort of feel like with the Ghost of Molly McGee and all of you, uh, that response, um, better than ratings and better than all the all that is the fact that I, I feel like you all have taken that spirit on, and I I feel like uh, the world is better because you all have taken taking it forward and and are changing the world. So to me that's my rating you know <laughs> i think that's awesome so again awesome. thank you for having me uh and thank i you i so much. really you know enjoy being a part of it all so it to have you bill and yes and we will chat soon again i hope of course, of course. <laughs> oh absolutely. definitely yes all right absolutely Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. all right well, he's the goat he's yes, the goat that's what he is best. we love we love bill so much Getting to, He's you know, and I, had, I had a bunch of people after I, you know, went on uh, on that Tuesday to go visit um, Swampy and the Phineas and Ferb crew over at Television Animation. And then, you know, I got to go have lunch with Bill and Bob over at Bob's Big Boy over in Burbank. And people were like, what was it like meeting them? Oh, my gosh. What was it like meeting them? I'm like, honestly, it was like just meeting old friends. It really was. I mean, Swampy kind of is Not an old wrong. friend. Swampy kind of is an old friend at this point. I've been friends with him since high school, since like 24 or 20 yeah it was like 2014 i think when i made that or 2013 was like end of 2013 was when i made that first phineas and verb video and they saw it um and and but then bill and bob even though i haven't known them for nearly as long it's still just they're just the, the absolute kindest people they're so wonderful and it was such a great i mean it's been so great to be able to to get to know them and to do all of this and and actually get to meet them in person and just uh, you know it's Oh, they're they're a treasure. They're the the two of them are just the best. Uh, so what are I we guess doing? We better lay out what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, I let me lay out what I think we've got planned for the next hour. So we've hit fifteen k. So Chandler, you want to show off the how to draw Libby video? Real yes, quick? yes, yes. Fun. After that, we'll do the quizzes, and then I think we've got some plans to discuss for the future of Long Live Tegum. Yes. All right, and here we go. Hello, and thank you for your generous contribution to Molly's Inhaptification Project. And this is my tutorial for drawing Libby. Um, Libby is a beloved character on the Ghost of Molly McGee, so I hope you'll have fun learning how to draw her. So when I try to come up with a pose for any character I'm trying to draw, I do an exploration drawing. And it's usually kind of messy and I give myself lots of permission for mistakes. And that way I can be very free in exploring it without getting precious and be a perfectionist. And when I then go to working on my actual drawing, um, I can, uh, it, it's just a good foundation for it. So this is what we're going to work on. And you might think this looks pretty good already. It's okay. It's just, you know, kind of scribbly. So I'm probably going to 
can see I had some issues with their foot down here. I kind of want to angle it a little bit so it's not what we call twinning or a twin of this foot because that's not really desirable. It um, just doesn't look very lifelike. Nothing in life is twinned. Um, and so I also want to make sure this, her hands create a nice platform and we have a clear what we call a silhouette for her turtle so the turtle isn't overlapping her hair. So it reads very clearly on first glance. And we just wanted to, she's got a lot of hair detail that's kind of tricky. And so I wanted to work that out before I got going. Um, and here we go. You ready? So uh, I always start with the head. Um, and then we work with what's called um, line of action. So her head is in three quarter um, as she looks at her turtle and she's got a chin. So we're going to add that. Now I'm drawing in pen. Don't draw in pen. Um, try pencil. Draw lightly, especially when we're doing construction. These aren't the lines you want to emphasize when you get into your finished drawing, but it's okay to see them. It kind of gives your drawing a lot of life and structure. So don't be afraid of seeing them. Um, we're just, you know, having fun. And none of your lines are, you know, your enemy. This is all just learning. So be gentle with yourself. So, okay, we got our ball, our crosshairs, where the eyes and the nose will orient on. We have our chin. And so, um, before we get into drawing her face, let's just kind of make sure that we have everything in alignment. So her body is going to, she's kind of hunched a lot, actually. So, you know, she's shy. So a lot of times when somebody's shy, they kind of like their chest caves in and they, they hunch because they kind of want to turn inward and hide. Um, so we're going to do that. And then she kind of has this slouchy kind of posture. Her legs are going to come down into her boots. She's got big old boots. Her combat boots. And then this leg is going to be right alongside it. The top of this boot's going to be a little, I mean, in 2D space, lower than the other, but in reality, it's kind of closer to us if you're. In 3D, this boot is going to have to overlap the bottom of that boot a little bit. And then, like I was showing you in my practice drawing, I'm going to angle that bottom of the boot like that a bit. We'll see how that works out as we clean it up. We can always change it a bit. All right. And, yeah, I might push her head over more. And that's okay, too. So please forgive the hairiness and the drying, but this is what we do. We work through it. Her shoulders are going to be kind of hunched. That's a very typical Libby kind of posture. And her sweater is going to, it's like she's got a slouchy sweater on. So the, the forearm part of it isn't very long. Got some ribbed edges. So I'm gonna kind of bring her sweater down, curve it a little more, wanting more slouch. There we go. And the ribbed bottom of her sweater. And then her legs have some curve to them. This knee has the rip in her pants. So to show the three quarter part of her boot, we're going to show like where the laces go right there. And then this line will kind of come down the toe to show you kind of three quarter front of the boot. And then we can always give the tread a little indent to make it look like it's got lugs. Do the same thing with this one. Laces, laces. You can see how loose I am doing those laces. That's okay. And oh, this is some big boots. So in this 
drying, but he's got massive boots. And that's cool too. Yeah. So let's get that hand up here. Now I'm gonna give a nice flat platform like that. All right. Now I'm gonna let the hand kind of conform to that. So her thumb is there in front. You'll see like maybe one finger in front of the middle finger, and then her pinky finger we're probably not gonna see because it's on the other side. Now her other arm is going to be on the other side of that arm, that ribbed part of the sweater there. And then we'll see kind of this hand right next to that one, kind of mostly overlapped. It's like the, so the thumbs are on the outside. So it's a, kind of some bulky hands there. If I was doing it over, I probably wouldn't do it quite like that, but that's okay. All right, so her face. So I'm gonna cheat her nose closer this way, and then her pupils looking down at her turtle are on that crosshair. Now her eyes are not perfect circles. She's got these kind of droopy upper eyelids, almost like she's sad or nervous. That's just the way your eyes are shaped. But we can make her eyebrows more happy. It's just, you know, unless she's super surprised, she's got these kind of always worrisome eye eyelids. There she's her chin, and her mouth is a little on the smaller side. There's some teeth and a tongue. So we kind of just color in or darken this corner. So the top part's her teeth and the bottom part's her tongue. And then her hair. So it looks like, oh my God, how am I going to draw this? So let's do it in parts. So she's got these long bangs that come down the side of her face, right? And they just kind of melt into the rest of her hair. And you don't have to show how. Top of her ear is right at that construction line. So that's there. Now, she has right where the, the construction line where her eyes, that divide her eyes, she has um, this kind of upside down V of her hair, like that, All right? And then it kind of jags up and then goes over. And then her bangs kind of come out from that. Then on this side, it kind of does this curve, this almost U shape, where her hair is jutting out. And then that one comes up here. And then you have another piece of hair that comes up like this. And that is what's gonna lead into the top of her head. And since it's tilted down, we're gonna make sure the top of her head is generally kind of angled downward. So when we draw our hair, even though we're gonna swoop down a little bit, the hair that's piled up on top of her head is also gonna kind of be the same angle as the top of her head since she's looking down at her turtle. And then we're gonna Kind of follow this down, let gravity kind of pull it almost straight down, and then her hair flares out near the bottom. And then we have these kind of insets of the hair, these separation jags. And then the far side of her hair just kind of comes down. Then she has these flyaways that you can add. It shows you she just needs to use conditioner more apparently. We all have that. That's pretty good. Now, I didn't leave myself much room for the turtle, so I gotta draw him a little smaller. So let me make sure I have his room for his head. It's kind of like a dome head with a, kind of a flatter bottom. Give him a dot for our eye and maybe a little smile. 
his neck is kind of sticking up. And then he's got a you know shell shape, so it's domed on top, and then flat-ish on the bottom. And then he's got one leg here. It's kind of just like two lines. And another leg almost off her hands, but not quite. And then a little tail. Doo doo. Done. Let's just say that's Simon. And I think that's our Libby. I hope that wasn't too fast. Feel free to play it a couple times, watch it through, and then or pause it as you're going. I like to give her a little drop shadow. Gives her some something to stand on. And there's Libby. Please have fun drawing her and be gentle with yourself. Um, you know, it takes us a while to really get comfortable drawing these characters, but we do it hundreds and hundreds of times. So that's how we get good at it. So give yourself a chance to practice. Thank you for your contribution and your love for the ghost of Molly McGee. Unmute my audio. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. So, yes, we were successfully able to play one of those, and it didn't, like, kill the stream. Yay. Thank <laughs> goodness. We figured that out. <laughs> we figured that out. It's all about just making sure the, the quality isn't so high that it kills the stream because we can't stream in 1080p so 8k 120 frames per second yeah <laughs> 500 <laughs> fps oh what would that look like <laughs> all right all right so i, I record all my stuff period, with my iphone another donation oh we got another you got another donation um let me go yep benny v donated 52 dollars 50 cents thank Woo! you to everyone who's worked on the show and everyone who is doing their best to unhappify the world you are all amazing and a huge inspiration to me Humble inspiration to all of us too. That's beautiful. Thank you for the donation. All right, so right now we yeah. are at uh, yes. fifteen thousand one hundred seventy-seven. If that, I'm not sure if that's been sure most recently updated, but um, and I have to, I have to move away from my my, my screen because the TV that I have um, OBS on display is over there. So because I want to actually be looking straight at the <laughs> no. camera on Zoom, so it's not like I'm looking like over there. I'm like. <laughs> So anyway, here's right, next up, uh, Trish. I think it's time you show off those keychains because they're going to be prizes in the quizzes. Yes, we're about to do. Whoa. Yeah, I I have them here. Um, and it's the ghost friends. Uh, I was supposed to get Andrea and Jinx as well, but I ended up not ordering them for some reason. No. But you know what? <laughs> the ghost friends are better than nothing. So. <laughs> I'll just so, yeah. be disappointed. Here, hold on. I, 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 I'm posting the quizzes link in chat oh, so everyone can join. Oh, they fell all over the place here. I'll show these two anyway. My camera is like up on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> There's Molly and Scratch. Oh, they're so yes. cute! Never, yeah. They're adorable! They're Never separate them. Never separate them. No. <laughs> Libby and Ollie. Aww. Hey. Oh. Cuties! I want them all. I want them all. I want the whole set. <laughs> and Daryl and June. ADHD the on the yes. stream team. Our beloved. The, the ADHD yes. on the dream team. I will... The dream team. Yeah, the siblings <laughs> ever. So, yeah, there's six of them. Anyway, uh, I actually have ten of each, so... I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, I think uh, first place will get all of them. I don't know. Are we doing three places? So first come, first serve? Is that how it works? I guess so. First, first serve, yeah. <laughs> we'll Always figure that out. Oh. Folks are joining. Let me now, to avoid the technologies from last time, I, I'm hosting the quizzes. I'm going to stream it here, and Chandler's going to play the video feed back. Yes. So we'll go I there. I think that's the idea. All right. Just, OK, there we go. Turn down the settings because it's right. a, oh, seven, yeah, seven twenty thirty. That should be good. It's a, I saw I saw ten eighty p and I got scared yeah. for a second. I, I realized. <laughs> oh, like, oh, I, yeah, no, I realized hold immediately. On. Right. Hold on. Not not this again. Not this again. 
No! If, if, you, need me to, if you need me to adjust it anymore, let me know. <laughs> it's a... The stream just explodes. Okay. So no, I figure this again. will take... Oh, another... Oh! We got another donation! Uh, $105 no! from Jakari Hall! Woohoo! Yay! Nice. Yeah! Let me, let the me more the better. Real quick. Yeah. Every little bit counts. Yeah. This... My... I think it might be because I'm streaming. It's being fussy with me right now. Let's see. <clears throat> I'm gonna give y'all a couple more minutes to hop in while I read out this message. All right. Okay. Oh, there's no. Oh, there's no message associated with it. Well, either way, thank you so much, Dakari. You're the goat. Mm -hmm. Greatest Sorry. of all. T I M E. <laughs> Real. There we go. Mouse is back. I've been having this bug lately where my mouse just disappears. Oh, mine has been curve. doing that too, and it's been driving yes, me crazy this whole stream. So, anyway. Oh, Every yeah, now I... and then, I always say, isn't technology great? Yep. Uh, oh, yeah. I just remembered yeah, I still said my... Yeah, ain't it? I still have my, my, my username on Discord set as Mike is on mute. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'm really ironic when it's not it's even on. Yeah, because it side. hasn't been. No, it hasn't. I, I've been good for the most part. No, Bill. Bill um, emailed me shortly after the the stream, the the first one, and it was like, I hope that was. You know, I hope I wasn't too. You know, I hope that wasn't uh, mean or anything. I'm like, no, it's really funny, and it's a meme now. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to question that. All right, I'll give it like. Another minute or so, and then we'll get started. Well, and because there's less people on this stream, it's not going to get <laughs> overloaded as easily. We say that, of course. Fingers crossed. Oh, and, 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 and it's going to crash know. again. Uh, Knock on wood. <laughs> it's like, ah. Uh, <laughs> I. Chris is so resurfaced. That's your overload. What, what's the Jujitsu Kaisen thing? In, in, invisible technique, make the stream crash. <laughs> Expand the domain. Domain yeah. expansion. <laughs> oh wait, Hody's in the quizzes. You're like, it, it, technique, autism. Autism. <laughs> That's for Hody. <laughs> Sounds good to me. All right. Um. Yeah, I think that's probably that's probably everyone who's gonna hop in. Let's uh, let's get started. Right. Yeah. Yep. Now, I mentioned on the previous stream that this quiz was so hard that not even Bill and Bob got all the <laughs> questions right. I'm sticking with that. <laughs> oh, I feel so empty about the Kahoo music. <laughs> The correct answer was Bill Moss and Bob Roth. Roblox Gamer YT, aka Jordan, is at the top. Good job, y'all. Hey, what? Doesn't get much harder. I mean, it doesn't get much easier. Doesn't get much harder. Now, most of the some of the questions are gimme, but you know, we're just they'll get harder. <laughs> the correct answer is and half a pie, of course. Black Gamer YT still on How's top. Good if I. Oh, close. Better to be in and bad a fire. <laughs> <laughs> real all right all right i hope we all know the answer to this question everyone should know no, this I guess, one i guess this is technically subjective yes uh, 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 uh. <laughs> there's no trick answers here these are all roles he's played uh, the one trick? wizard from no, adventure no, time <laughs> <laughs> sure <about> <laughs> I think there's a delay between the game and the, the stream. Is Master Shake. Correct. That's because of the latency. Oh, there's a delay. 
Yeah, there's there's uh, latency. Yeah, not between... much we can do about that. Yeah, we can't really do anything about that. So that's that. I think that's kind of why we're not like saying anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm just doing. Oh, just bash it all about that. Oh, oh crap! I forgot about this one. Too fast. Oh geez. Oh god. I forgot about this one. Mm. See, I told you they wouldn't be easy. You lied to me. <laughs> you lied to me. I lied to you. Another Sorry, another oh. another Astiff movie reference. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you lied to me. <laughs> I'll take There's any chance I have. To do. I forget I'll the one that was. I have to do uh, Batman voice. Because of course, Sammy oh, in the God, chat really? mentioned the the, the this thing oh. we've been having with the the balloons, and I'm like, I'm sorry, Jim, I'm gonna have to let you go. Ah, no, please, no, no. please, no. Hey, don't let me go in the first place, so it doesn't matter to me. That's such a great. <laughs> I love that joke so much. <laughs> I forgot about this one. Oh my god. Why well, keep forgetting You forgot answers. about this one? Yes. It's only been like a month. I forgot about it. How how is that possible? Anything is possible, including impossibility. Trust nobody, impossible. not even it's nobody. Impossibility. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. Yes, I got it right. The only thing that's impossible is impossibility. Oh, Jordan has been dethroned. I would just be crossover with, with Molly McGee and Kim Possible now. That'd be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. Right? No, you know what? You know what? Maybe, maybe I'll draw it. Maybe I'll draw it. We'll see. Yes. Do that. I'll see how it goes. Do it. I gotta see it. I gotta see it. Let's see how it goes. A lot of these kind of questions in here. Not technically a trick question. Yippee. The next one. Yep, it's I'm Libby. On, I'm in I'm in twelfth place. <laughs> Makes me wonder what will happen if Molly actually chooses a different best friend. That would be an interesting what if scenario. It would be. I think Hal and Harriet's unfinished business, like that song, didn't that turn a lot of folks off of Tecum? Oh, I mean, yeah, that was, uh, we're not going to reference anything topical. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, yeah, let's not. No, let's yeah, let's let, let let's yeah. Wait, yeah, my who, bad. Who are 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 White Wilderness. The single song. I'm in 13th place. How is that possible? Hmm. Oh, that's a lucky number right there. 13? That's unlucky. What are you talking about? 
<laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, when's the next Friday the 13th? I think it's all the way to September. I think did it, it is, yeah. Did it, did it already pass? Friday the 13th? No, there, there, was none, there was none for this year so far. Saturday the 13th. Oh, yeah. The question oh, yeah. is, will Where we ever get a, a Friday the 13th death. movie again? <laughs> Another one? How many? How many have they already made? Twelve, I think. <laughs> so, oh, so they so they haven't yet at thirteenth yet. Well, yeah, and and that's entirely that because is. of a rights dispute. Who the heck is who is who is who is? Wait, who are wait who are you? We've been saying. <laughs> oh, let me get off that. All right, false. Wait. Dang, y'all y'all are not keeping up with the Tegum lore. Wait, who are you? Hey, if anyone gets this wrong, I will have lost all faith in humanity. <laughs> oh my god. You can't you can't lose faith in humanity if you already lost it. Maybe next time. Yeah. One little I, I had left, perhaps. There were I, remember, I, remember, I remember asking Bill why is the why is the bright mascot why is the bright mascot a uh, um lemming shoot. Oh yes, yeah. Why is the why is the bright why is the Brighton's mascot lemming anyways? It's because of the Disney uh, True Life Adventure film White part, Wilderness. Ah, that's I the see. one where they famously pushed a bunch of lemmings off a cliff for no reason. Oh, you're right. Oh, it's supposed to liberally yeah. got it wrong. How it's dare you? It's the game, the lemmings. Y'all yeah. think Todd worked at the credit union? I feel like he might have worked at the credit union. That'd be really funny. It was a credit, it was it was a credit, credit union. union. <laughs> it was a credit okay. union. All right. Sorry, I zoned out for a moment, and then all I heard, I heard all I heard was a credit union. I was like, "What?" It's a credit union. Credit union. <laughs> it was a credit union. Molly, it's credit like the one union. Squidward beaver. It's like a turkey great. sandwich, you know. Molly, <laughs> you really think so little of me? Old America, not even gonna ask. So I tried his nose falling off. <laughs> I was nervous. My scratches, my scratch plushie's nose was falling off. It's fine. I was nervous. My. Mine Ooh. was too, but luckily my mom does sewing, so she oh. sewed it back on. <laughs> well, she glued it back on, but I just... Oh, Chandler's competing in this. You yeah. want some of those pins for yourself, I assume? Of course. Well, yeah, yeah. Not, not pins, keychains. Am I the only one not competing? And I don't, and I don't remember yeah, there's the... Not, there's a problem with y'all competing. I don't competing. remember the... Yeah. I don't remember the uh, the question bank, so I'm I'm good. <laughs> All right, right, fair enough. I, I mean, it wasn't really a problem wrong. either way. I'm just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Those are very good keychains. Mm -hmm. Would Molly like Zach King? I need the June one. I I just want I was very close. I was very close to adding this the the mouse pad, but then I was like, no, the keychains are fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only real ones. You don't want to get. Oh, I do need the mouse pad. I will do anything. I really <laughs> want to buy the whole set. Because you're, you're the only person who did that. There's so, there's so very few of all Mickey keychains, and like, like, like a very few of them on, on Etsy. Well, there's just a couple of them. There's yeah. A couple of them. Oh God. I I, 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 I only have I have the Molly and Scratch uh, uh, keychain from uh, Etsy. The, yeah, I have that one on my keychain. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, 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 the only Molly McGee thing I have is this st this uh, sticker from an emotionally uh, that's not, it's internally dead. dead. It, externally dead, dead is the goat. Yeah. Shout out to making the. I need, I need to the to my new computer. And this thing actually, and scratch actually glows in the dark. Nice. Oh, that's sick. I got it wrong. Real Operation and Happification fans will remember Mr. Fam was on the, I believe, the three days left art we did. So, hold on, it's saying I'm in third place on Shout the screen, but then it's saying I'm in first place on my screen, so I don't know. Quizzes is a little wonky, but mm -hmm. it's free. It's free. Ooh, at least do it better than me. I'm a 16th place. Ooh. Mm 
How would the spider eat that? <laughs> it could, Peter it Parker. Could eat it. Parker. I need pictures of Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> It's Mom McGee. That's, that's, that's Newsies. Well, there's that new horror movie. Uh, Did I mention that, that I Sting? hate Molly McGee? <laughs> you what? <laughs> it's like. <laughs> no one came, Molly McGee. It's, it's impossible. It's illegal. It is illegal. Correct. I mean, nothing's impossible for, for a possible. <laughs> Nothing's impossible unless it's illegal. I don't know. Uh, anything's no, legal it, if you're fast enough. Illegal things are still possible. There's no cops around. Anything's legal. There's no cops around. Anything's legal. I am the Thanks god for, of death. <laughs> Thanks, Crickle Stan. I am the god of destruction. <laughs> I'm really proud of this question. There's no cops around. Anyone's legal. Everything. Anything's Yo, legal. I want some dumplings. <laughs> I'm already pizza. Uh, I need to go get Thai food again. Birds. I would love I'm to not... have. I would love to have Thai food more often, but the place is not the cheapest. It's very good, oh, yeah. but it's not I... the cheapest. So There's like a Thai way. restaurant near me, but I've yet to try because I heard a lot of the stuff has a uh, the allergens oh, that I'm allergic to, mm, like yeah. nuts, for try? example. I... Go at least get I some Thai really iced tea. Oh, I, I have to do that. I, Hi. I, I really want to try a taco. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> a taco? Wait, you've never had tacos? Yeah, I never had one. What? You've never had tacos before? Really? I had. To- I really had tacos. The closest thing I had was a ta- taco chip, which is what I ate today. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not like the biggest fan of tacos, but at least I've like, had them. I love tacos. There, there's a lot. Fish There's a tacos. Lot of food in the fish show tacos. That just makes me go, man. I want to try this. Fish tacos. Uh, I love are like, Mexican like, house food. Tacos. I don't know. Fish, fish tacos are like one of my favorite foods ever, if not my favorite food. I love fish tacos. Well done. Never got that's the one right. That's a Haley's on it reference. It's not a Haley's on it reference. <laughs> it's, it's not. not, it's, fish not it's not. It's not. It's not a Haley's yeah, on it reference. It's just Haley's on it ha- happened to reference that because it, they're in Southern California and fish tacos are very popular. Yeah, the show is, because the show is, 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 is the show is, is in a, is on a um yeah it's a real town ocean side. Yeah, it's near oh, San yeah, Diego. Awesome. Yeah, so it's awesome. San Diego. Yeah. So, uh, although, uh, although the, the fact state, that they're right. near San Diego and won the fish taco contest with with a fit with. Yeah, frozen fish sticks is deeply insulting to me, but anyways. They wow. use Pringles, that's why. Or Dingles, whatever they're calling. <laughs> Dingles. Da 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 da. Alright. The fact that I'll the fact that Haley's Audit was on able to get got this wrong earlier. Hold I think. on. Okay, the fact that Haley's Audit was able to Dingle get a bird. weird owl cameo, <laughs> but not twice. Molly McGee is a crime to me. Well, still, Haley Sana deserves a season two. A season two. I I yeah, wanted I, season two. I wanted Molly McGee to have a weird all cameo so bad. If only mm-hmm. Weird Al should have been like did. Weird Al should have been like you Weird Larry's cousin or something. That. You could you should you could have asked Bill that question. Great. You should have asked Bill. Because Lemon Weird, Weird Al needs to be I mean, in everything. Kind of soda. That's right. Well, I think Bill would have probably just agreed. So I remember. I like about the pepper. So I remember he was he, he played that he played a character on My Little Pony. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, wasn't it? Wasn't it a cheese sandwich? Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, cheese sandwich. Uh, and he Weird was probabilitor in, in Gravity Al. Falls. And he was Milo Murphy slices. in Milo Eat Murphy's you, Law. Right? Which I still have to. Okay, confession. I ha- I still haven't watched Miles Mal- from Mar- Mar- Murphy's Law. It's okay. Not a lot of people have. I know. That's why. That's why. That's why it, it got canned. I didn't word this question. That was kind of a trick question. Direction song from Milo. Yeah. Oh, y'all better not get this one <laughs> Ouch. wrong. Ouch! Ouch! If you get it wrong, I have some Swedish questions to ask you. Ow. 
Oh, oh God. I'm sorry. I probably oh, should have brought up that I related way too much to Libby after that episode. Oh. I, I do apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> True or false? Yeah, Penny Proud has a good to, father. Uh, side, beat, side fly. False. <laughs> false. What? Andrea Davenport has a good father. Ah! Well, yeah, compared to uh, Penny Proud, uh, at least he's compared there. To, uh, Libby's father, yeah, he's the way to my father. Yeah, I mean, I I think anything is better. Like the like y'all know that one psychology thing with like the wire mother and the cloth mother. I would say that. Andrew's dad's a better father than uh, Libby's dad. Yeah, no, yeah, I didn't get like, that right. Like, if, like, wait a second. If, if Libby's dad is the wire mother, then Andrea's dad is the cloth mother, by comparison. Only my psychology uh, folks will get that. I don't get it. <laughs> Damn it. Is that, like, kind of like a, like a, a like, dishwashing metaphor? No. No the, no, the, no, the idea is that they had a baby monkey, right? They had two, like, surrogate mothers, like, not, like, statues, I guess? They weren't actually the mother. One of them was made out of wire and had food, okay. and the other was made out of cloth. And they found that the baby monkey always wanted to be around the cloth mother, even though while it had no food, it was just more comfortable to be around. Oh. oh I yeah, see. so, so yeah. like, Libby's dad is the wire mother, and then Andrew's dad is the cloth mother. Hmm. That's, that, that's, actually, that, that's actually pretty deep. It is pretty deep, yeah. yeah I learned about it in my psych class the other day. Huh. <laughs> I'm really sad that the show never made a Pennywise reference with Georgie, just because that would have been funny. Uh, that been... Even just have like oh, a, a, a gag in Frightmares on Main Street where Georgie's wearing like a yellow raincoat and has a red balloon, that would be funny. You'll float yeah. too. Yes. You'll float too. You'll that would have been too. the easiest thing. <laughs> that would have been such a good reference to make. Maybe, maybe a little too specific though. I don't know. You'll float too. I never ate a veggie burger before. I don't know how that's I did one. like. The right thing it. that kills me about this is that it's a huge health and safety violation. It is. Like it's a huge like like Folks like food died. safety issue. Like imagine if hold on, let me wait until I mean it's it's almost done. done. Yeah, it's done here. Um, imagine if Candace had gone to Flavor Burger and ordered this this turnip burger, and then suddenly had an allergic reaction. They're looking at a lawsuit. Oh, yeah. Big <laughs> lawsuit. Big yeah. lawsuit. I forgot about Candace's allergies. <laughs> yeah, it makes just. I mean, thankfully, it just makes her sound like a blues singer. <laughs> <laughs> One very random detail from the season three scripts. Oh, Bill's back! One very random detail With is Steve in the Loder. season three scripts. Is Steve Loder's here? The guys, that's no, who that I is. Doesn't know that. I never read the scripts. But uh, but Ruben Ruben has a, a latex allergy. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. All right. Oh, I forgot to go into full question view. All right. Yeah, this question is something else. <laughs> Mr. Bates kind of makes me mad in that episode. That makes me mad in that episode. Uh, <laughs> does it make you mad in a couple episodes? Uh, Miss Miss Roop was also. Oh wait, no, that's Miss Roop. Yeah, Miss Roop was also right. not great in mm. uh, in the internship. All I right. think. I mean, that whole assignment doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Hi, Bill. Hello, I'm back. Oh, Welcome Good back. We're back. almost done with our quiz game. I, I, I brought a buddy. Bill's back. Steve Loader, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Hopefully, hello. it's coming on here. Yeah, something, something's going on with the video, though. I'm Steve, sorry. Steve, hello. It's not. Oh my God. How are you doing? Hello. So good to meet you. You, you guys can't see video yet, right? Uh, can't see video of you yet. 
Yeah, it's got I got a weird like little spin icon thing going it's on. A moon yeah. girl Steve, I got my Moon Girl Funko Pop signed by uh, Moon Girl at the park. Very cool. Very cool. Oh my god! I can't. I can't seem to get my camera. To, I'm gonna try this again. Let me do this. Let me do this. That's. Oh my weird. god! Why is this question? <laughs> what you don't remember? All I saw Jake's was just Human War once. It's important. No, it's very important. Stern and I know it's very important. Mm -hmm. It's very important, correct? Mm -hmm. That's for that's Jinx for his humor. I'm not gonna rewatch the end. No, no way. <laughs> <It's a movie. laughs> I still need to actually go back and re do a rewatch at some point, but I've been so busy. <laughs> How do I get the right? Same. How do I get that right? Uh, Same that here. Too. It's been a while for me too. I should do that too. Rewatching. None of the above. Hmm. All right. This is. There's only two more questions. This is my favorite. <laughs> this is a trick question. <laughs> You'll see. You'll <laughs> see. Give me the time. Oh. Oh. Stays up, please. oh boy. It's called the Ghost M on the key. What they lie us in the title? Wait a minute. Oh, uh, wait. Hold on. Uh, huh? Hmm? Question. What? <laughs> what is it? How many people got this one wrong? Oh I mean, the leaderboard didn't really change, so. A, a I lot. Thought, <laughs> I thought it was a trick question. It was a trick question. I'll, 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 I'll missed all those. <laughs> Trick questions. <laughs> all all rates are ghosts, not all ghosts are rates. Yeah, lie to you mostly. Oh uh, yeah, I know this one. Yeah. I know this one because I'll explain why after we're done. Actually, hang on, hang on, hang on. Literally mentioned it earlier uh, on stream is, too. Is this is another question, trick question. It, there's no trick here. Yeah, there is. <laughs> Take it off the wall, but it's there. Okay. I got it wrong. You got Why? it wrong. <laughs> what? I thought you referred to the halfway to Halloween events. No, no, in the show premiere. This is the last question. Yes. All right. Now let's check Disney the Disney World's fiftieth anniversary. The show premiered on Disney World's fiftieth anniversary. <laughs> That's neat. All right, Chandler won, followed by Nikki Windu and Marisa. Uh, y'all, just get in contact with us. We will give you your prizes. Good job, y'all. Yeah. The mastery prize. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. All right. Now on to our guests. Ooh, who's our mystery guest? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, where did Steve go? Who? I think he has a He was having some technical problems. Oh. oh, Bill's on Bill's on mute. Yeah, he is. It's not okay, me oh, this Bill's time. Right. Hey. It's not right. him. <laughs> right, I'm, the, I'm talking through the tech. I'll be right back. Okay. So <laughs> I switched to the technical I think, difficulties. I think we're gonna. Second. <laughs> more tech, more, no, not hey, more we haven't actually had to use it. Yeah, I'm crazy. I think I think our yeah. stream's gonna end up going a little over time. So That's while we right. wait for Bill and Bob, y'all want to hop on? Y'all want to hop on Scriblio? Oh, am so. I setting that? I'm setting that up, aren't I? Uh, hang Yo. on. Let me. I want to do. Yeah, yeah, you can do that some... if you want. Or right, who's set... okay? Oh, someone else is setting that up. Episodes? If someone else is setting that well, up, I, that's I mean, cool. You can, you I... can do it. I, I don't care. I just who's gonna do it? So, oh wait, actually, oh wait, no, Steve is back. Okay. Let's see. Time for Scriblio. No problem. I got a chicken tender sub from Publix, but then I was like, wait a minute, I still have my free birthday burger and a, 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 a Sickies coupon that expires tomorrow as well. So I'm like, 
I need to make use of my free birthday stuff, so. <laughs> uh, speaking of food, I probably should ha hop off because I'm starting to get hungry. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, please. Oh, around, Xander. Go get food. Go eat. Go, uh, go uh, recharge. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Red Robin. Yum. I never tried Red Robin's. I don't it's know good. It's pretty state. good. And you get a free burger the month of your birthday. Oh, but that mine is next month. Yeah, so go for it. Yeah, any any time during your your birthday month, Ma you get a free burger. Mine's the only thing that's frustrating is they made it so that you have to do it as dine in now, which I guess makes sense because they want to get you to tip still. And I'm I'm gonna get a milkshake. Of course I am. Um, they have good milkshakes. I'm at the tip. If you no, are of milk. age, you can get anything added into one of those milkshakes <laughs> if you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> like, like I'm adult, innocent. adult stuff, as in <laughs> vanilla shake. She can't with... hear the vanilla shake. Those with things, just... Just, just like apple juice. <laughs> yeah, apple blood. Welcome back, Sarah. Apple blood. Apple a blood. dog swam in it. The S and P. The S and P. The S and P approved uh, uh, <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> I mean, again, Ru Ruben's root beer. Uh, Steve, um, you need some help setting that up? Is there anything I can help you guide through or something? <laughs> well, we're working through the technical difficulties. Um... So Disney Channel Night at Disneyland was super fun. I'm I'm not surprised that there wasn't representation for like anything past Phineas and Ferb in terms of animation, because I mean, yeah. Yeah, the people there are mostly adults, so I guess. Yeah, it well, makes yeah, sense. the people there are mostly adults, and um, the stuff that they did have that was newer was like zombies and Descendants, and you know things that you did not have to, because they obviously didn't really cast any like face characters for anything and like obviously they weren't gonna like make any no. new things that they didn't already have so i was surprised how many of like the lilo and stitch characters they had actually i was like i did not know they had all of these like available just sitting sitting in storage <laughs> yeah, but... so, nikki windu asked in the chat how is the best way to get in contact with you about the keychains oh that really? would be uh, if you're on Molly Cord, you can just DM any of us, to be honest. Yeah. We'll put you in the right direction. Yeah. Um, on one direction. But, of course, my pitches for them uh, for the future, I'm, prob I'm probably going to do a little vlog about this, but my pitches for them to the future for the future would be do some attraction overlays because there's some, there's some things they could do that would be very simple that would be really cool, like... Seriously, Phineas and Ferb overlay on Space Mountain. Just have them write a song that syncs up with the ride and do that for Disney Channel Night. It will be so good. And I'm going to get up for like five seconds. I'm going to grab some water. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you don't and, hydrate or, or bathroom, just go. Please go. And for the Haunted right Mansion, <laughs> have Molly and Scratch riff the Haunted Mansion. Come on. It would be so good. <laughs> Obviously, it wasn't uh, open I'm, this I'm year, or so. At this point. I'm not. I. I mean, and obviously, like tacos and strawberry soda would be cool, but I'm not holding my breath for that. Although they did have, uh, they did have gummy berry juice, which was very good. It was this like I don't even know what it. It was this like crazy berry concoction with like whipped cream and gummy bears on top. It was a. It, it was. It felt like something Molly would have come up with, honestly. All right. Well, we can't get Steve's camera working, but Water hopefully his audio will work. Hi, Steve. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Sorry, the camera issues. Don't know what's going on. We tried a number of things, but nothing seems to be working. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Uh -huh. We're just happy to have you here. Yeah, it's but ghostly sure. voice from beyond. Let's, 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 uh, <laughs> I've been here. Playful Steve spooks is have dead. interrupted he died in our tour five years ago. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but it's so good to have you here. I love Moon Girl. I love Molly Moogie and all of yes! the other work, of course. What brings you here, might I ask? 
<laughs> um, well, I saw what you guys did uh, the last go around, and I was really impressed and, and uh, really admire what you guys are doing. So I just w- sat down and I turned on my YouTube and I saw you guys were doing it again. So I said, hey, why don't I hop in just to say hi and uh, answer any questions or just whatever. But just really kind of thank you guys for, for everything you're doing. It's really, really incredible. Oh, really, really quick, it. really quick. We got an, another donation from uh, Jakari Hall. Or did we already do that one? <laughs> Yay. Oh, I think we already did that one. That was like six minutes ago. Yeah. Maybe I'm not refreshing. <laughs> uh, it, that was 30, <laughs> like 37 minutes ago. Oh, yeah. It <laughs> no didn't worries. refresh. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Do we have anything else? Yeah, no, that was the last yeah. donation. Mm. I do have we a did question. hit 15K at least. Yeah. yeah. We reached the goal. Yeah. Hmm. So... Yeah. so uh, well, I guess I do. Question do I have any for questions? Steve. Question for Steve. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any word on when Mongo will be coming back from from the from the uh, hiatus? Oh, excellent oh, they... question. <laughs> they don't have any say in that. Uh, oh, well, we're working on them. Um, it's up to Disney for when they want to put them out. I mean, I've heard some rumblings here and there, but there's nothing uh, definitive. Um, but I, I'm going to imagine that we've already seen a pattern of releases of when they come out. So I would strongly imagine that it will probably be the same pattern. Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. but stay tuned. I got to say the, these, uh, these 10 episodes that we're doing right now are, are pretty spectacular. So uh, yeah, it's worth, wait. it's worth whatever it is. I haven't had time yeah, to gonna, watch all of season two yet, but I need to. I need to sit down and I do that. At it's some point. so good, Chandler. Uh, I know. Yeah, it's I know. so I'll, good. I'll, I'll, I, I'll, I'll I, totally move. I, I, was, I don't know if you noticed, but I've been busy. <laughs> I know. I, been busy. I, I went to California and I work full time and I'm making this whole other video. So. Yes, I just I'm can't wait to see my boy Beyonder again. Uh, I gotta rewatch season one now, Moon Girl. <laughs> but, but thank you, Steve. I, I never watched Moon Girl and then as far as known. Oh, have you, you missed Kane's oh, that. oh, Steve, Kane's I have that. a question for you. I have a question for you, Steve. So, I, uh, as I mentioned, I'm working on... Uh, uh, can you hear me, Steve? Again. Oh, no. Okay, good. Um, so, I'm working on this video about ADHD and autism representation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was kind of wondering, do you think maybe Lundella is mm-hmm. on the spectrum a little bit? I was a little curious about that, actually. Um, it's definitely something that we discuss. Um, it's not, I don't think it's anything that we've kind of nailed down in the show specifically. But it's definitely, I mean, I think it, it's touched my life personally from mm-hmm. from my personal life. So it is something that I hold uh, near and dear. Um, so I, I would say Lunella has probably aspects of it, but again, it's not anything that we've never, we, it's not, it wasn't part of the narrative. It never mm-hmm. was part of the narrative specifically. I'm just thinking about You wouldn't like say the... that there's a neurotypical explanation for Lunella Lafayette. There is not a neurotypical <laughs> explanation for Lunella Lafayette. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking like, cause the info dumping about the bagels, which like, by the way, that is completely true. Um, there is a bagel shop actually. If you go to um, if you go to Walt Disney World, uh, if you go to Magic Kingdom, actually, if you want to get a good bagel before you go to the park, there's literally a bagel shop right behind the park on Reams Road that has fantastic New York style bagels. It's run by New Yorkers and they ship the water in from New York because you have to have the, the right water. balance That's of the everything. Trick. It's all in the water. And the, uh, MatPat actually did an episode of Food Theory where they uh, literally tested different waters from different places, and they're like, oh my gosh, it's actually it's actually true. So I love that. I love oh, that yeah, detail. I love that, detail I love that I love that detail because I'm like, yes, that's so true. That is absolutely something Ludella would be fascinated by because I'm fascinated by it. I took a like a food prep class and you know, just all the stuff with food si- food is as much a, a science as an art. It's so cool. Um, uh, my my main regret. My oh, yeah, main regret. Talking... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I mean, I'm from New York, so yeah. it's it's all of that stuff. Yeah, that's all in the DNA. Is, of course, is the water, I've never been to New York before. My yeah, main all... know those names. My main regret is that I took that class in fall of 2020, and so I didn't actually get to do this the labs on campus because they have this really awesome food prep lab where you actually get to go and like you, when you're doing that class now you can actually you actually go and get to make stuff and eat it it's awesome 
It's really cool. That's Very if you cool. want to go to school for hospitality, Rosen College at UCF is fantastic, by the way. So Oh, we got another donation. Ten dollars fifty cents from Samuel Al Kisira. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Sorry if I'm not. But thank you. <laughs> Yay. Yay. And the uh, well, the other I thing love with Tegan Vanilla... with all of my heart. Oh, go for it. Go ahead. Oh, oh, sorry. I love Tegum with all of my heart. The ghost and Molly McGee will always be a place in my heart. Keep and happifying for all eternity, no matter what happens next. Couldn't put it better myself, man. Woo! Thank you. Yay. So, Steve, I, I wonder, like, should we tell these guys a little bit about our make you developing the show together and any of that stuff? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's fun stuff. Yeah, that's, I don't think we, we, you know, probably haven't touched on that. So, so. Ghost and Molly McGee was a very, very interesting, exciting part of, of my life because I was never supposed to work on the show initially. So <laughs> so I had done a movie, uh, uh, Tinkerbell and the Legend of the Never Beast for Disney Toons. And oh my God. <laughs> so Disney Toons shut down shortly thereafter. I, I was the <laughs> film to close the studio, so I don't know if that's a badge of honor <laughs> oh, or not. Oh, man. I love there that. Go. Thank you, John um, Lester. Ah. Yeah, and and so I came back to TV animation, and I was given a whole bunch of projects to develop or come up with original stuff, and it was great to see a lot of friends there. Bill and Bob, in particular, we've been friends for a very, very, very long time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we we've always the years we've always kind of dovetailed into each other's projects in one way or another. Even the movie and and multiple mm -hmm. TV series. So it's. Just always, you know, we, we always rely on each other in some capacity. So when they were developing this show, um, there was, uh, they were going through a process that wasn't quite working. Everything they were doing was great, but but kind of everything outside of them kind of was a little wonky. So, mm -hmm. uh, but the fact that Bill, Bob, and I kind of share a brain, um, the second that I saw the project, um, you know, it was kind of came really clear to me, like, oh, yeah, I think I know what I can do to help be an additive to your amazing creation. Mm -hmm. And so Bill, Bob and I, we redid the pilot um, and we had to do it in like, I don't know, like a couple of weeks. It felt like it, it had to be done really fast. quick. It was fast. It had to be done really quick because the deadline, it was like the show's going to get picked up or not based on this pilot this version of the pilot and you got to get it done, blah, blah, blah. And it was a lot of fun because, uh, you know, Bill, Bob and I were like sitting in a conference room and we're going over the script and going over some drawings. It was like, Hey, wouldn't it be funny if scratch entered the scene like this instead, or this or that, or that or this. And we would just change mm -hmm. stuff together. And I think the three of us found the voice of the show in that moment. I think that it had mm -hmm. been, couple of there was a lot of really really strong ingredients but i think it was the three of us together at that moment that really kind of congealed what you see the show as right now mm -hmm. um and it was great because we had the opportunity because we were doing it again the pilot again we had the opportunity to go back in and re-record um scratch and molly together in the same room which wasn't done the first time which added to their mm -hmm. chemistry uh, and uh, and we just we kind of we kind of really joked up the the script and uh, honestly it was whatever made us laugh it was nothing as we were making the pilot we I I, I swear I, I felt like it, it it wasn't real it felt like it was just playtime for us <laughs> and it's like like all the songs because music wasn't part of the original vision of the show but I'm a huge mm -hmm. music nerd so I'll try to jam in music wherever we can. Mm -hmm. It was this this episode. The pilot was the uh, softball episode. By the way, it was like episode. Right. Four there's a cup five. musical number in that episode, right? Yeah. Well, well, there's a couple of musical episodes. In, yeah. Uh, musical numbers in that episode. It's all it's all one song, but variations of a theme. It's all different versions of that song. Right, but wasn't Molly gonna sing like a softball song? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was a softball song, song that we ended up mm -hmm. <laughs> Having a ball with softball. I hate to interject, but we've gotten Thanks. some more donations. Woo! I didn't awesome. see him. Uh, okay, let's see. First up, Sarah donated 
another 1050. Thanks for everything. I promise I didn't rob a credit union. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. And then Jacob Arts. Jacob Arts donated another 1050. I better, this one's very important. Hello. Thank you guys so much for running this charity event. Smiley face. If anyone else has donated, reach out to me at jacobsanimations at gmail.com or my Discord, Jacob's Arts. That's with two Zs. And I'll randomly select 10 winners and ship you a free Tegum keychain. Woo! Woo! Great. Oh, nice. Whoa. Can someone like put that in the chat and pin that somewhere for me? Yeah, hang on. I'll trade you. (laughs) Good news. That's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, one of the things like Steve was talking about (laughs) was we kept talking about Quirk. Remember, Steve, how often we would, you'd really brought, like, we need to bring in Quirk into everything. Oh, the, the breakdown, the 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 dy- dynamic breakdown of the relationships between the three of us, Bill, Bob, and myself, is, um, and this is this is not a hundred percent true. If you got to boil it down, it's like Bill is the optimistic, happy guy, Bob is the cynical, curmudgeon guy, and I'm the <laughs> weird guy. <laughs> and it's the the combination of those three that kind of creates the the feel of the show i think <laughs> yeah so if bill is molly and bob is scratch does that make you libby <laughs> i would say so i, I that's an angle there yeah <laughs> or, although I've, i'm trying to think you're you're even more of it you might be more daryl ah being really random and chaos yeah that, that, that that's that that might be more apt yeah <laughs> agents of chaos yeah I mean, but was... we do like daryl yeah <laughs> and, 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 but i think to the point too steve while like you're talking about like uh whatever made us laugh, you know? And then we just keep pushing it and pushing it, you know? Like, uh, so this, with the If You Believe song, and then you're like, what if we did a reprise? Like, and then what if we brought it back again? <laughs> what if it was purple? Three times. And and each time it was just, we, we put the word cheat over remember mm-hmm. that and, and what we were if so you funny. believe and cheat you know and cheat a little, and, cheat a little. <laughs> and and so we did that and because it, it just made us laugh and we we got our, one of our development execs to do that we just went in and mic'd him up and just said just say cheat a little just we're just gonna we're gonna throw it on here don't worry about it what's it for don't worry about it it'll be, it'll be great it'll be great and even <laughs> stuff like like once uh like all the characters dropping libby that scene where they're all cheering for her and they lift her off the ground. I remember yeah. dropping her. I don't remember whose idea that was specifically, but I remember dropping her. And I remember how many times we raised the volume on the, the landing, crunch. Like the, on the crunch. And we just kept doing it until it was going to break. It was just like, okay, what's the max version we can get out of this? And uh, yeah, it was, it was, we had a really good time making the pilot, honestly. We, we felt like no one was watching us. You know, it, well, it kind of, yeah. I, I mean, on one level, because at that point too, it was sort of like we have nothing to left to lose, right? We were like, we got a few weeks to pull it together, and we might as well just do what we think is funny and good, and then see if it sticks. And then even even once it kind of got going, once we got greenlit, um, we still were pushing, pushing. And I think it was it was the first Kenny Star episode, Steve, right? Yeah. Where we, why don't you tell that part about the eagle? Yeah. So, so the, the, the Kenny the Kenny Star episode is there's two episodes that are my favorite: the Kenny Star episode and the goat episode. Uh, the, the the and the, I guess because they're the weirdest episodes of the bunch. Um, but the the thing about the Kenny Star one is the animatic was created and it was solid. It worked, but it wasn't it wasn't enough. It was it needed to be weirder. And so I remember we were in looking at the animatic and everyone was just contributing the weirdest ideas possible. Again, just throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what would stick. And like it almost stuck every time getting shot out into that, into that like quickie mart, uh, Kenny getting shot out of the quickie mart, just, just all, all, all the crazy stuff. I do remember just to kind of show the dynamic of the collaboration is, um, the famous gag of Molly getting knocked out by the locker and then falling down. <laughs> and so Scratch, okay, so I remember when that happened and I said, Scratch should take her wallet. That's my <laughs> contribution. But then it was somebody else's, so it was either Bill or Bob's or somebody else that said, 
I'm gonna get a soda. I'm getting a soda. I think it was. It might have been Tony, the editor. Okay, but see that that's yeah. that's what I mean is that that gag, which is one of my favorite gags, was created by like two or three people in I the room that. at the time. I love that. Yeah, those are always the best when it's like just it truly is a collaborative effort. That's what's so fun about it. We pushed each other, and we pushed each other. I mean, like I said, stealing Molly's wallet is not something you would go to as an instinct. That's my humor and sensibility. So it was just, and, and thank you, Bill and Bob. <laughs> so, so you and Rob Cantor got fun. along Why very nicely, you... I bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just oh, fun yeah. to... No, I, I... Hey, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, Rob, Rob and I go, yeah, Rob and I always got along well. We go, we go way back, um, Cantor and I, um, cause we worked together, um, on multiple tally hall projects. Um, happy monster band. We're right. back. Did the video for, uh, hidden in the sand for them. Um, so yeah, so I, and, and I, one of my, here's, here's the weird thing. I, I guess I've had some career accomplishments, I guess, but one of the things I'm most proud of is Rob gave me all the demos of his uh, Not a Trampoline album, which is great, by the way. If you guys don't have it, you should check it out. It's really awesome. Um, and he said, what's the track order of this? And I, my the music nerd in me just got crazy because I was like, wait, I can come up with the actual track order of this? And I did. And I said, I put this song here and this song here and the reason why this is here and stuff like that. And he did it. He used it exactly as as I had given it to him. And that's that's one of my proudest, proudest moments. Um, but there's there's that level of trust uh, between uh, between Rob and I. Uh, but yeah, and, and mm -hmm. Rob, you know, I knew, you know, the second that I introduced Rob to Bill and Bob that, that everyone would hit it off. We were all we're all like minded. We all kind of have the same comedy sensibility. Um, and Rob, Rob's a genius, pure and simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, this this this. what else can you say about it is he can do any genre his, his writing, he, he always, it's funny. It always compliments the narrative. He's just brilliant, brilliant guy. And a snappy dresser. Yeah, true. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, are we out, almost out of time? Uh, we, we decided to extend a little bit. We were originally going to end a little earlier, but I think we've got some more stuff going on. Yeah. <laughs> So, do we have a tally at this moment? Just FYI, we were just, uh, we were just so talking far. About we have raised. We actually just got another donation from Byron Lopez, fifteen seventy five. This show has made me laugh, cry, but also face misery with an undying smile and happifying the world with one little grain of sand at the time. I mean, at a time. Very That's nice, lovely. Thank you. Yeah, and as far as the total, we have. Well, the total we've raised with this whole movement so far is fifteen thousand three hundred and twenty nine dollars. That's that's nice. amazing. You guys. That it's just amazing. That's, oh my gosh. We did this. Wow. You did this, Molly McGee. Yes. <laughs> she did this. Like, you yeah, did is. this. Yep. Like just like <laughs> I'm gonna update the graphic. Thanks. We're working on that. So, oh, you know, I actually have a random question for Steve. So just, so off the top of your head, if there was a Moon Girl and Molly McGee crossover, what do you imagine that would be like? Like, what would, what would the plot of that uh, be? Ah, yes! Ooh. Well, I think, first off, I think Lunella and Molly would get along very, very well. I mean, mm -hmm. I think they'd be, they'd be instant friends. I mean, they have, they kind of share the same energy uh the same um just the same good nature you know mm. um and i think it would have to be something paranormal there would have to be something in lunella's world maybe in the lower east side that is paranormal and the avengers can't handle it because they don't deal with stuff like that they only deal with super villains and aliens and stuff and so she's got to call in an expert and uh heard about molly mcgee and uh, somehow they team up to uh, fight some supernatural thing. Maybe Ghost Rider? Would probably be. <laughs> oh, Ghost Rider. That, that's Marvel, right? right? Ghost Rider. It is Marvel. Mm. Yes, yes. Ghost mm. Rider. That's a good one. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, You're I mean, welcome that, if you ever that, use that. Give me one second. That would be great. Just to see um, Molly and Lunella like riding on a motorcycle together. 
That'd be so bad. That'd be cool. That'd be awesome. That'd be so cool. Please make a reality Disney. <laughs> give, me more, give me more art just now. I mean, I'm paying twenty dollars a month for Disney Plus. Just look for a second. I missed anything. Molly and Lunella riding a motorcycle. That'd be Ooh. so awesome. Just badass. Flames. Yeah. Yeah, so badass. Oh. A scratch rider. He wants to ride a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh wait, scratch! The scratch does. Will the scratch exist in this crossover? I have no idea. Yeah, scratch. Of course, that's the whole point. Ghost Rider kills Todd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, I think I've mentioned to you guys before. We used to. Todd didn't have a name for the longest time. It was just Dead Eyes. That yeah, was, it was Pat yeah. Oswald who gave him the name. Pat right? Oswald. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. Remy so, the rat the rat Batman. Someone Stephen Colbert dreams. recently. I don't know if you, ever, if, if, if Bill and Bob had ever told this, but when we were developing Molly, like the earliest of early days, they already knew the ending of the story. Yep. Yes. I asked. I said, so where is this going? Wow. And and they told me right at that spot. I was like, oh, wow. Okay, great. Yeah. So, yes, there was that knowledge immediately. So, yeah, so Dead Eyes was, was a plant. Mm -hmm. It was always kind of fun because whenever somebody would come onto the show – and you kind of give them sort of the orientation of what the show's about, whatever. Then it'd be like, okay, now here's the secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Don't tell like, anyone. What? I'm actually pretty pleased that that, that didn't. Uh, of all the things that leaked on our show, that at least that Thank didn't God. leak. Well, so, so that's yeah. that's pro that might be not that it's you know obviously I would have loved to have had season three, but like the the problem with the end being finished and then potentially shelved would have been that that episode would have almost certainly gotten leaked. Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah. I, let's not even give that attention, to be honest. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's no. not worth it. It's so not but worth it. it. I was happy that at least at least the that secret uh, stayed secret. Yes. So, yes, that was so it, well, it mostly, yeah. Is the Although people guessed it, you know, of course, for, you know, a long time. And then I, a lot I of people, denied it. A lot I didn't of people think it were happened. like, no, there's no way. <laughs> So this many is people awesome. on the problem. So or... many people on Molly Court hated that theory, <laughs> and then it ended up being. Yes. Right. I, I made a. It's hilarious. I made a video talking about fan theories and how people read too much into uh, you know insignificant little details, and then of course that ended up being true. <laughs> <laughs> that, that video did pretty well because of course it did it was also kind of talking about matt pat which you know that was of course before he announced mm. he was retiring um oh wait speaking of molly cord uh S steve would you like to join molly cord the molly mickey discord server yes mm -hmm. um as you can tell i'm not very fluent in discord that's okay uh, yeah that's that i mean you don't have to, you don't have to be active there you can just join if you want a lot of us aren't fluent on the discord at this point it's a learning curve <laughs> hold on let me give you a link but I will say I'm generally, I think I'm generally more happy with doing Discord than Zoom for this. I think it's been a lot oh, easier yeah, to manage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, you know. You, you try things and you learn, so mm -hmm. that's how it goes. Uh, I, I I know you guys kind of worked out all the technical issues this time around, so happy to give you the uh, the, the the wrench in the works for this <laughs> one. Like, oh well, couldn't get the video to work, so something had to go wrong. So there you go. <laughs> Milo Murphy is standing near well, you somewhere. I mean, if this is all that goes wrong, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, I just sent you the link to Molly Cord. Uh, I'll make sure you have a nice time there. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, Zach, he just DM me casually okay. asked Steve Loader to join. Yes, I did. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Steve and Bob and I, what, what when did we first work on together, Steve? I guess it was Buzz Lightyear Star Command, Buzz, right? Yeah, it must have been Buzz Lightyear, the show that, that doesn't exist anymore, apparently. So, yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? I want to, this is plus so bad. I want to watch it now. It's not like, I never it's, saw it's, not like it's referenced in a theme park attraction anywhere or anything. It's only it's, 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 it's only it's only not available like it's it's only not available because a certain person didn't like it, and that certain person no longer works for the company. So why is it not on Disney Plus? 
Right, you, right. Got, you, you got you got Shark Tale on Disney Plus. Why right. cannot bring it a Buzz Lightyear? Yeah, I don't. I we don't know the reason why. Um, I I I don't know the reason why. Um, I mean, we had some good episodes in there. Uh, so uh, I don't I don't quite know that. They also they also air a VPN like uh the the the, 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 the Divide Comma Network didn't used to have before they merged to CW, or something like that. Yeah, I, might I, been, I could be wrong. Yeah, there's yeah, weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Was that's weird for this show to air on the Viacom network. Uh, like, imagine that happening uh, we now. Did, we, did, we did a lot of them too. I, what, 65 total? Somewhere Something like that. that right? uh, it probably was 65. You yeah, know, back in the was, day, that back was, in the day, that was the number. Were. Yeah, it was 65. Yeah. Kim yeah. Possible was the one that broke that. Yeah, Kim so, Possible. Yeah, I mean, there were a few yeah. that yeah. broke over like Darkwing was over and you know there's a few others that went over but generally 65 was you know they just go we're doing 65 no matter what here's how it goes and then that changed oh. so and then Tarzan that we did was 39, 39. that then that, that was the then they're like let's we don't need 65 we can do 39 and and you know, then they started moving to more of a let's do a season see how it plays and you know but um, is Tarzan anywhere? Is Tarzan on Disney Plus or anything? I think Tarzan there. and Jane is, but it's not there. The, I always check. It's not there. Yeah, but uh, it yeah, the Mickey series on there. Is. Yeah, the, the so, Tarzan, Tarzan. Okay, I will say the scripts for Tarzan were fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Uh, I think the storyboarding to Tarzan was absolutely fabulous. The staging and everything like that. Final animation, I have to say, I'm not particularly thrilled with today. Yeah. I have a hard time watching it. Um, but it was easily the most violent show <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that Bill Bob and I ever worked on. I, it Give was, me that, <laughs> It was one of those things where it felt yeah. like, you know, we went through the entire standards and practices procedure, as you're supposed to, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure that, you know, everything is, is you know, up to code. But for some reason or another, they allowed quite a bit of um, rifle gunplay, um, mm. like in the uh, Tarzan, in particular the Tarzan one with the um, with the poachers, oil, the po those yeah. poachers, the one with the oil, the oil yeah. one. Um, yeah. I remember just Tarzan evading a number of guys shooting at him with rifles <laughs> and stuff, and I thought, oh, he could never do that today. Um, but, uh, there's, there's definitely episodes I'm really proud of for that. I kind of, I kind of wish that was around. I think that mm -hmm. if people saw that today, they'd be, um, they'd be impressed with the storytelling, with the writing of it, I yeah. feel. We just weren't at a place technologically then where mm -hmm. it was still, it was, it was the first, we were the first HD show that TVA was doing on that. And it was digital but it was um, it was hand drawn and scanned in, right, Steve? Wasn't that it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it it was to be fair. It's a lot to ask of a mm -hmm. vendor studio to draw like Glenn Keane, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's a that's a tall yeah. tall order. So I can't really blame them. It was just, yeah. but I mean, it, the, I think the end result was really good for for the for the resources we had. And the time we had to do it in, I am I am proud of the the end result of that. Yeah. And you actually you mentioned Kim Possible getting an extension of like more than whatever mm -hmm. amount of episodes. That was I just want to say that was all due to fans. The last season of Kim mm -hmm. Possible was because of a huge letter writing campaign. Fans yeah. did they they flooded Disney with um we want more Kim Possible and it was impossible to deny. I mean, those were different days because letters yeah. had quite a bit of impact as opposed to emails, you know, and tweets. Mm -hmm. Wasn't there, Steve, were, were you guys putting in gags about yes on 65 like it was some sort of proposition? <laughs> like a political sign, you know, vote yes on 65 or whatever it was. But... Probably. I mean, there was, there was a couple, there was definitely executives that were mildly upset uh, that they were getting a flood of save Kim Possible emails in their work email box and wondering how they got that particular email address. Mm. So there, there, there was a and and to be fair, Mark, Bob, and I were not we weren't responsible for that. That was all the fans' uh, initiative. Mm -hmm. um, 
And it was, I think that was just a time where that could save a show. I mean, it happened to the original Star Trek as well. Um, but I don't, I don't know if we're in that sort of time frame anymore where that can actually make that kind of difference. Yeah. Well, kind of yeah, what we I'm thought with all of this is that if, if we're going to do anything that can actually turn some heads and get people to pay attention to the show and go, whoa, what is it about this show that's causing, you know, this fan base to do this? We thought this this was the way to go about it, you know, doing mm-hmm. charity stuff, because that's what Molly would want to do. Yes. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll add one other bit of optimism, and Bill's going to be surprised hearing this come from me because I am never optimistic. I'm, I am a glass half empty all the damn time. Hmm. But the, the, <laughs> the, the way the, the yes. The thing that's interesting about streaming is, um, you know, you, you kind of, you expect it. You, we have the mindset where we feel it's like the old school TV shows where it's a premiere rating. Everyone watches the premiere and then that's, that's it. We're finding that, you know, people don't tend to watch the shows on premiere. They discover it later and then they mm-hmm. fall in love with it. I mean, I think the most streamed show of this past year was a, a, a canceled live action show from X amount of years ago. And who would have thought that would have been the case? So the optimistic side to me is if Molly just, you know, keeps getting people watching it over time and it starts to build, then, you know, I I absolutely think that Disney could come back to the table and say, well, we need more of this. Mm -hmm. So I I would never 100% rule it out. Um, but stranger things have definitely happened. And we're, we're in an ecosphere of how people are watching stuff nowadays. That is uncharted. We, we don't know. Yeah, that's true. How any of this works anymore. So and my, yeah. my thought has been for the longest time that, you know, this show does not have the biggest fan base, but like, you know, what's the biggest show in the freaking world right now? Bluey. Bluey. Oh, Bluey. And yeah, Bluey. people want shows like that? this. So, like, it's only, I think it's only a matter of time before more people find this little show and are like, whoa, this is, like, actually, like, life-changingly good. Like, it's, it's, it's really, really good. It's what you'd call a hidden gem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and then people will tell their friends and tell their friends and stuff like that. And it could all add up. So, yeah, it's. I mean, it's definitely a different time of when a show gets canceled or not renewed. You assume it's dead. It's done it done. But I, we've been seeing results of a number of things that it's it's time is almost irrelevant mm-hmm. to to a show, and mm-hmm. and and a company is willing to revive a show at any given moment if they feel that there is still juice in the tank. I mean, the other thing to think yeah. about is that we're at the point where like we're running out of nostalgia. We're running out of past to remake. Dude, when we get to the point that we're doing a nostalgic remake of Lilo and Stitch, I'm like, we're like getting so. Or actually, no, probably even sooner. Johnny Test. How many reboots of Johnny Test have there been at this point? I think at least two. Like, yeah, at least two. do more than necessary. <laughs> do more than necessary, but, but have an audience, that's that's beside the point. The apparently... point is, it's like if that could get a reboot like that soon after it finished running, I think there's there's you know there's always hope. Gritty Molly McGee reboot where everyone is dead. Oh my god, <laughs> just not that. Although that that would be <laughs> that would. That no, no, no. 100, 100 years from now, Molly McGee horror movie, mascot costume of Molly McGee. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, here's the thing. Uh, don't even get me started on that. Like... Uh, the copyright. Yeah, the I, 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 want, I want to do more Molly McGee, just, not just for the reason of wanting to do more Molly McGee, but to have Bill and Bob write themselves out of the corner. <laughs> they've, they've kind of written themselves in with that ending, and they got to figure <laughs> out, okay, how, how, do we, how do we write ourselves out of this? That how how uh, how do we kill this man? <laughs> worth doing it again. So yes. Yep, yep. I you know I, I'm gonna have thoughts too, like what where it could go. But um, yeah, I think there's a jump forward in time for sure. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, just to see. Anyway, anyway, let's speculate. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, I do. What I do love is hearing how. Uh, you know, the, these shows have fingerprints on them, right? That sort of get on us, right? So, I, I've noticed that you know, my daughter, who's in her mid twenties, 
she doesn't feel well, she'll still snuggle up Aww. on the couch with a blanket and watch, like, you know, classic SpongeBob or something. Things yeah. that are feel good or yeah. some real classic Disney shows, right? And I, I think there is something about that, um, that comfort of something that you <laughs> that, that emotionally resonated with you from some important time in your life or something. Where, you, and anyway, so the the thing I think, Steve, to your point about people discovering the show still. I mean, uh, we have some neighbors <laughs> next to us right now, uh, renting the house next door, who are from England. And they've been telling all their friends like about the show, like you gotta watch Ghost of Molly McGee, and and I think you know like season two just dropped in the UK or something. So, um, it's <laughs> and boy are they in for a surprise, right? But it's mm. um, I think uh, people are discovering the show. It's a slow, it's a slow burn. Um, yeah, there's what, the, whether that means anything, I don't know, but. You know. It's just people discovering things at their own pace now, and that's just yeah. that's just the ecosphere. That's the way. That's because that's what streaming is doing. So yeah, I that's you never know. You never know, and they know oh, where to no, find all fine. of us. Well, that's why it's so frustrating that they're like, "Well, this show wasn't an instant mega hit, so we're not giving it another season." It's like, give it some more time. My goodness. <laughs> On a more positive note, another donation from Daniel Torres, ten dollars fifty. Yay! Let me read it out. Hi, yeah. love Tegum no, and updated. the amazing crew. Oh yeah, we gotta do that. Anyway, let's read the note. Hi, love Tegum and the amazing crew who put their heart and soul into this amazing series. Also created Los Amigas, a crossover of best friends. Oh, this is Duna of best friends uh, featuring Elizabeth Monaco and Boon Choi, Molly McGee, Liz Nasetta, and Haley Banks. Yeah. All right, I know Duna. I'm familiar with them. All the POs, all the best TV protagonists. <laughs> all right. and all the best all the best. Sort of I would love to see a crossover with, with, with all. Well, yeah, we should we should crossovers with them over on um, over on uh, Cheaper Tales. Oh, uh, why yeah. was well, we should have taken Star yeah. Starco and replaced it with Molly? Yes, I personally think. Oh, uh, yes. Now, I, 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 I am known as Talda for Star versus the Force of Evil. I must say, so I'm biased. Molly, yeah, you, can, you can't ignore Molly. I, I mean, I never finished yeah. watching Star versus the Force of Evil. Molly. Um, so, but, but from what I understand, <laughs> shipping ruined that <laughs> show. <laughs> so, which, to the, to the people that were complaining, to the people that were complaining about Mo Molly and Ollie, like, you know, they ruined the show. I'm like, that's barely a focus of season two. You want to talk about a show that, like, shipping just took over the show? Oh, my goodness. Anyways. Yeah, Star Wars did that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, Steve, Steve before no, Molly... You were probably more, more hip to all this stuff, but did you know what shipping was? Because I always thought it was like what what Amazon. Oh uh, yeah, free. well yeah. Or, just, or the boat was, or ships. Yeah. I swear it feels like <laughs> shipping was created during the time of Kim Possible because yes, yes. Kim Possible. Was, Kim Kim Possible yeah, was, 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 yeah, there was a lot of shipping on Kim Possible. Yes, and mm -hmm. shipping. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> These are the two relevant characters I have. Yes. Aw, oh, them. Don't show Phineas front face. Oh, this, is, this is super rare, by the way. There's, like, not many people that have the Isabella plush. I didn't even know it existed. Mm -hmm. I didn't I know, even know right? Disney TV even got merch. This well, was back when they did. Those were, were those giveaways at the studio, Bill? Were those, they might have been. I, you know what? I don't remember to be honest they, they often did do plushes you know i like we have the the scratch plush that was the studio That's scratch awesome. plush um what about the sound goblin plush was it that thing the sound goblin yeah, one was a fan made by one of our crew people I know this oh, is a crew that plush. That I know that would that be official. That's, that's, yeah, that's a crew plush. Yeah, this is a crew right? plush that Swampy oh, yeah. gave a... to me because it was like one of the only things he had in his office because he hadn't moved into his office at uh, uh, where is the the one the one that they're at right now with the Phineas crew. And he's like, oh, I'm oh, like, oh, okay, you have Beta. I'm like, I'm like, and he's like, and because you know who he is, he is now yours. I'm like, okay, cool. So I have Beta now. <laughs> yeah, I want to love a Beta plush. We have yeah, all, yeah, all sorts of, but then yeah, I mean most of the most of the fan made merch is pretty, pretty good. So mm -hmm. 
I, I bought a shirt design from this random person named Sarah buy. the other day that was really good. And, <laughs> oh, what? Um, I bought I bought this fan-made design... shirt from some... Oh. <laughs> oh, it is a peer. Yeah. talks over Go ahead. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I bought this no. shirt from some random person named Sarah, which is really cute. Oh, uh, <laughs> official. I got the same shirt as yeah. blue. I mean, I, I mean, I like this shirt, but that design was just really cute. Mm -hmm. There's more oh, yeah, that's right. cool. That's cute. I like Haunted that. Mansion. Haunted Mansion. Have to. Haunted Mansion rap. Woo! Yes. Is the mansion actually haunted? Yes, it is. <laughs> There's 900. Dude, going, 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 the scratch show was so good. <laughs> what was that, you Steve? About the, I, the idea that we had about the uh, VR ghost scratch in the Haunted Mansion. You ever tell <laughs> that, that, the story about that? No, go ahead. Tell it. Well, I think you, you probably would know better, but there was, uh, we were pitching to the Imagineering department, the, the notion of we wanted to integrate Scratch into Haunted Mansion, if possible, as a cross-promotion for the show. And uh, somebody came up with the idea of if we couldn't physically integrate the character, you know, with like a sculpt or something like that that would be in there, that you could do it on your phone so that it would be, you'd be waiting in line, get into Haunted Mansion, and you'd kind of you know, use your phone past mm -hmm. some of the tombstones and you'd have Scratch kind of narrating cool. the, the queue. I yeah, know that was, was an that AR. Was that we, uh, we pitched. I, there was, I think there was interest for, for a couple of minutes. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we mocked up a little bit art, I remember, just a, like a singular art card of what that could be like, but I think that it, it, it became schedule-wise probably too unwieldy to get it done in time, but that was... That was a notion. So when you see the haunted mansion thing, there, it's like, yeah, we we we, we had ideas for that. So yeah. Well, my, my one, pitch one of the now... things that I... oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, so you say one of the things that just whenever you're dealing with a a, a very large company, um, is it, it tends to turn like a cruise ship, not like a, a speedboat. You yeah. Know? So things just take time mm -hmm. to. Well, my you don't have enough now... time to make the turn. My pitch now would be they're doing Disney Channel night as this, you know, couple, you know, this two night event. Um, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm assuming it was very successful and they'll probably do it again next year. The biggest thing they need to do is do some attraction overlays because they didn't have any attraction overlays. And there's a couple they could do that would be really simple. How do a Phineas and Ferb overlay on Space Mountain. Just have them write a song for the ride. It would not be hard. And for Haunted Mansion, which was closed this year, so they wouldn't have been able to do it anyway. But for Haunted Mansion, just do, get Ashley and Dana in the booth and just have them riff the entire ride. Maybe maybe get them with Corey Burton. <laughs> maybe get them with Corey Burton and have them, like, show up and he's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> it was the, 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 notion, the notion of just kind of, you know, mocking up on top of pre-existing rides is something that had already existed, too, because the, originally in Florida, there was a Kim Possible the world Showcase adventure. Some... Oh, yeah, that, was... that that was. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if someone has a poster for the current iteration of it back there behind them. <laughs> oh, okay. Ducktales yeah, World I mean, Showcase I mean, Adventure. I the... That was because that was Kim Possible, and then it became Phineas oh. and Verb, and now it's Ducktales. That's, yeah, that's right. So my oh, question is: now? Okay. Yeah, yeah. If I had a nickel for every time they made a a. a a World Showcase Adventure iteration based on a show that had ended or was ending soon, I'd have three nickels, which is not a lot, but it's weird that it happened three times. So my question is, when are we getting the Scratch and Audio World Showcase Adventure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing, because you... These things... Boy, it all... It, Steers it, like a cruise ship, so like you time, said. Right? But, yeah, you know, so by the time the show was actually kind of rolling enough that you could actually show it to the other partners to say this is what the show is and what it could mm -hmm. be it was then so they need to start triggering their processes and it yeah. just you know it, you know it takes it just in takes in a video years. that my that my friend <laughs> tony goldmark made um 
uh, the, there was a line where he said, this is Disney. We got to go through 87 levels of bureaucracy just to open a churro stand. <laughs> and that is <laughs> so true. As I someone know. who works at Disney, it's very true. The, you know, and it's so funny because it's like, you know, they, they swap around the, you know, they, just, they recently, they, they just recently swapped around the Emporium, which they did it, you know, they did it six months ago and they're doing it again. And they're like, well, this, we're happy with this now. I'm like, yeah, in six months, they'll change it again. But like, you know, they have well, to swap Jane, around. Is your mic on mute? Is it on mute? Oh, sorry. No, it's not on mute. Someone's paying. Oh, no, 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 no. It just says, let's open the floor. Yes, <laughs> to, <laughs> to Faisley, he's got something to show. All right. Oh, okay. Hi, Faisley. Wait, 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 wait. I don't, I, wait, wait, I don't have anything. Wait. Um, Didn't you want to show up your thing? Continue on. Um, what, what, what were you guys talking about? Yeah, just continue on. Oh, oh, oh okay. if you need more time, that, that that's my bad. I thought you were. I I yeah. was just saying. Okay. Yeah. No, I was I was just saying. Yeah, they they swap the emporium around, but then they can't actually change the signs on the outside. Um, so like the <laughs> where they have all the all the toys now, they kind of flipped it so that. Um, so that the, the kids' clothing is in the front, which I think was smart, because it still says Disney Clothiers, like it said, for years and years and years, like mm. probably before the the part of the Emporium where Center Street used to be, because they built an additional room on the Emporium, because that, at Disneyland, that's still there, where they have the two halves of Center Street that split Main Street in half. They expanded the Emporium, um, and they also, like, took over the Magic Store. All the, all the specialty shops on the left-hand side of the street... In Florida, they're all just the Emporium now, and it's only Casey's Corner that's also in that building. So it's so interesting when you go back to when I go back to California. It's like everything's in a different location here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like they can't, you know, they change hey, stuff, and then like the signs on the outside, it's like that's a whole other level of Imagineering they have to go through. So yeah. didn't Steve Martin start at the Magic Shop? Yes, he at, did. At he worked. <laughs> Yes, he worked, yes, he worked yes, at yes, Disney, yes, yes. and he also worked at um, Knott's Berry Farm, I do believe. Yes, he did. There's a fantastic uh, documentary about him on uh, Apple TV right now, actually. Oh, I love that. Uh, really? Okay. Yeah, it, just, it just premiered yesterday. It's fantastic. And what's great about it is it, he's, he's always been a uh, very private person. So this is kind of a authorized, obviously, with his involvement. It's it's kind of it tells all the reasons why he was a very closed off personal person. So it's really fascinating. Yeah. Oh man. But yes, I gotta, he did, I gotta he did watch work. that. And it, it was it was really interesting to keep it on a Disney topic. It was it was really interesting because he talks about his love of Disney, which drove him to want to work, you know, at that magic shop and just be part of the whole Disney experience. It's worth watching, even just for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many people who have gotten their start at, like, Disneyland or Knott's or on the studio tour in, uh, in Hollywood, you know, just because, uh, I mean, I think maybe doing the studio tour especially is really good to make connections because it's actually a working studio, so you can, can meet people. Yeah. Well, yeah, I actually have a quick story for that. So I, I started at Disney Consumer Products in New York, so it's like drawing, you know, Mickey, you know, and the characters for product, bed sheets, T-shirts, things like that. And part of the um, experience they wanted you to have was they flew us to Florida from New York and they uh, they put us in a costume. So they let us do the walk around costumes for an afternoon. And for some reason, I was measured incorrectly. They thought I was taller than I am. So they gave me Br'er Bear which is uh. possibly the tallest character in the walk around costumes. And uh, it was not a great experience. If, if what they were hoping for was, oh, see the magic and the interaction with the kids. I know that was the goal, but it was very unwieldy because I was too short in this very, very large costume. So it was, uh, it was a challenging experience. Very funny. And I cannot believe at how hot it gets in those costumes. Mm. It, we, I, I was. It was just a couple of hours, and then you, or less, and you just take it off, and you're just beat red. You're just you're you're completely soaked in sweat. So I really feel for mm -hmm. everyone that has to be in those costumes on a very hot uh, and California day. Actually, yeah. It's, Steve, it's like you a, also like uh, had a connection to Muppets, isn't that correct? Yes, I actually uh, had an opportunity to work for Jim himself, actually. Oh. It was 
Yeah. So, Bill. so it's also, uh, I'll, I'll keep it brief. It's also a New York story. Um, cause, uh, Jim had his, his offices and his home in New York on East 69th street. And the, the, one of the Muppet studios was down below in the basement and he lived up top in the, in the penthouse. And it had that very famous stained glass, uh, ceiling, Muppet ceiling. And so, I was, uh, I brought my portfolio to Henson. I was already working at Disney at the time. So I had, I had already something on my resume and, uh, they were looking for my portfolio and it was being looked at by a guy named Michael Frith, who was like the art director of the studio. If, if you look at, if you look at any Muppet history, you'll see, this is the guy that like helped design like almost everything. And he was looking at my portfolio and he saw a uh, caricature of, uh, David Bowie that I had in my portfolio. And he was like, Oh, this is great. This is great. And he showed it to, to Jim because they were looking to make a David Bowie puppet at the time. And because I had experience with sculpture drawing, which is when you're doing drawings to be made into sculptures at Disney Consumer Products, I was able to you know, know how to make a puppet head that was three dimensional. So, yeah, so I was initially hired to do a puppet design at Henson. Um, and I did some work on that and I did some other stuff while I was there, but that was, it was a really good experience. When people talk about, um, geniuses in the industry, I've met a few and I will say that for sure, Jim was an absolute genius and the sweetest, nicest guy you ever want to meet. So all the, all the amazing, wonderful things you hear about him are absolutely true. That's, that's what I've heard is that he was just, just this incredible very very kind very soft-spoken just just wonderful person gone gone incredibly crazy soon i think i love uh, i love in the uh the epic rap battles of history i think it was it was george lucas versus jim henson right something like that and it was like uh it was like watching a beautiful sunset at noon you know <laughs> there was an act and so actually to, to, to keep capitalizing on that so um i went to uh Jim's funeral memorial service. Oh my god! And a requirement for that was his wish was no one wear black. No one wear black. Yeah. Everyone, everyone has to wear green. Oh, and so it. I had to get I had to get a green suit, which I still have actually. I don't know if I can fit in anymore, <laughs> but for that occasion, and it was it was such a wonderful, joyful celebration of his life. And everyone was 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 dressed in green. <laughs> for oh, it. It, was, it was really an amazing experience. Technically, Jim didn't uh, go anywhere weird. near her, obviously, because she's very new. But I do have a Sesame Street character with me as well. So there you go. Uh -huh. Hello, Julia. It's I Julia. had to get Julia. I had to get her. <laughs> Externally dead. This is a public call out. Make a June Chen plushie. Please, yes. <laughs> please make a June Chen plushie. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You gotta so, tell Externally Dead that. Externally Dead from making a Molly Push. Everyone's falling you gotta release it in June. Yeah. Yeah. Shout, shout out to Externally Dead for making a Molly Push in the first place. For real, yes. It's yes. That, uh, slash not force, but. And if anyone. Ever feels, are you, because anyone oh my gosh, see? You, we've kept you up all night and now you, it's, it's daylight. For you. It's daylight. It's oh, dark oh, outside. It's Atari oh, Fastly. <laughs> it's Sunday it's in Malaysia. I'm in Malaysia, wow. all the way up here. Yeah. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Beautiful. Yeah, pretty much. Anyway, I'm going to leave my... I'll leave my... I'll leave it open. Why not? <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh wow. It, it's uh, honestly like I didn't know. I didn't know that I expect this stream to be this long, and I didn't expect that Bill and both Steve would be all the way going all the way to the end of it. Mm -hmm. In fact, like yeah, originally we were supposed to have. Yeah, we, we were supposed to have another session with the artist, uh, with the fan artist, uh, which was a scribble I O session. It's just that I'm not sure whether they'll be on yet. Uh, and we've been talking for so long that yeah. I think we quite, we kind of like went off. We were a bit. we were talking about um, getting we went the set up. Way, though. We were we were talking about getting it set up, but then uh, then Bill and Steve came in. And we're like, okay, I guess we're not doing that right now. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 don't feel bad. This is no, like no, the no. best sidetrack to the stream. It's great. No, this don't is worry yeah. about it. 
I, I mean, I mean, like, if any of the artists would like to come over, I mean, like, I know you guys are in the YouTube chat. I know you guys, some of you feel a bit, a bit like, I might be a bit busy, but, you know, just come in, just come in for, like, the what, last one hour and, you know, chill out, share your drawings, whatever. I really don't want to leave anyone from the fandom out. Um, yeah, yeah, hope, hope that I make it clear. Um, yeah, behind me is, um, yeah, behind me is the letter that you gave me. That was when I was back in... When, when I was um, back when I was doing my internship in Kuala Lumpur. Um, yeah, and, and that was one of the pivotal times of my life. I mean, like, you know, I was doing I was doing a lot of government job and like I was living in the middle of the city. Like my family came from, from the suburbs and like, you know, usually like, you know, the suburbs are always like car centric and all of that sort of boring and all that. And I went to the city and like, you know, it's one of the most exhilarating times of my life. I know it's not related to, to Molly McGee, but you know, having that behind that sort of like reminds me of the of the time when i was like living in the city on my own um and like it was it was like a it was like a village in the middle of the city so like uh yeah it was yeah it was, it was, so like you know i'm having it back there just to commemorate the fact that you know you actually you that you know bill and bob and the rest of the of the tgm team you guys really made a large impact on my life you guys made a large impact on everyone i think everyone in the stream and i guess the entire tgm fandom sort of like dedicates is like an indebted to you um <laughs> like that's my i guess that's my take that's my sort of like letter i, I mean i don't have exactly have a letter i mean i think the artists i think the artists they have they their, their letters deserve way way more attention but um yeah, that does. I mean, like, um, yeah. I was originally I was supposed to give a presentation for the fans about how to host their own, how to host, like, you know, how did we get Operation and Happification started? Like, um, how did this an idea completely began? And like, how Sternberg and Chandler and the rest of the Molly Court team managed to bag a couple of couple of big name YouTubers and Bill well, and we got I, Bill I especially. Talk, I already talked a little oh. about how we got Rebecca um you know because it was oh, you know she had, she'd yeah. seen one of my videos that i did and and when i emailed her she was like oh yeah i, I saw your video i loved it I, it's so cool you're doing a charity stream she's she's a sweetheart i love her so yeah, much yeah. she's just wonderful she's the best rebecca yeah, i don't know if you're watching yeah, this bro. but we love you thank you <laughs> <laughs> i mean okay yeah pretty much yeah i got like an look I got, i've got an entire presentation deck over here ready to be presented it's just that it's, it was meant for it was meant for the fan. I, I'm not sure hey, if I'm, I'm coming, but um, I'm still listening but, and everything. But, but, but I do I'm, need to go probably let my dog out, so I'm just letting you know that. That's why I'm disappearing for a second. Okay. But, yeah. So. Okay. Right. Um. Um. Oh, no. should I, should I start? Okay. I mean, like, I. Uh... <laughs> like, come on, Steve. You, you and Steve. I'm starstruck right now. I mean, you guys have more things to say. Any. Stella, you got, you got any more questions from the, the, the comments? comments? Let's see what we got. Um, yeah. Let's see. Oh, first thing I see, I join, but I lack confidence in my art. Nebu, I've seen your art. It's really good. You you do not need to have no confidence. You're the goat. <laughs> I was going to say, hey, Steve, maybe you could, maybe we'll answer like this thing. And then it phase, like, if you feel better, we could, we could disappear and you, you know, and you could give the, the, the debt. Uh, but, hey, hey, um, don't, don't, don't. Steve, I was wondering. I mean, what advice would you have for artists that are are starting out and and what and thinking about could this be a, a an avenue for them to explore for a career? Well, I think it's a good time to be an artist, and here's why. I think that there's so many tools at your disposal right now that that didn't exist even you know many years ago. So many computer programs, painting programs, drawing programs. Um, you have a whole bunch of YouTube tutorials. I think that one of the things that um, people should always remember of the foundation of everything is anatomy. Um, I think even if you're drawing cartoons or, or doing stuff that feels just so, you know, loose character, loose stuff, I think you need the foundation of anatomy and how a body works, how bones work, how an arm bends or how a leg bends before you can do any of those things. So I think always start with life drawing. I think that's a key 
key element. And I'm sure that most places, most cities have life drawing classes. You can pay a couple of bucks and just sit down and just sketch someone, you know, in a pose for a couple of hours and maybe you change your position and, change, and draw from a different angle and stuff like that. But I think anatomy is a key thing. I think look at a lot of different styles of art. I think try to basically soak in everything because there's what we need nowadays is different styles instead of people that are just kind of doing, oh, I'm just doing this version of of Bruce Tim or of anime or of this or of that. Or I think that if you just kind of pull all those influences in, your own vision will create something unique and special and will really appeal in a lot of ways. So, but I think it's important to kind of look at everything. Look at look at artists that you wouldn't think you would look at. The caricature artists, any anybody, just for inspiration and direction. And one of the best things I had ever heard, this is a quote from a really famous uh, Warner Brothers director, Chuck Jones, is he said, you have 100,000 bad drawings in you. So draw as much as you can now to get all of them out. <laughs> I, I, Good advice. I 100% agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. 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 And, and I would say, too, uh, just to tag on that a little bit, for me, I think uh, when I see sort of people are starting out with their animation, um, that the error I feel like is kind of often commonly made is a sense of, of gravity, of weight. Um, the characters almost t tend to f almost float or whatever. They don't feel like they are actually, you know, gravity is putting them on the ground. and. Right. That adds to that believability, that sense that something is alive, you know. Um, Anatomy drawing would help that because usually yeah. when you have someone posing, they're sitting or they're, they're crouched down or something, and you could see, you know, how weight influences bone and muscle mass mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And again, I think because they skipped that part of the process that even if you're doing Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse has weight. He's yeah. got, you know, his arms have to bend a certain way and his body can stretch a, and has to stretch a certain way and you just you need to understand how the human body works before you can make a cartoon body do you know do whatever you need it to do yep all right well Faisal, you want to give your presentation you're all right yeah yeah, yeah um mm -hmm. whenever i'm ready okay um yeah, this is we. This is much more. Um, yeah, this is this is a, a lot more daunting than what I'm presenting to my lecturers. Um, let me share my screen for a bit, and I'll be yeah, and I'll be with you guys. Um, oh, I think I think Chandler's uh, still letting his dog out. He might have to tune in to the stream. Oh, you. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, 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 well, well, yeah. While we're waiting for Chandler, I mean, like we could, yeah, we could perhaps like talk about. Um, yeah, perhaps I could talk about how we started this stream and go right ahead. Yeah, yes. Okay, so um, how do I share my screen? I forgot how to share my screen. Okay, wonderful, very Just much. Thank share you. screen. Oh, yeah. Are you on this top or more? Channel's back. Channel's back. Just okay. in time. Just in time. Okay, you guys see? You guys see yourself? This is about. Make sure to you're not streaming in 1080p. Make sure it's 720p. 30. It's 720. Don't kill the stream. Yeah. Yeah. Don't kill the stream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fifty. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I grabbed my sandwich, but then I heard you yeah, guys talk. Um, I'm like, oh, shoot. Hold on. Uh, communication's key. Thank you, Chandler. <laughs> You're right. Um, okay. So, um, yeah. Um, so, today, yeah, today I'm about to give a, give a talk about how we organize this Operation Application Stream. So, um, I, before I start, my name is Faisal Fazil. I am... Um, I am an urban planning student. I'm from um, I'm from all the way from Malaysia. I think um, a few of you may know me as Saroja Sina on Twitter, but I'm more popularly known as uh, just by my real name. Um, and I have to say that you know, um, as someone who as someone that's you know, really how I got into the show in the first place was because simply because you know I I heard about this show called The Ghost and Molly McGee when Amphibia and Our House were ending, and I'm like, oh man, another cartoon show shoot. And I'm like, meh, I'm not sure whether I want to be in cartoons anymore. But then I heard the fact that, oh, wow, her dad, wait, the dad's an urban planner? Huh, it's weird. And I'm like, okay, I want to see some urban planning representation in the show. And I'm like, okay, I'll watch it. Watch the show. And like, I was astounded by the humor. I was astounded by how much, um, 
how much of that urban planning sort of relate relatability sort of blends into the show like for example like how um how about all the stories about the city council about you know uh, talking about carbon climate change all of that sort of things that i hear in my class i hear in my i hear in my um, in my studio and all that it, it, it just flowed into the show and they do it humorously and it was damn funny um and like you know when i heard yeah so like they should and and therefore like that's why i joined the fandom in the first place because like i needed somewhere that i wanted to speak with about how how wonderful this, this show is I've been talking about this show for like the past two years on my Twitter and like, you know, I've gotten a few of my planning friends to actually like watch the show, including some in some who are seniors in the planning department. Um, but yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah, it, it is a wonderful show, which is why, you know, when the show ended, I started this, I said, I said like, okay, you know what, we're gonna have to, we, we have to do something about it. I have to do something about it. So here we go. I'm organizing operation amplification. All right. So like, okay, how does an entire idea start? Like, good lot. 15 guests, three top tier YouTubers. How did it start? So like, you know, I was like, this was my university studio. This was right after I watched the end. Um, I was like, you know, I was like really phased out at the time. I took a panorama of my studio and I was like damn sad. It like, it destroyed me completely. I couldn't do my assignment. That's my poor pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, 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 like, yeah, it like completely wrecked me. Like I was drinking coffee. Like you know, you see that little coffee on. Excuse me, if I got my pointer over here. Yeah, like um, I was like, I was like damn sad. I just drank coffee and like you know, I tried to do some work, but you know, I just like, <laughs> why did why did Scratch have to leave? Like why like like why did Molly have to be that smart and say and say like oh you you gotta you gotta like why can't why can't Molly be a little bit selfish? Like like she's like a thirteen like, she's like a thirteen year old girl. But it's honestly, I understand more values. I understood the moral values, but like, yeah, it was sort of, it was like sort of that, you know, denial sort of mood. Um, so like, yeah, buddy, no way I'm going to be this sad. I have to do something about it. If I'm going to keep on being sad, like without doing something about it, then, you know, <laughs> I got to find a way to deal with it. So why not? I'm going to do something about it for the fandom. So um, being a planner myself, um, I created like, I went 36 hours without sleep, writing a 12 page document for the fandom. It was called hashtag long live TGAM, a proposal for the fandom to campaign for the show and for ourselves. I made sure to let people know that it's a five to ten minute read. Um, I made sure to let people know that this is a draft and it's in, it's incomplete. And I think it's still incomplete. I'm still like doing all the entire thing and all that stuff. So, yeah. Um. So like you know what I did was what I did in the document was uh, I think it's a lot of things. So like. I had like the aim. Okay, I I I decided to tell the, the the fandom like you know this originally it was named hashtag safety game because like I was like I want this show back like I don't believe I can't believe this show just ended and without any sort of warning whatsoever so like yeah, yeah I was still like in denial mode so like, I'm gonna so like I decided to look up some some case studies about how some shows were revived and all that stuff and I'm like but then I I suddenly thought to myself like you know um like. The show literally told you that there's more to life. Why not just move on? Like shows have, but but then I asked myself again. But shows have been revived due to post popularity generated by fans, and then and then and then like my the other the devilish side of me just said, oh, Bill and Bob still said that we they would love to do more. So like I should definitely fight for this. They had complete scripts, and then I was like, ask, and then I was like self questioning myself. Was I gonna be okay after this? Will I forget about the show? Does it even matter? But guess what? I said it's like just keep on moving on. So like what I did was that I I wanted to I wanted to do if I wanted like the show to be revived of course like um I would want I would want the fandom to be active about it but at the same time when I thought that you know I don't think it's going to be healthy for us to just focus on getting the show back I think I think what the show would want us to do like you know what the episode of the end asked us is that you know we should actually live a little and like the entire premise of the thing is that we should be doing like we should be doing something good for the world. So that's why I said, in my in my aim, I got I have set out like three aims for the show that I've listed over here. Um, I and also I had listed like a couple of prerequisites for what the campaign should have, what the campaign should be, and what the campaign should not be. But I think I'm gonna focus more mm -hmm. on the aim. If you guys wanna read the document, I do have the link, but I'll post it later after the stream. 
Um, so like you know, the, what what are the three aims that I made for the fandom? Um, just letting you guys know how this is related with Operation Happification uh, was that you know I showed this document to Sternberg and the and the and the Molly Court team, and they were like damn interested in the idea, and they, and they just immediately brought me onto the team. So like I'm just gonna show you the process of how you know how I how, because like um at this at this stage of time when I was planning this document. I had completely no connections with anyone from the fandom. I had no friends. I was only like talking to people in the Molly Court server. Um, I was even, I think I was even like almost threatened with being uh, kicked out once because I almost doxed myself on the server, but that was like two years ago. So like, you know, <laughs> it was, um, yeah, it, I think it was draining, I think. <laughs> but like, regardless, <laughs> um, I said to like, okay, I decided to like, you know, show it, show it to them and they liked the idea. So I, I told them, Okay, so like, well, what what's gonna be the aim of this particular campaign that we wanted to do? Okay, for for me, the first thing I want to prioritize is that we want to make sure that we do what the show asks us to do. So we want to improve the well-being, the fulfillment, and happiness amongst ourselves in the fandom by engaging in various and happy fun activities. So that includes charity, encouraging people to do help out in your neighborhood, doing something that you never thought you'd do, maybe indulge in activism and so on and so forth. I mean, I myself, I am uh, I would not consider myself an activist, but I have been involved in a couple of activist uh, movements back in my back at my home, uh, including like on terms, in terms of uh, public transportation and, and pedestrianization and all of that sort of uh, car-centric new urbanism sort of stuff. But that's for a topic for another day. Um, so like I wanted to because like I do notice a a a, a lot of among online fandoms is the fact that you know a lot of us are not a lot of us are socially active, a lot of us sometimes are a little bit too addicted to the show, but we also I also understand that the power of media to encourage people to do better to do good and all that sort of stuff. So and I know I I know that Bill and Bob made this show with the with the right intention of trying to encourage you know kids to do something for the community maybe even us to do something for the world you know and happifying and all that sort of stuff so i thought like it would be sort of like you know why if if that if they are going to if bill and bob are gonna do something something unique for the show we have to represent what the show's values stand for i don't think this is something that has been shown look i'm sorry the our house fans and the phobia fans but those shows are like I feel like they're more on the entertainment value of the side of things. Like you know, they're more about romance. They're more about uh, you know empowerment and you know work working with each other. But I believe like T Gam had a sort of, of like you know come together as, as a community and do something good sort of vibe. So like I wanted to create that. I I, I would love if we can create that unique fandom identity and the culture of doing good. I'm gonna I'm gonna speed up a little bit. And so like so like I wanted to prioritize on the first and the second aim first. And then only then we will move on to the third aim, which was drumming up support for TGAM. So this is where the this is where supposedly the hashtag safe TGAM thing could come by. Like, you know, how are, if we want to get this thing to rehab the show, how are we gonna do it? But like I said before, I don't think that is supposed to be the primary objective. If we don't if we if we if you are gonna get too stuck about reviving the show, I think it's gonna be, be a little bit unhealthy. So like, you know, we wanna get but we did say that, you know, we did say that if we do these activities together as a fandom, like, you know, we do charity, we do all of, we, we help out people, we tell each other that, you know, we can do good in this world, you know, uh, some, it might get us in the media and, you know, the media might even get some Disney access to see, like, say, like, what, you know, what Chanley had said earlier, like, wow, what has this show, how has this show manipulated people to actually do good for the world? So, like, um, yeah. That that was those were my three three aims for the fandom, which I had presented to um, the Molly Court team. Um, which I will tell you the process of how how I managed to actually like talk to the, to the team in the first place. How does someone even execute a plan for an entire fandom? Again, at this time, at this point of stage, I did not have any connections with the fandom, so like yeah, I had to like break it down. I had to break down like who am I supposed to contact by doing down the stakeholder analysis. Um, so like I listed out okay. Who am I gonna contact first? Okay, I'm gonna. I'm. I need to know. I need to know who has the star power, who has the attraction, who has the organizing and leadership capabilities, who has who has the loudspeaker to like shout out about our the ideas and all that stuff. Who actually is in charge of making this thing? And of course, who who currently controls the group of fans that exist already? So like, I listed it down over here, and um, I wanted and like, I put it all on a stakeholder analysis chart. And Fima, yeah, look, it went that far, yeah. Um, like, 
um, I wanted, so like I knew the easiest people that I can contact are the admins and the mods and the TGAM fan ambassadors. So about the TGAM fan ambassadors, um, yeah, I knew, so look, these are the ones that uh, Bill has, give, has given the ambassador badges to. These are, these are the people that have been in the fandom for like years already. But the issue is that they don't know anything about me. I was like in the corner. So like, shoot, okay, I can't really contact them for the moment. So I decided to resort to like, okay, I'm going to have to like just present my ideas on Mollycott. Um, I recognized a couple of the groups. Well, uh, one of them was a Facebook group and the other one was Mollycott itself. And also the and also the Reddit serve the Reddit the subreddit for the Ghost and Money McGee. Um yeah and okay. So like but I decided to contact Molly Cod first by just simply ran like randomly I just went into the chat into I believe it was hashtag Molly General. And I and I said like, you know, I I I'm gonna be a sole voice here and scream for a safety game campaign, but it needs a really strong, profitable case why or how it can benefit Disney. Physical letters, events, uh, yeah, all, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then people were questioning, like, like, it's a giant corporation. How are you, how the hell are you gonna supposed to do that? But like, I, but like, I kept on justifying to them, like, okay, marketing, and like, I just kept on pushing and pushing. Eventually, yeah, um, this led into into making the document when they were like asking all of these questions and all that sort of stuff. Um, eventually, what happened was that we decided to, you know, okay, if we're gonna make this real. We're gonna have to decide on a name on it. So like originally people chose a uh, hashtag safety TGAM, but uh, some decided but like some of the people on the on the on the on the staff team decided like you know safety game is a little bit on the nose. Why not we try something a little bit more positive? Like okay, then we chose and that's why we, that's why we chose with the second highest option, which was operation and amplification 2.0. Um, 1.0 being the show itself. <laughs> I mean, like it was. I, I'm pretty sure what Bill and Boy have made is a is an entire operation and amplification in itself. Um, yeah. So uh, the first person I contacted, Sternberg. Sternberg was the administrator of uh, the Ghost of the Mollycott server, and well, I decided to and like you know, I wanted to liaise with him, and you know, he he said that he'll let that I just know you'll have my support list. Okay, gain his support. Um, I made sure that I wanted to make this. I I made, I negotiated with him, and he relayed the information to the Molly Court, to the Molly Court server chat. Uh, and oh shoot, that is that's a bad word over there. But um, yeah, and they're like, okay, sure, we'll do it. And and for some reason, yeah, and you know all that sort of like you know negotiation and you know detailing out all of those plans, making the document. They were like, okay. We're impressed by your proposal. We want you in the server, and we want you to become event organizer. Am I correct, Sternberg? Yes, and can I interject really quick? Usually uh, yeah. for event organizers, we do applications. Like, you have to fill out a Google form to show that you're qualified to be... Oh, there goes Steve. Uh, you usually have to fill out a thing to show that you're qualified to be an event organizer. But your document was just so impressive that, like Gas said in the, in the channel, like, hire this man, you know? Like, we needed, to, we needed you on. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but the show uh, itself wasn't happifying. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's let Vazzy continue. Yeah. Okay. So like, okay. So getting the pretty much like uh, when I got the event organizer role, that that was the that was that only then I was like probably allowed to have a little bit of that sort of like you know the authority to actually like organize things and contact people. So for example, like so the first person I contacted was Bill. Um, Bill, of course. Um, like we had to prepare an entire email, we had to prepare an aim, we had to make sure, you know, what is this, what is the charity stream going to be about, how are we going to help out the world, and fortunately, yeah, Bill, on your side, I'm so fortunate that you accepted our idea, and thank you so much for believing in us, even though we're like a bunch of, like, we've never, I've never done anything on this large of a scale before, Um, so, but like, you know, we made the letters, we sent it to you, and we, and fortunately, you accepted it, and then we planned out the entire thing. 
we and we also wanted to we, we, and because we wanted it to be a, to not just be like you know appreciation for the show stuff we also wanted it to be like you know like something that the fandom can can join in so we of course we also had to contact the stick the other stakeholders which were the big fan artists so we contacted m about it uh, i knew that m was preparing a multi animated project back in january back then and we and i asked her when are you gonna when are you, are you planning to release the map project and she said that she wants to release it by like march uh, like early march something like that and like you know we said like okay then <laughs> yeah, that we, we then we better collaborate on something so like you know i think the important idea is the fact that when you're trying to organize a fandom event um you want to make sure that you get also the fandom ev- involved as well because uh it's not just it's not just a show stuff that will be uh, that will be able to attract people to the show it's also going to be the artists themselves some of the popular artists they may have like fans from other fandoms that may join in and like uh, and of course like we also we don't we also want to like appreciate the artists who have helped to promote the show in a sort of like like because simply because they love the show for what it is and we want to promote that sort of positivity Sunnyland Productions, definitely a big stakeholder. Holder. Messaged him about my document. He's like, holy shit, yes, okay, we're going to do it. And he immediately pointed out, give kids the world. So like, you know, that, that was one of his first messages to me. And I'm like, okay, we're going to do this. Okay, and then he, he, he was like really pushing the idea for give kids the world. I was originally, I was trying, originally I was trying to think of something like, you know, something like on a worldwide scale, like for example, like a, like a climate change organization or, or, or any of it. But like, um, but we decided to choose on uh, Give Kids the World because they had a lot of tools that allowed us to show people like the tally of our, st- the tally of our, uh, like how, how much money we got and all that sort of stuff. So like uh, we continued getting more people on and like you know so like the mo- one of the morals that I learned from the story was that you know you, you try like we, like you have to know who is the easiest for you. when you're trying to plan something you have to know who is it is who is the easiest for you to reach and gain trust with and when and once you get that once you start from below you start to climb up and climb up and climb up um the scale you get you start like gaining the trust of other people on a high on a higher level. Like for example, like you know, you could you could you could perhaps like have the ability to contact you know you you can explain to them about your role, you can explain to them about your plan, and as and the more convincing your plan is, the more you work hard, the more you think about your plan, the more people are gonna believe it. So like you know, finally JJ actually replied to me after like you know I I I messaged her before I I already messaged her before I uh, got her before like about my plan and like you know I didn't get I I didn't think, I don't think I got a response because like. Um, I was like, I I had like only like forty like underneath thirty followers at the time, and most of them were bots. Um, but when once I got the uh, once I got the badge of being a, of being the how do you call it the event organizer, I'm like okay, <laughs> and then fi- so finally people, some people noticed about it. So yeah, you have to build up from there in order to gain the trust of other people. Um, yeah, how did we start the thing? Okay, uh, me Sternberg and Chandler we. Started off from a ten member, ten member group chat on Discord, and like we were like, okay, hello, hello, and then we invited M inside. We said to add a, add her as part of our committee, and like Chandler said, and like Chandler suddenly had an idea. Why not we invite Rebecca for the show? Because like she showed like one of her, she showed like the, like the Ghost and Morning Boogie as part of like on one of her videos, and like okay, um, like, I'm I, at first we were, we were quite skeptical about it, like uh, because Rebecca didn't like just put the show like with a long for, for a bunch of other shows but you know we, we said like you know we ball so like um we decided to like find out what was uh what, who, what was rebecca's email and we looked through her website and we made the effort to contact her about it and rebecca did respond and he and she also responded that you know because chandler was 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 also a youtuber himself and she watched the video she watched his videos and yeah that's how we made the connection um so like there was, and then like as 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 bigger as we as we climb, as as more the more we plan, the more we negotiated with Bill about how things are gonna go and making sure that they can trust us and they they can trust us on our side. The way you wanna gain trust is of course by being professional and making sure that you know. I I know that some of you guys may be a bit excited. I'm talking about the fa- I'm talking to you the fandom itself. Like some of you guys may be a bit excited. Like you might you guys might um. 
sort of be a little bit uh, like um um scared scared um but like trust me if you guys know how to remain professional in your communications you will go far just make sure that it comes with plausible plans as well don't go asking like oh i want this voice actor or i want that voice actor you have to be a little bit humble about it as well um so like um yeah I contacted arbor about it arbor and then when arbor joined the team arbor is a arbor mm-hmm. is uh, someone who has been in the arbor is someone who has helped with with uh, their graphics so like but and so i got in contact with him and i was like okay uh, since you have mentioned about the show do you want to join our our graphics team so chandler made this logo and then he tra- and then arbor transformed it into this this beautiful logo and as the and then we also contacted more artists we, contact, we got sin on the team we got um shark on the team we, was it Zuzi? yeah i can't pronounce her name for god's sake sarah splendor finally rebecca mm-hmm. oh what was it I was just saying, I think you pronounced that right. Yeah, Rizuzi. Rizuzi, okay, fair enough. And yeah, and and then from, from then on, we held the stream. So like, you know, we had the countdown, we planned everything out. Look, um, for anyone that wants to host, for anyone in their own fandoms that want to host their own respective charity streams or their own respective activities, their own events, it is going to take, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's hard work, but it's going to take a lot of smart work. This includes negotiating with people. This includes, uh, you know, discussing about what exactly the fandom wants. Make sure that whenever you're hosting a fandom event, it is supposed to be a fandom event. It's not supposed to be your event, something that's, that you are supposed to like, please only yourself or something like that. But if, if, because like, if you do it in a sort of like ego, I'll, I'll be a little bit stern, if you will, Sternberg. Um, <laughs> Demoted. Yeah, um, you gotta, you 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 gotta, you got you you gotta be, you gotta learn how to like, you know, not not be a typical Discord moderator, and learn to do it not for the sake of yourself, but learn, but make sure you you have empathy for your community. Make sure you ask what exactly your community wants. That's what Sternberg and I did with the Monica server. We asked them like, what what do they want? When is it suitable for us to host the time at and everything? That because like we are doing this for them, and then we went to Bill and talked about it with him. Of course, like, of course, we also, uh, yeah, we also want to consider the voice voice actors and and Bill himself and the entire show staff because like of course they are the ones that we want to attract. Just that you know we uh, regardless, the, we are doing this mostly for the fans and yeah and like fortunately, uh yeah and and with and when the fans come and the fans and when when the fans appreciate it that's where they will build up the support to like you know they'll be the fandom can be more sustainable sustainable because like when the when you actually like encourage the fandom to participate in activities like this you you make the fans feel sort of included in the show you'll make the fans feel like okay this is not a toxic community this is a loving community and i want to be part of this fandom for years even if there's no official content i want to be part of it for years and who knows yeah who knows that those aim one and aim two can lead up to aim three, which was getting the show revived or at least get just a little tiny bit of official content. Who knows? But yeah, regardless, um, we made all of these uh, different graphics. Um, it was really fun doing all this. It was fun working with the team and like uh, you know, I think uh, and like um, and after the stream, we also like did highlights clips where we wanted to continue promote the art donate to the show so we made a couple of highlights clips so that you know we encourage people to to watch operation amplification and hopefully get them to don't need to the stream so how do you imagine okay wait sorry sorry um this is so like this is one of the clips that we showed on our tiktok so we open up we have we now have a tiktok account we have a twitter account and we have an instagram account that we're hopefully going to use for the autism stream coming later this june so uh, i'll just show you a clip from if anyone's not seen it yet oops sorry hey how do i play it Wait, give me a sec. Um, yeah, it's a little bit. Wait, give me a sec. How do you yep. imagine go. Molly went to jail and Daryl died? <laughs> what? I like how dark we were able to take it with that level. Yeah, starting with Daryl's death is a different way, is there? 
I can't, I can't take credit for Daryl's rage site. I feel like that was a pitch by one of the writers that was in the script when I received it. That was hilarious that they were in the third episode with him. Daryl popped by the Yakuza. He, he made a bad deal. You know, <laughs> Molly goes to jail, probably uh, seeking revenge on the Yakuza. So that means Daryl dies twice because she restarted the play. I don't know. Daryl died twice. I mean, that's the time. Yeah. What? You that was made by Arbor, by the way. Uh, bless him, bless his soul. So, like, the you know, we managed, so, yeah, we, we got, we managed to, like, climb that scale. And, yeah, you can see that a lot of people, like, really like the stream, like, you know. I know that I was a little bit emotional when the stream ended, but, you know, found out that people actually love the stream, like, you know. Everyone started, like, like screaming hashtag long live the, the the hashtag that I started with. And, like, you know, it's... Yeah, I mean, like, it, it's really nice to see that the fandom actually liked the thing and it shows that, you know, if you truly appreciate the fandom, if you truly involve the fandom in something, you can make something incredible. And I really appreciate the fandom for it. I'm, I think I'm going to be in this fandom for quite some time also as a result of all this. Um, yeah, um, originally I wanted to play a song behind all of this, but I didn't have time, but... Um, in the document itself, <laughs> I wanted people to listen. Uh, like, lastly, I wanted when, when I was like showing the document, I wanted people to like, for some reason, play the document with the song of um, behind it that said Ode to Joy. It, because, like, I, I put it in the document and wanted people to play it while they're reading the document so that they can become a little bit emotional. But um, I wanted to say, uh, but like, I read about the story about how Ode to Joy was made, which was why, you know, Ode to Joy was. The, was what we played before the stream started. So, like, you know, Schiller, the guy that composed it, expresses his idealistic vision of a human race working together as one, a society of people equally bound together by bonds of joy and universal friendship, something Beethoven was fond of as well. You know, Beethoven found out about it when he was 22 years old. He was admired by the message, and then he incorporated the ode to the prelude of the fourth movement of a symphony number no. 9, his last ever symphony. So... You know, light is more powerful than darkness. Hope is more powerful than fear. Love is more powerful than hate. And joy, joy is more, way more powerful than the misery will ever be. Very cliche, I know. Um, but I hope you sort of like get why I sort of like have a sentiment. So, um, if I'm correct, like I haven't updated it yet, but we have gained more than fifteen thousand one hundred seventeen dollars. For the stream and like you know this is a small fan that we only have like remember in our subreddit we only have six thousand people in our in our subreddit we only have two thousand people in our discord server and oh, uh, compared compared oh wait what was it it's a little under three thousand a little bit under three thousand but compare that to the our house compare that to uh, amphibia which has members of a 10,000, 20,000, like that. Compare that to Avatar, the last airbenders, where their subreddits often go like about like 500,000 members and Gravity Falls and all that. All those shows, those have like big fandoms. Like, um, and like every, in every single elementary school, you have a fan of that particular show. But this show, and but but at the same time, you know, I um, like as much as I wish that they could make a stream as successful as this, you know were the first ones to probably ever do it for the show. And were also the first ones for... Well, I think we were one of the first uh, Disney uh, Disney TVA fandoms that actually managed to like start a movement from the ground up, from the fans themselves, instead of coming from the show creators themselves. And I think I'm really proud of that. And I'm really proud of this community. So like, all I can say is... Terima um, kasih. Yeah. Terima kasih sangat-sangat. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening and i hope that we can continue this or continue doing this um continue doing this thing mm -hmm. for like continue doing doing good for the world we can continue and happy find the world and i hope that other fandoms will be inspired to do similar movements for their own shows as well to show their own appreciation for their own show creators and their and the staff and everyone because you know god knows how long people you've you've worked on this show bob you've been bill You've been working on this show for like 20 years already. So, you know, it's nice to be able to give something back for a show that I really, that I really, really enjoyed a lot. Um, this photo was taken at, um, at a pedestrianization project uh, when I was like, when we were trying to narrow down a road in a city, like for, so that it will be easier for the school kids to walk around. So like, you know, I decided to like bring my, 
long live TDM poster mm-hmm. and like you know just wanted something to show there. So like yeah, that's all for me. Um, yeah. Um, Bravo! Well, that was fantastic. By the way, I thought that was, was really amazing. So yes, thank you. I learned a lot from that. Actually, <laughs> same man. I was helping with this event. I learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So I have to. I have to hop off here. Sorry, okay, but yeah. um, mm-hmm. I just want to say, first of all, you, uh, Faisley, that was amazing. Thank you for all your effort to pull this together. Um, yeah. For all of you um, doing this, I, I when I went up when I left the first time, right? <laughs> and then Steve <laughs> texted me, goes, "I want to come on. Can we come on to you?" Um, I told my wife, I said, "I I wasn't expecting this to be what this was today. Um, everything from the letters to the comments, it this was so powerfully emotional for me today. Uh, so." gratifying and uh and um and happifying for me that uh i'm gonna have to sort of sit in this for a while um <laughs> it it means the world i just can't even tell you all how how much it means so um so you changed my life for the better and i no I, no you changed I, my I life. That, so. you, you've changed ours yeah, so, changed so our thank you all us. um and uh yeah i just i'm honored to get to be a part of all of this so yeah. again thank you it means the world oh, my heart. all right <laughs> thank you <laughs> bye well, thank I you so much with that, I, think yeah, tell you, Bill. I think we're probably Better getting Bill. ready to wrap this up because we already went over time <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> probably like very but and we i have, have to go to work tomorrow oh, but fastly thank you so much seriously just, oh, just you <laughs> are like the mvp of all of this like this would not have happened without you and and without everyone who worked together to make this possible like i mean this is yeah. still just the coolest thing i've ever been a part of seriously thank you thank you everyone who made well, this yeah. possible chandler sternberg everybody who yeah, put your fingerprints all over this thing. Yes. Thank you. This what yes. a what a good deal. And by the way, more than fifteen thousand dollars raised for charity, and so that, that directly <laughs> affects people's lives. You know, yeah, it's no small I thing. Believe that. Yeah. yeah. And before we go, yeah. oh, I man. mean, we oh, I, we already <laughs> mentioned it, but we kind of should maybe give a little bit of a hint as to what we're doing next. Like I said, we kind of already mentioned it, but um. Operation Unbridled Truths. Yes. Uh, <laughs> working title. We might keep it. No. Oh yeah. A mile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'll be involved in that. Um, oh yes. Yeah. Well, but but on our side, on Mollycott's side, yeah, we'll be doing. Well, yeah, we, we hope to be doing more events like this. Um, on my but primarily on my side, yeah, yeah Sternberg is going to be handling uh, on on the autism stream Operation Unbridled Truth coming this June. On my side, you know, I feel like I want to help out other fandoms to do the same thing because, like, look, fifteen thousand dollars is a, is it's not a small thing. It's just that whether like other fandoms do they have the organi- organizing capabilities to do something like this, and like you know, I would I would I probably I'm I want to be working on a sort of like document on a, on a toolkit to help fandoms how how do how can they host their own events and communicate with other stakeholders including show staff and charities because like I know that a lot of fandoms they are mostly like. Uh, mostly are uh, like my, between minors and young adults and but they also want to do their same thing they also have high aspirations and we also want to yeah we, we want to be the morning mcgees of the world of this world we want to like help others to and happify their own community Absolutely. as well i think i think like you know instead of yeah yeah charity yeah charity is good money is good uh, but charity can also be given in so many other ways including like your to so helping like manpower and and mm-hmm. teaching others oh, absolutely. all that sort of, sort of stuff yeah. um so yeah do be, yeah on my side do be updated for that on the entire money court side yep get ready for, for get ready for the autism stream <laughs> on the injury. operation on bridal truth well and there's another <laughs> thing we're um, we're doing too that i we don't have the details um, nailed down yet but um bill got me in contact with uh um his friend that we um, talked about earlier um from uh from illinois um jim who runs a uh, daycare center over in rockford and um mm-hmm. 
Uh, we're going to be working on helping them get their toddler and infant play area updated. Um, so stay tuned for info on that. We're working on coordinating the details, but that's going to be happening um, next month. Uh, my, my goal is to um, mm -hmm. talk to him as, as part of the autism video, and um, we're going to um, promote that from there. So that's kind of going to be a bit yeah. of a, we're not doing a big stream for that one, but we're going to um, try to get the word out about that and try to, help them out and, and, and google reason. rockford illinois rockford, because illinois. It, that is a very bright a very brighton-esque town mm -hmm. so you know um, yeah so i'm looking yeah. forward to helping helping them out with that i think that's going to be super super rewarding and happifying of course so yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, the goal—the goal is just again, oh, you know, because the thing with and the thing with the show really is that it's such a perfect springboard to be able to do good. Because I mean, uh, there's so much that's you know it's applicable. You can talk about you know autism. You can talk about um, uh, climate change and saving the planet, and you can talk about you know mm -hmm. more specifically turtles. You know, there's so much. There's so much that we can do. There's so much good that we can do in the world. Just, just based on this silly little show about a, 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 a teenage girl and her ghosty BFF. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's something. Yeah. Yeah, that's something. All right, Woo! you all. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank thank you. You, you, we'll stayed, you stayed for a long time. Good Lord. <laughs> I, 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 I knighted Cheesy on. earlier. I now knight Bill. Yes. My, my face yeah, getting cut out by the camera. Whatever. You get the idea. <laughs> thank you again. Yeah. Thank, yeah. Thanks again, Bill. And yeah. thank you everyone yeah. for watching. Thank, oh, you, thank, thank, you, everyone. thank you everyone. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank yeah. you for um, donating. Yeah. I just want to put a here. Oh, oh Jessica, yes. <laughs> Hi, Jessica. Hello. What's up? Yeah. Um, you want to say something? No, I'm good. I'm good. Yes. <laughs> okay, Namal. Well, it was good having you here as well, Jessica. You're the goat. You too. The goat. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I know that devalues it, but we're all high value. <laughs> Wait, Chandler, uh, how are we supposed to end the stream? Like, uh, are you supposed to say like, just... okay, we're gonna? Well, I have. I don't want to know. I have... I do... I... How do I end the stream? I don't know. I have the stuff queued up, so uh, I mean, I think we're. I think we're good. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, so much. Um. Well, we... <laughs> Is the stream off now? Uh, and... Oh, it's still going.